Good morning, Chatty House. What's going on, everybody? We got shooty baskets, y'all. You all, everybody. I'm just going to turn the camera like this so everybody can just watch the games. There it is. Oh, air ball. Oh, my gosh. You guys just shot from behind the back. About a minute and a half. Oh, all right. Oh. Jimmer Fredette is somewhere rooting his balls off for BYU right now. In his magic underwear. You said what? In his magic underwear. Definitely. Uh, Russell Hunt, shout out. Got the belt today. How do babe? What up, Michigan? What up, Russell? Oh, no, where you go? There he is. Serial connection's back. Oh, it's not Yahoo connection? No. Bit ran its course. Well done, everybody. Well done. What up, brah? We call this guy Steely or Beats? Steely Beats? Steely Beats. Steely Beats. All right. Smart. That wheezy. If that's what you want to call it. Pretty flaccid performance, if you ask me. <laughs> Soft. So, <laughs> what up, Bryce? All right, here we go. Oh my God, there's so much happening. So we much have, happening. We have NCAA tournament action on right now. It's started. I hope everybody got their brackets filled out. Um, we'll keep you updated loosely on those games. We can't legally like do play-by-play -play or anything. But uh, Duquesne up on BYU, Michigan State up on Mississippi State, because of course they are. If you bet against Tom Izzo, that is, that is a you problem. The Sacramento Kings throttled the Raptors last night, 123 to 89. We'll dive into that. Um, good, good little win. It was a good little win. I don't have a lot on it, to be totally honest. Oh, we'll you, have six quick thoughts coming up, yeah. but I don't have any. You took a frying pan to somebody. Good for you. Yeah, it was that? It was honestly, it was really nice watching it, and halfway through the third quarter, going, all right. All right, six quick like thoughts is, is already written. Yeah, this is done. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like, I'm going to keep it on. Yeah. But it, just in case things get weird, and things almost did get weird, like six minutes left in the fourth quarter, I think the Raptors got it to like 21. Shameful. Well, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't reach the point where I went, oh no. But 21 with six minutes to go, that's a stop, another three. Now it's 18. And now it's, now it's not not dicey, but probably a little closer than you wanted it to get. Those are the games where, if it's the other way, if the Kings are getting beat like that, I always like to tweet out, Kevin Herter, three-pointer, Kings down, Kings cut the lead to 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only seven stops and seven threes away. Yeah, from being right back I just, <laughs> uh, I like to be sarcastic and snarky yeah. in those moments. Luckily, yeah. we didn't have any of that. No, uh, Kings just blew out a just bad, bad version of the Toronto Raptors. I want to do one thing on this game and then get to this ridiculous Shohei Otani story. Yeah. Uh, for a bit. Um, you have down here that the Kings improved to 35 and four when scoring 120 or more points. What's your takeaway with that? Science. Like score 120, you win. Okay. Like, I, I mean, it's, Scoring more points better than scoring less points. It's pretty simple formula. <laughs> score 120, you win. Don't score 120, you don't win. 
Yeah, I, mean, I would love to. I would love it... to look at what that is around the league because I bet a team like Washington, who the yeah. Kings face tonight, Ooh. doesn't win a lot when they score under twenty. <laughs> no, I, I they mean give I think up so many points. The the reverse though is what are they uh, five and twenty four something like that? Yeah, that's wild. When they don't score one twenty, so wild. So that's you know it's not like we're just putting up thirty five and four and this team is you know, like 40 and 11 on the season. Right. So it's not that, that big of a disparity. Yeah. It's a huge disparity. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. We'll, we'll jump in a little deeper into Kings Raptors with six quick thoughts. And I got a couple other kind of big picture things I want to talk about with the Kings, but I don't know if anybody followed this Shohei Otani story that broke yesterday. The short of it is the Dodgers fired Shohei's interpreter, uh, Ipe Matsuhara, excuse me, Mitsuhara, he was fired for, quote, massive theft mm. of Shohei Otani's money, about four and a half million dollars to pay gambling debts to an offshore sports book. Now, the, the story itself is wild because Mitsuhara was under this, this sports book that he was betting with is under investigation. And Mizuhara got caught up in it. So he sat down with ESPN for a 90-minute interview where he laid out his side of the story. And Shohei Otani's there. And Shohei doesn't speak a ton of English, mm -hmm. but he was catching enough of the conversation to understand that something was off. And Mizuhara was laying it out like, Shohei loaned me this money. He loaned me this $4.5 million to pay off my gambling debts. $4.5 million in gambling debts. That's so much losing. That's a lot of prize <laughs> picks. So much losing. I mean, that's like <laughs> you did a like forty six picks a night, and just no, no, I'm just messing. The 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 quote here from Mizuhara: "I'm terrible at gambling. Never going to do it again. Never won any money. I mean, I dug myself a hole and it kept on getting bigger, and it meant I had to bet bigger to get out of it, and just kept on losing. It's like a snowball effect." Oh, he knew snowball cool. effect. We have, yeah. He knew Mizu snowball. Yeah, Mizuhara knows. Oh, he does know. I mean, that's a quote from ESPN. That's a wild ass quote. And that is the reason that gambling is dangerous. Like, I can bet a hundred dollars. Oh shoot, I lost a hundred. Well, now I need to bet two hundred dollars to make like, up no, for the hundred I lost. That's not how this goes <laughs> at all, dude. You have a problem, sir. Seek help. That's right. But <laughs> so so. Shohei, over the course of this conversation, picks up enough to go, this hmm. isn't right. Brings in a separate interpreter to clue him in on what's going on. And as ESPN was going to publish this story, Otani's people call ESPN and go, no, 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 no. This was a massive theft. This was not Shohei out of the kindness of his heart giving the interpreter four and a half million dollars to pay off his gambling debts. This was the interpreter stealing. The interpreter, by the way, this isn't some new guy that the Dodgers were like, yeah, hey, here's your dude. He's been with Shohei since he, he since he got to the U.S. Wow. They've been around. They've been tight. What a horrible violation of trust. Just brutal, dude. Yeah. I mean, especially because you're trusting someone with so much of your life because you don't understand what people are saying. Right. You know, he, he's like integral to everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brutal. Now, I want to make sure that this this is all on the up and up. Sure. Plus, I love that they they call it massive theft. Like these things actually have like like legal terms they could have used. Oh, massive theft! It massive just gets theft. it out into the public. It sounds so like this a is, good term. Here's Let's go with massive theft. Just there's so many <laughs> layers to this that make it interesting. One is just the, like you said that violation of trust. That's yeah. crazy in and of itself. I would watch that this this thing is what I watch a documentary about on a weekend mm. where I read the Netflix description. I'm like, dang, interpreter stole four and a half million dollars from baseball player. I, what? I'm in. So that by itself is fascinating. But it doesn't sound like, and Mizuhara has since come clean and been like, this is all me. This is all my fault. Like, I'm ready to accept the consequences. He, he said that in his ESPN story. He's like literally, literally going to prison. Probably, yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine why, not, why he wouldn't. Yeah, I, I mean, what was he betting on? So, so that's another thing. So, there's a couple of other layers to this. Immediately, obviously, everybody goes Shohei interpreter betting 
Shohei was throwing games. That's why the Angels suck. Mm. He won two MVPs. It was not. Yeah, and they, you're right. He's the reason the Angels suck. Yeah, right. Yeah, that you're it. right. That's that it. it. You found it. You found it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somewhere, Artie Moreno's like, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's it. <laughs> no, but there's there's that immediate jump, but I don't I don't think that's necessarily the the case. He said that he never bet on baseball. And the reason he went to this offshore book is because sports betting is not legal in, in California. Okay. So there was a lot of like international soccer and there was another, another sport in there, but he said he never bet on baseball. There's meetings every year in spring training, not to bet on baseball. Da, 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 da. So he said he never did that. The, the thing here though, is it opens the door just enough to get a glimpse of the potential. I, I personally, based on everything we know, don't believe Shohei has any involvement, had any, or has any involvement with this. I genuinely think he got kind of bamboozled here by his interpreter who had access to his bank accounts and took money. He wouldn't be the first. And sidebar, it would be so cool to be so rich to not notice four and a half million dollars missing from your bank account. I got to tell you. It, well, I mean, he's, <laughs> he is so rich that he was able to defer like almost all of his his salary yes until he retires he is uh, i was reading this at, at sportico yesterday shohei is making two million dollars this year and will be the highest paid player in baseball because of endorsements mm. he's gonna make 63 million dollars just in endorsements oh so he's a new michael jordan yes of, of major yes. league baseball yes he's just the man so wow i don't i don't think but it opens the door wide enough to to Show us the potential dangers of the influx of gambling into sports. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. If it was the case, I don't think it is, but let's let's go to the universe where it is. If it was the case that Shohei was involved in this and that Shohei did even bet even bet on the Angels mm. and he got caught, baseball would collapse, dude. Yeah, this would be bad. You don't recover. This is your the international yeah. superstar of superstars. People watch baseball to j we we took we me and my wife, big Disneyland people, went down to Disneyland, took an extra day down there just to go watch Shohei Otani play. Mm. Go to the if you go to an Angels game, it is Shohei Jersey, Shohei Jersey, Shohei Jersey. He takes his last at bat, people are out of there, dude. Like that's that was the kind of vibe. This dude is it. If if it was the case that he what I don't I genuinely don't know how the sport would ever recover from that. Yeah, it would be jarring, J and and it would just break so many ties with yeah. with uh you know like globally it would just like snap ties like this. I don't know. It, it's horrible because you hope that everybody's on the up and up, but right. Let's be honest. Like it, it, this, it's everywhere in every sport now. I mean, it, uh. Bickerstaff was complaining that, you know, he's had threats because of parlays and stuff. That's just so, like, it's just wild. And like, look, we're guys that do price picks, right? Love price picks. As, as and we're, we have sponsorship deals and everything else. Like it's something that we do. Mm -hmm. Like those are things that like people want to get on me for, for doing it. It's like, okay, look, the NBA has literally an agreement with half of these, these, right. Like, whether it's it's not prize picks, but like the the betting like world, they they have sure different like sports endorse endorsement deals themselves. Yes. yes, so you can't tell me I can't do it, and, right. and I'm not like going into a locker room saying, "Hey, Darren, and I, I really need you to get 1.5 steals." Yeah, it's more not... than 1.5 steals tonight. Yeah, that's not something no. that we're doing. No, 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 not not super high stakes, and that's it. I don't, I don't. There's phone numbers you can call if you have that kind of problem. Yeah. But I just, I can't imagine ever being so deep in it that I'm going to go threaten a person over it mm. or talk or talk to a player or coach about it in a me media or non-media capacity. Oh yeah. Like that no. is my, that is my, I have never lost a parlay and been like, or lost a prize picks entry because uh, Steph Curry missed a three and I'm like, Oh, Steph, like, nope, I should have made the different pick. I hate you. I now, did Steph. the wrong pick. Like, this is my <laughs> fault. Anyways, it's a whole thing. Speaking uh, of the Warriors, really quick, fun note from their game last night. 
This guy named Pat Spencer scored his first NBA bucket in garbage time of the Warriors win over the Grizzlies. Yep. He got a dunk. Uh, the quirk here, not only was it his first NBA bucket, shout out to him, he wears number 61. Oh, that's wild. So I went, how many guys in NBA history have scored a point and worn number 61? It turns out it's three. And the last one to do it was Dave Piontek. Uh, Piontek? Piontek? You got me. Piontek uh, of the Cincinnati Royals in 1963. Oh, that's Pat wild. Spencer, the first number 61 to score a point in the NBA in, what is that, 61 years. Oh, that's a lot. That was just a fun, I thought that was a fun thing. I love uniform number tidbits. I have this hilarious thought that popped in my head earlier. We got to go to break, so. We do. Um, but it was the Golden State Warriors as the Golden Girls. And <laughs> <laughs> it it very quickly formed in my head, and I think it's funny. We can flesh that bit out. We can. We'll take a look. All right. <laughs> Uh, we'll also take a look at the Kings dominant win over the Raptors last night, 123 to 89 up in the six. We will talk about that and we will have a Jiffy Lube fast break player of the game for you, giving you a hundred dollar Jiffy Lube gift certificate and a chance to win a Sacramento Kings jersey. All of that and more coming up next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento sports leader. I have Duquesne over BYU. So on one of my pools. Oh, no, no. On both of my pools. I also have Duquesne over Moorhead State in round two. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Oh, dang. No join us tweet? Oh, shoot. Oh, it's oh, we had a little off morning. Yeah. We had a little off morning. James popped this off is, to somebody. This is crazy. Um, Let me find our... Oh. A place called Rocket Loans Arena has betting stations inside of it. Hmm. I wonder if you can get a rocket loan for your betting. Hey, there we are. Quote, join us. Thanks, Will. That's hilarious. Oh, our guy Faraz, he needs to work on the picture that he puts up of his video. This one, he looks like he was clubbed or at a club at 3 o'clock in the morning. The Kings have the... You see this? Faraz. Oh, dear. <laughs> God, looked like me at my buddy's wedding on Saturday. Yeah, there you go. Um, All right, so the Kings, 897 winning percentage when scoring 120 plus. This is via Will Z at willzstats.com. Uh, Boston, 32 and 3. Um, I'm trying to find the winning percentages better than the Kings, which is 897, which is crazy. Boston is 91-4. Dallas, 28 and 3. When scoring 120 plus. Oh. That's a 90.3 winning percentage. Uh the Clippers 25 and 2. Oh. 92.6. Denver 21 and 2, 91.3. And that is it. Who's the worst? Detroit is five and nine. <laughs> yeah, because scoring 120 plus. they're scoring 120 and the other team. Washington is four and sixteen. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. amazing. The Kings have scored 120 plus the second most times in the NBA this year. Hmm. Behind? I don't know. Indiana. 
Oh, yeah, I knew that. Dumb, James. But what's Indiana's record? You know what's wild? Uh, the seven additional games that Indiana has on the Kings in that category, all losses. They oh. both have 35 wins. Oh, wow. 30 seconds. <sighs> Thanks for this, Will. This is great. I mean, he didn't send it to me, just you. Come on, Will. <laughs> Let me just have their text message. Mm. All right, here we go. Now, back to the Insiders with James Hamm and Kyle Madsen. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. I just hit the little rejoin a little sooner, but I was really feeling the song. I, I like it, too. Boom by all by Blackpink. Check it out, guys. Yeah. It's kind of fire. <laughs> uh, shout out to Will Z, willzstats.com. We were asking about earlier, because you noted on the rundown, the Kings are 35-4 and four when scoring 120 or more points. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to know what that was relative to the rest of the league. That's a 897 winning percentage. Um, what is what is that? You know, It's fifth in the league. Behind Dallas at 28-3, and three, Denver 21-2, and two, Boston 32-3, and three, and the Los Angeles Clippers at 25-2. and two. Mm. Washington, by the way, 4-16. and 16. Yeah, I mean, and the league wants to cut down on scoring, and some of these teams are like, yeah, we'll pass. No, scoring, yeah, we're scoring, keep is, scoring. <laughs> scoring is good. Scoring is good. We, <laughs> there's, good. there's a level of physicality required to bring scoring down. Yes. That some teams are just not going to play with. Yeah. Like, nah. Some teams are like, no, no, we're good. We're good. Let's jump into the Kings. Dominant 123-89 win over the Raptors last night with James Ham. Six quick thoughts. How'd yesterday's Kings game go? Kings up. insider James Ham has six notes you need to know. Here are James Ham's six quick thoughts. Yeah, here they are. Could be sponsored by you. Hey, Rich. If you want a sweatshirt, get Six Quick Thoughts sponsored. Is he's he listening? listening? He's not listening. Of course he's not. That's fine. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> chopping it up. He's being a good employee hanging out with her. You think? Oh, he's hanging out with the boss man. That's why. Oh, man. Oh, we got Aaron out Aaron's there. Aaron's out there. All right. Six Quick Thoughts could be sponsored by you. Uh, reach out if you would like to sponsor this segment. James, what is your first quick thought? Found a shot. De'Aaron Fox looks confident with it. I looked confident Confident. Here Jesus. we go. With his jumper from the opening tip. Uh, he started in the mid-range, worked from downtown. His Kings leading score, 20 points, 3-7 from the field. 3-7 uh, from three-point range, 5 assists. Good game. Good start. Good energy from De'Aaron Fox. Of course, he didn't play a lot of minutes. That's good stuff. Yeah. When he's knocking down a three, man, he's, uh, he's really, really hard to really, really hard to stop. We've seen, we've seen his numbers kind of go up and down a little bit uh on the season he's down to 36.7 percent but that's still on this level of volume a career high he was at 37.1 in his second year but he was taking three a game yeah uh, this year he's seven and a half a game 36.7 percent um and yeah if he's gonna knock him down like he did last night eh, tough tough player to stop definitely number two kentucky connection with fox firing away malik monk came off the bench and matched the energy he put up 17 points six to 12 shooting uh, he's having a career year, getting better each and every game as the season winds down. And that came in limited minutes as well. Uh, all these guys, you know, we played 19 minutes and 42 seconds, scored 17 points. Pretty, pretty healthy night for Malik Monk. Yeah, man. Just continues this string of really, really impactful play off the bench. Uh, what I need is for this to continue into and through the postseason. Oh yeah, there can't be this wall where we're. And Malik only had five last night. Six last night, but he did have four assists. Like, no man, I need I need this level of Malik Monk. If the Kings are going to peak at the right time, it has to be with with Monk out in front. 
Well, that, and if you make it to the postseason, you might be the only team in the Western Conference with a player like him. You know, a, a guy who, who goes out there, like Norman Powell scores, but most of Norman Powell's shots are, are off of other people's draw and kick. Like he, he's a yeah, knockdown three point I'm, shooter. It, what Malik Monk brings to the table, if you have a 27 point per game scorer and another guy who attacks like this mm -hmm. coming off the bench, mm -hmm. I don't think there's another team in the West that has it. Uh, no, I, I'm trying to think of any team in, in basketball that has a, that has a player like him uh, off the bench. You know, you have your Jordan Clarkson's. Yeah. Uh, he's a really, really good player. Um, but just a second point guard who can go get you 30 and go get you 40, but who also can give you 17 and eight. Yeah. That's, that's really, really valuable. And just gives Mike Brown a lot of flexibility in how he, he wants to play against the second unit. Yeah. yeah. Really good. Really good stuff from Malik Monk. Number three, uh, another double, double, another triple double. Oh, Devonta Sabonis avoided playing big minutes. He keyed in at 27 minutes and 34 seconds, finished with 13 points. 10 assists, 17 rebounds. Uh, his rebounding was off the charts. And so, like, look, I don't care. He, he only shot four of seven from the field. Kings didn't need him to be that guy. This was a really, really good, like, get in, get out game for Sabonis. Yeah, I'm kind of, I don't have anything to add. This is just kind of the norm now. Yeah, isn't it wild? Number four. <laughs> Number four, solid pairing. Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray both brought something to the table. They combined to go for 26 points and 10 rebounds. So one of the chat to point out that I, I combined rebounds, which is funny because Keegan Murray had eight rebounds and Harrison yeah. Barnes had two. But me, <laughs> me, Keegan Murray, and Harrison Barnes combined for 10 rebounds last night. I thought I did a great job on the glass. Thanks. Yeah, I, I would also point <laughs> out that Harrison Barnes had 16 points and Keegan Murray only had 10, yeah. which is something we'll get to later, I think. But uh, yeah, they were good. And, and again... 19 minutes for Barnes, 30, 31 minutes for, for Keegan Murray. You were able to limit minutes. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Keegan Murray a little bit, but overall, good game for those two. And I don't think it's a coincidence that you're seeing uh, both of them thrive with Keon Ellison starting lineup. Mm. It continues to kind of be a theme. Okay. I fully agree. Number five. Thief. No. Yes. Oh. Keon Ellis improved to 7-0 and as a starter for the Kings, posting six points, two assists, and a career high tying four, four steals in 25 minutes. Uh, with Kevin Herter sidelined with a dislocated shoulder, Ellis Island is in full effect. Yeah, it sure is. Shocking that he starts in the Kings, finally throttle a bad team. Mm. I, for one, am flabbergasted, flummoxed. I cannot believe that this is happening. Wow. What an amazing thing. <laughs> and to back up your five block game with a four steal game. <laughs> Solid. Come on, man. Solid. Come on. Bro. I sense sarcasm in your voice, Kyle. What? I sense, I sense sarcasm. No. Sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. Uh, brought the energy. Chris Duarte is getting another look with Herder out and seems to be settling in. <laughs> Uh, Kyle called this yesterday. He hit some shots and then played well with the extra uh, with the extra time in the second half. Finished with 14 points. Solid defense. He is loving the new NBA. You can foul anybody rule. Dude, he's thriving. Thriving in the well, foul anybody and not get called rule. Yeah, well, I mean, that was all. It was always going to be that in the postseason. Of course, it was always going to. And now, if if you're adding Chris Duarte to your rotation and he can credibly give you uh, what he, he played 19 minutes last night, let's say he would have played 15 without garbage time. I, 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 I think that's just enormous for this rotation that we've been going, man, you need somebody who can kind of defend. I can knock down a three. Okay. Chris Duarte is not six, nine, but he's fine. And I thought he was more than adequate last night. He looks more confident in what he's doing offensively. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, what he does defensively kind of drives him uh, on the other end. And yeah, man, he's a knockdown three point shooter. Teams have to guard him. Uh, he did a really nice job with it. He had a putback last night where he snuck in for a quick rebound after a, after a miss, just being in the right spot, playing good defense. This Chris Duarte is the player they were hoping to get all year. It's taken him a minute, taking a while to come around, taking a little adjustment from the officials. Mm -hmm. But if, if you can get, 
If you can get in a playoff series, if you can get 12 good minutes tonight from Chris Duarte, I think that makes the, the Kings defense a lot better. Oh, I totally agree. And, and I also would point out that um, that like this is just the style of player he is. Yep. You need him. And he's healthy. He's a dog. He's figuring it out. Yep. Uh, Chris Duarte is going to be our Jiffy Lube fast break player of the game. Uh, congratulations to him. You mentioned it. Five of six from the field. Two of two from beyond the arc. 14 points. Five boards. A couple assists. Just one turnover. He was a plus 14 in 19 minutes off the bench. Really, really effective game for him. So he is our Jiffy Lube fast break player of the game. Enter to win now. A Jiffy Lube $100 gift certificate and your chance to win a Sacramento Kings jersey, which we'll be giving away at the end of this month. Get to ESPN1320.com. The Jiffy Lube Fast Break Contest page is right there at the front. You're going to click on that and just enter the code word nice and easy. It's Duarte. D-U-A-R-T-E. Use that Duarte to enter to win a $100 Jiffy Lube gift certificate and enter to win a Sacramento Kings jersey courtesy of our friends at Jiffy Lube. All right. We got to run. We're going to talk Kings Wizards. We're going to talk Kevin Herter injury. We'll take a look around the NBA. we got a ton of stuff coming up here on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Leader. Clear. Oh. Hmm. I don't know how I wound up on a mailing list for line oh. promotions, but it's never like, you know, sometimes you'll get those like, uh, hey, we're running this, uh, we've got this coming out, um, let us know if you want to sample the product. Yeah, sure. I, 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 I know I'm very upfront. I'm like, I'm not going to write about this. Like, I, I'm not, I, I don't cover this, but if you want to send me some, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. like, uh, sure, here's my address. Um, never that with wine. They never just send Nobody's you Nobody's ever line. like, yeah, hey, here's a couple bottles of wine for you. Oh. Uh, we're excited to share the Ritz Carlton Baccara Santa Barbara's upcoming wine pairing dinner series featuring some of the region's top winemakers at the Angel Oak Wine Cellar. Why, you want to give me complimentary tickets or something? No, no, no. Tickets are $195. Mm. <laughs> that makes sense. Good promo, though, Kyle. Thanks. Good. If anybody knows anybody with the uh, Ritz-Carlton Baccara Santa Barbara, send them this clip. They could. Tell them they could sponsor Six, six Quick Thoughts. They could. They could sponsor Six Quick Thoughts. Si six Quick Sips. Six sip, sip quick six. sips. That would be so difficult to say every time. We wouldn't have to. <laughs> that's, a, that's for the voice guy. That's right. That six is for the voice. Quick sips. Sip quick. Sip quick thoughts. Uh, sips quick thoughts. There we go. Uh, Jim, we have nothing on Kevin Herter. We we have nothing. Uh, we have Chris Biederman on the ground in uh, Toronto. And I was like, hey, what do you know? And he was like, ah. Absolutely like, um, nothing. I'm working Say on it. it again. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is. Uh, Texts have gone like un like no one was re responding. It's, it's not this. It's not this. This is. I, I, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for the lack of communication on this. But in my brain, in the NFL, when a player gets hurt, and then exits the game. Sometimes the coach will be like, "Yeah, it's an ACL," but sometimes they're like, "And eh, we need more testing." And we need more. Ah, uh, well, next day uh, we haven't gotten word yet. Da, da, da. That's usually bad. That's usually like, "A, hey, this is something worse than you thought." So that's just how it is. We I don't should think probably discuss case. this on the air because there is a process in the NBA uh -huh. that's way convoluted and weird. Okay, so. I'm just worried that Kevin Herter's arm has fallen completely off. I worry that my arm <laughs> just is carrying around fall his off. arm. I did have physical therapy yesterday. Oh, how'd that go? I have not torn my rotator cup, which is excellent news. 
That's big. Time. So I will not need surgery, at Thank least God. as of right now. I have an impingement, which is very, very painful. So my right shoulder. It's like, you know, how far can you throw a bit? I can't pick up a baseball at this point. How far can I throw it? You can't plug in your computer. Oh my gosh. Risking injury right yeah, now. Kyle That's saw that. Brutal, dude. You saw me with back issues when we first started the show. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to make a move in the chair and just made the wrong move. Cool. I literally don't know what you did. All of a sudden you were just up. Like, I was just like, oh, oh dear Lord, I can't <laughs> breathe. Yeah. What? Why does it say, why is Mr. Rancho saying audio is a little glitchy? Your face is a little glitchy. Boom roasted. <laughs> Boom roasted. <laughs> uh, Kyle's going to punch oh, you too, Mr. Rancho. Now, back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. He's James. I'm Kyle. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Let's talk real quick. We we're having a conversation during the break about Kevin Herter. And if you want in on the conversations going on during the breaks, mm -hmm. tap into youtube.com slash ESPN1320 or twitch.tv slash ESPN1320. When we go to break on the radio or the Odyssey app, or maybe you're listening on, on the ESPN1320 website, when we go to break there, we just talk it up during during the break on ESPN 1320 TV. So get over there. Hang out in the chatty house. It's good vibes over there. I agree, man. Yeah. Sometimes they change their names. I don't know. While we're doing housekeeping, let me just... Th this is... I, I typically... So Charlie, our boss, does a wonderful job of making sure that we know what's coming up on our station so we can promote it. I usually try to pick a couple of those things. It's usually like a few things. I, I try and pick one or two, but it's March Madness, which means you probably have a bracket and we have so many things coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, we've got first round games. Nine o'clock a.m. on 102.5 FM HD2, the Bet Sacramento. We will also have another game immediately after that at 11.30 a.m. on 102.5 FM HD2, Sac uh, the Bet Sacramento. And then at 4 o'clock, the, the tournament comes to ESPN 1320. That's 98.5 HD2, your smart speaker, and the free Odyssey app. Mm. A basketball galore. But it's not just on Friday. Um, no, excuse me. That is Friday. That is also today. That is also happening today. Also. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, we have 13 hours of wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Saturday and Sunday right here starting at 9 a.m. So if you're out and about, you're like, oh, man, I got to walk away from the tournament. I got to go out, run out some errands. Get to ESPN 1320 because we're going to have a game on. Yeah, just like plug in all day. Yeah. Or maybe you're walking around the store. I do this at Costco or whatever store. I don't know why I singled out Costco. Yeah. I'll listen. I, I'll listen to D-Lo and KC, whatever, whatever's going on. I'll throw the earbuds in. Okay. I don't love being that guy, but I'm also very cognizant of when there's people near me. I take a headphone out in case somebody needs to get my attention. I sometimes I'll do one earbud. Maybe I'll just start doing that. Yeah. So it's usually oh, my, that's probably the my move. right ear. Okay. And then I'm listening with the other, with the left. That's probably smart. And if I go in, let me let me be clear. I do this like with courtesy. If I walk into Trader Joe's, I shop at Trader Joe's a lot. If I walk into Trader Joe's and it's packed, which happens sometimes. Sometimes I get there at five thirty and she says, "No headphones." Mm. That's too much happening. Too much, too much going on. Don't want to be rude. See, that's the time where I like to zone out. <laughs> no, I do. When there's too many people, like I, I'm just like, uh, I'm just not. I mean, I'm still courteous. I'm still nice to people. Sure, and, you sure, know. of course. Yeah, I'm just worried that I'm going to be in the way, and somebody's trying to get my attention. I just don't catch them. Yeah, and then I'm the jerk with his headphones in, who's not. I don't have enough awareness of my surroundings to do that. I always <laughs> feel bad when you know you go back to the back of the Costco where, you know, the paper towels and, and the water is, and you go grab a, you know, big giant thing of water because, mm -hmm. you know, as one does, you, you buy way too much water. Why not? And I don't put my water 
like underneath the cart because I can't bend over with a giant thing of water mm -hmm. to throw it in the cart. But then, I, so I, I always like either stack it on the front lip of the cart, like caddy corner, or I just set it, I, I've cleared a space and I set it down. Yeah, yeah. And then I always look around and There's and there's other people that need help. And I'm just looking at it like, like, I can't, I can't help you. You got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> like I did the one water and I'm, there's a good chance I'm not going to be able to Is get it? out of my cart yeah. when the... <laughs> This when is I gonna get be to a problem later. I'm literally gonna just have to rip the plastic open and start throwing water bottles <laughs> in the trunk. So the whole trunk is filled with individual water bottles, not a case of water. Yeah. Like there's just nothing I can do. And I like a lot of times you feel bad because people are like, oh, that guy's a jerk. He doesn't want to help me. I'm like, no, I just don't no, have no. a back. I don't have a shoulder. Yeah. No, I'm just you need falling a apart. You need a t shirt that's like out of order. Yeah, out of order. Get you a little sign. Yeah. My dude, my <laughs> my grandmother uh, used to live in an upstairs apartment. And she would call me up and be like, "Hey, I got groceries. Can you can you come help me carry them up?" I'm like, "Yeah, no problem, grandma." Mm -hmm. <laughs> One day she goes, "Hey, I forgot I had a case of water in my car. Can you come get it? It's okay if not. Like don't want to be a and I'm like, I was like, "I'm I'm a little busy right now. I can come over later. Not a problem. She doesn't live far." Let me finish running these errands and I'll She's like, okay, well, if, no, if you don't want, if you, if you can't, it's okay. I can just take them out one by one and bring them upstairs. <laughs> like, oh my God. No. 48 be, laps. Yeah, right. That's crazy. <laughs> like, give me, I got you. It's not a problem, grandma. I will help you do anything. Um, oh, finishing awesome. up, uh, finishing up our housekeeping before we get to the Kevin Herter stuff. Uh, so 13 hours of wall to wall coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament right here on ESPN 1320 on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so stay tapped in through the weekend. And then we're not done here, folks. No one then. Coming up three. Count them. One, two, three. Big watch parties sponsored by Michelob Ultra, Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. The first one, Thursday, March 28th. Write this down. Everybody get your calendars out. I'll give you a second. Everybody got calendars out? Perfect. All right. Uh, 4 p.m. Thursday, March 28th. We have a sweet 16 watch party with D-Lo, KC, and Jesse, that is at Bar West at 2724 J Street in Midtown. So get on out to Bar West. Enjoy some shooty baskets with D'Lo, Casey, and Jesse. If you've never been to one of their events before, one of their shindigs, it's a good time to go. It is. A, there's going to be some great basketball on, and B, the vibes are always immaculate. Mm -hmm. So get out there to Bar West on Thursday, March 28th at 4 o'clock. And then Saturday, March 30th, just two days later, there will be an Elite Eight watch party at 3 o'clock with me and James at Player Sports Pub and Grill at 4060 Sunrise Boulevard in Fair Oaks. Oh, yeah. So Thursday, next week. Saturday, next week. And then Monday, the following week, April 8th. Excuse me, two weeks later, April 8th. We have the National Championship Game watch party. That'll be D'Lo, Casey, James, and Jesse. That's at Tom's Watch Bar in uh, down in Doco. Tom's Watch Bar, Sacramento, right across from Golden One. Uh, get out there and enjoy uh, enjoy a watch party with the entire ESPN 1320 crew. Sans me because I will be however many miles away England is. Oh. I'm not even going to venture a guess. 6,000? Oh, that's right. Is it 6,000-ish? 6, 6, oh, I forgot. 5,000? That's, that's when you're going to be in, in England? Yeah, I'll be in England for that one. Oh yeah, so I've got an uh, I've got an eleven thirty p.m. tip off time for the natty. Oh, I'll be tapped in. All right, I won't be at Tom's Watch Bar, but I'll be tapped in. I like a little Tom's Watch Bar. Yeah, man, it's a good spot. All right, so make sure to come out and uh, and hang with us. We got those three watch parties coming up, sponsored by Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. All right, let's talk Kevin Herter. I mean, we can talk Kevin Herter, but the talk with Kevin Herter is that we don't really know anything yet except that he has a shoulder dislocation. He is not on the road trip with the team, so he will not be returning anytime in the next couple of games. So you mentioned at the break that there is a protocol with the NBA that's a little bit convoluted when it comes to reporting injuries. Because I was saying, man, in the NFL, if a guy rolls an ankle and... They go, oh, yeah, he's got an MRI coming up. Don't know anything. Got x-rays negative. But we're going to get an MRI. And then the next day, they're like, yeah, no, still awaiting some further tests. We got additional tests. Uh, right now, it's an ankle. That typically is bad news. Yes. 
okay, so we had this injury a couple of years ago where Tyrese Halliburton, right near the end of the season, took a bad step and his knee just went got wobbly, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, that's not good. Mm -hmm. And he ended up, I think it was a hyperextension. He missed, he only missed like two or three games. Mm -hmm. So, but we, well, maybe it's more than that because we sat there and waited and waited and waited and waited and got like, got like four or five days in, like, hey, when are we getting the update? Right. And the update finally came and it was way late. Mm. Okay. So look at, at the NBA level, when there's an injury that's potentially, I don't want to say career threatening, but like the, like it could impact the value of a player, mm -hmm. right? Going forward. Mm -hmm. It gets lost in this weird. Okay. So first of all, Kevin Herter has probably seen like three specialists by this point. And that's because like there's multiple specialists where they're at. Right. So mm -hmm. that night he, he likely had an MRI on the night that he got hurt. A and then that MRI was taken to like a team and they looked at that. And then there was probably an outside person that mm -hmm. like also looked at the x-rays and looked at the, the MRI and said, okay, this is, it kind of looks like this, this, and this, right. Then you mm -hmm. have to wait a day or two for swelling. A and then after that, it's, it gets a little more complicated. Okay. So someone's going to write a press release on what it is that that's going on. It's an mm -hmm. injury update. Sure. Sometimes those injury updates can be like a, a sent sentence. Right. Sometimes they can be like four sentences. Right. This is probably going to be more like a four sentence one where we're trying to figure out how long he's going to be out. What, what is the time frame? Cause that's like realistically when, like when I've gotten angry with the Kings in the past, it's like, look, you know, Rashawn Holmes has a shoulder injury mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, what is it? Is it torn labor? Is it a grade one, right. two or three separation? Is it right. a dislocation? Did he fray the rotator cuff? Did right. he tear his rotator cuff? Did he, is an AC joint? Did he jam the AC? Joint? Like, what is it? You're like, what did you have for dinner? A meal. Yeah. A meal. Like <laughs> exactly. And the Kings wouldn't tell us. And it went on for like two weeks. And then finally it came out that he had a torn labrum sure. and then he didn't have surgery on the labrum, but he was at like four to six weeks. The reason why we want that is so we have an idea of what we tell people like, like out in the public, people keep asking like, what is the Kevin Herter update? Right. It's like, we don't just give an update. Like when I talk about a grade three ankle sprain, everybody cringes because I explained that it's a complete sever of the ligament. Right. And the ligament has to like reattach itself and grow back together, heal scar tissue, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We move forward. Right. We don't know what's going to happen with Kevin's shoulder because when you dislocate a shoulder, you can again tear a rotator cuff. Sure. You can't, there's all kinds of things that mm -hmm. he could, he could have torn his labor and he, he could have done all kinds of damage outside of just the dislocation. Right. right. So if this is again lethal weapon, they just walk in and they, pop his shoulder right back in place and he's ready to go. That's one thing, but this is professional athlete. You need to make yes. sure everything else yes. is intact. Right? So once it gets to the point where the doctors have said, they all confer, this is what's happening. Then a press release is written. That press release goes to the front office. Mm -hmm. It might go to the business side. It will go to his agent. That press release will get, twisted and turned and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten until everyone is comfortable with what's going out because, Oh God, that sounds awful. It is awful because we have mm -hmm. a team who has value and a player that needs to maintain value and wants to make sure that what mm -hmm. they put in that press release says what they want to put. Mm -hmm. You have a, an agent who has the same, can have the same interest, but maybe not. You know, like the, the interest might not be aligned all the time between right. these two. Right. So you're looking at long term, you're looking at short term, you're looking at business side, you're looking at how many games are left in the season, you're looking at when an injury report is coming out, whether it's right during your season ticket holder time. There are too many things that go into some of these. And so this one here, it could be that Kevin Herter will be back next week. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's also possible he's done for the year and it he might need surgery or whatever we, we, we don't no know idea. we don't know but just know that it's it's not going to be just like you know how often have you ever seen a press release on a post-surgical thing that said it was an unsuccessful mcl zero thing. times zero times think it's always successful i'm sure it has happened at some 100 point 100 of the time it's always successful yeah 
And then when they Even have to go back in, right? Uh, a month and a half later, because something, yeah, you know, we had a setback, <laughs> and they have to go back in. It was because the first one wasn't successful. Yeah. So oh, hang on, review. <laughs> Wait, review. Oh, you throw the flag. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that Mike Brown yeah. doesn't lose that challenge as well. Right. So that. Oh boy. Yeah. So they want to. They just want to make sure that they know exactly what the injury is before they go about announcing to the public what the injury is. So right now we know the shoulder was dislocated, but we don't know the extent of the internal damage there. Oh yeah, or the, any additional damage. Nope. Maybe there's not any, but <clears throat> we'll uh, we'll have that for you whenever it comes out. Yeah, as soon as it comes out, like uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter, or or we'll, mm -hmm. we'll if it's while we're on the show, we'll we'll put it out here. Yeah, and the reason, and and here's the other thing too. This is not because we're nosy. This is not because. Oh, we want to we want to know because we want to know for no, this is literally so when we have the conversation about Keon Ellis in the starting lineup, we have the context of, oh, he's going to start the next three nights or hey, he's going to finish the season in the starting lineup. Yeah. Or, or he has a good shot at finishing the season, whatever. Like this is right. his opportunity or it's not. Kevin right. Herter could be back. What does the, the bench look like? Not. Yeah. Right. There, like... there are so many ramifications of this. Obviously, priority number one. To you, James, me, Kyle, and everybody listening, it, it, you know, hopefully who who has a who has a heart is hey, hopefully Kevin Herter's okay. Yeah, I just want him to not be in pain and able to play basketball at a high level again as soon as he can because this is his livelihood mm -hmm. and this is what he loves to do, and I hope he gets to do it again asap. That is the number one thing. But we have a job, mm -hmm. and that job is to discuss the team as a whole and Kevin Herter's injury how it plays into that. So yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Fingers and, crossed. Fingers has, crossed. Hey, okay. Kyle, this injury specifically has like ripple effects it, it, and the ripple effects could last for a while. Mm -hmm. Like there is whether Kevin Herter is, is available to be traded this off season, mm -hmm. which is something like we kind of table for right now, yeah. but it also, it's like the door that it opened for Keon Ellis. Can Keon Ellis not only show that he can hold on to a position for, the next three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, whatever it is that's left in the in the season mm -hmm. slash. Well, I mean, we're about three season, three weeks, three and a half weeks left in the season. But then on Last top month, of yeah, yeah, at on top of that, the playoffs, right? So mm -hmm. we don't know, right? This is a great time for him to prove that not only is he a, a ball player, but he might be your starting shooting guard for next season. So that's a big deal. On top of that, we have this other angle with Chris Duarte. All of a sudden, Chris Duarte is getting another opportunity. Yeah. And how often have we talked about, hey, it's one thing to go out and get a defensive player, but if that defensive player is Davion Mitchell and he's playing behind De'Aaron Fox, who plays between 36 to 38 minutes a mm -hmm. game, and in the playoffs will play at least that, maybe yeah. 40, 40 plus. Like, how much of an impact can a defensive player have if he's playing eight minutes a game or twelve minutes a game? Exactly. That's not much. And how much? And how much of an impact? To speaking to Davion specifically, how much of an impact can he have if he's a net negative because of offense? Yeah. So now, what we get to see now is for Mike Brown has two defensive-minded players in Chris Duarte and, and Keon Ellis. How does that look? How does that change the trajectory of this team? How how does that look in this offseason if these guys work with those four mm -hmm. other starters? Like, do you go get a better version of that? Do you do you stick with these guys? Like, there there's so many layers to what this specific injury means. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, hey, I, I think it just opened a door for Sasha Vizen, uh, Vizenkov to come back. He's he's questionable. He's questionable again tonight, but there's a good chance he mm -hmm. plays. I guess why the Kings need that other scorer off the bench. Now, if you have two defensive-minded guys in Duarte and Ellis, of course, Duarte can score as well. Ellis can score as well. But now it might be okay to have a defense, a, an offensive-minded guy that steps onto the court and just starts heaving threes. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are so many layers to this and the impact, plus the offseason, plus free agency, and, uh, like, all of these other things that play into why we may or may not get a, an answer on yeah. Kevin Herter's injury for a, a day or two. It is fascinating, isn't it? It is. Yeah, man. And there are just so many. There, there are so many fun, like hypotheticals that spin off of this, right? Like if the Kings finish the season scorching hot, but Kevin Herter is ready to go for round one, where does he fit in the rotation? 
Yeah. I doubt if, if if how many how many how many games are left? Uh 68 14. The Kings go eleven and three over their final fourteen mm. to going into the postseason playing their best basketball. Like very obviously Kevin Herter's not going back in the starting lineup. Well, yeah, just for the I, playoffs. I mean, if if somehow Keon Ellis goes twenty one and oh as a starter, whatever uh, he, it is. He ain't ever coming out of the starting lineup mm, ever nope. again. Nope. Nope. It's over. So, so then where so now this is this there's like you said, there's a lot of long term ripple effects here, uh, both into the offseason into next season, but then just in the playoffs. Man, yeah. Hey, Kevin Herter's gonna be back in three weeks. All right. Kings go eleven and three over their final fourteen. Kevin Herter's mm-hmm. ready to go for that first round playoff series. It's like mm, gotta come off the bench and you gotta fit him into a rotation and hope that he responds well to that. It just Yeah, man. It's reality. Now, if he's back next week. All this changes. Right. This whole conversation changes. It's dramatically different. And he might be back next week. They pop it back in. We literally and, have no idea. And there's no structural damage. And it was a one-time thing. And it was just like the way that he got hit. It didn't stretch any tendons. It didn't open up, like, a, like cause any additional damage. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, intriguing. Dave Garcia in the chatty house said, if one player injures another player, that player should sit out until the injured player returns. That opens a can of worms that nobody wants. I promise. You want you want game one of the uh, of the Western Conference first round. Kings Thunder. Domas goes barreling in to pick a random Thunder player who's not a starter. That guy goes, "Oh my chest! I I can't. Oh, I'm out. I'm out for the series." And now Domas is out for the series. Come on, yeah. Come on, that's not going to happen. On, well, that and I mean, if Desmond Bain. It was, was suspended for until until Kevin Herter came back. They literally would have to hire. They'd have to go out, <laughs> search hey, 2K hey. for a player name, <laughs> a fake player name that was made up, and then find that player and bring him in. Yes, there. I mean, they signed two other dudes. They're going to pick a guy from whoever loses the Duquesne BYU matchup. They're going to pick a guy from the losing team, and he's going to play. Well, I mean, there's some 30 year old veterans on that BYU Stop. team. Stop. <laughs> hey, did you see? Hey, speaking of the Grizzlies being injured, did you see Taylor Jenkins almost get hurt last night? Yeah, he, he might have gotten hurt last I, night. I know he was down. That was like, of course, did he, did he flop though? Might have flopped because because might've it was Draymond. Flopped. Did he might've flop? Flopped. I I was shocked because I wasn't super tapped into to the game. I, that was a that was a on the computer while I was doing other stuff game, and. I just look back in time to see the scuffle at midcourt. And I'm going, and I see Draymond getting pulled away, and I'm like, oh boy. Like, you're, there's, there's a two hour show tomorrow. Okay, but what? Okay, so we're going to have to, like, so many players left the bench. And does that reach the level of a scuffle? And, and, does, right. No, no, but th- I don't think it does. I, that's the questionable thing. You can't leave the bench. And I saw dudes just wandering around. Like, what are you doing? It was such an odd. It was, such, it was so right, stupid. It was so so weird because I think there was a timeout called. Yeah, and but that either was way, you're not able, of, you're not allowed to leave the bench area. I, I no, like watch Pajemski's no, out there, and then some other it, dude walks up, and the Grizzlies have like six dudes. They were all out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> just so no. I have I have no idea how that gets litigated because it was just there were no flagrants. It was just a a T on Draymond and Desmond Bain, and they played on. That was wild. Just a weird. But I when I when I saw that I was like, oh boy, here we go. But I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was anything egregious. Just a good old fashioned. These two teams don't like each other. Yeah, I was kind of here for it. It was really nice. The the three people that have ever played for the team don't like the 20, 12 other dudes. Yes. Um, no, I, I just, um, I was expecting something egregious. Mm. I didn't think there was like, all right, all right, very good. And I, I, I couldn't tell either if, because I wasn't locked into the, into the game enough to, to have a take on this, but I couldn't tell if it was chippy because of the physicality of the game. Like we talked about yesterday, mm-hmm. or if it's just, there's enough players from both of these teams who have been in a playoff series together and have talked a bunch of trash over the last couple of years. And that's, that was just kind of the result of this. Yeah. I, I think a lot of, it was a little bit of residual, like yeah. they just seems to like each other. Like. And I, mm-hmm. you know, Sandy Aldama would like, did not like what was happening. I, I mean, at one point, like 
Draymond grabbed him by by the the scruff of his. Yeah, he's just and and jersey. gave him like a gave him like a don't like, do that, don't do that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I didn't think it was bad. No. And in the context of firing. in the in the context of 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 things Draymond can do after a basket, <laughs> it was very 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 below the bar that he has set. Yes. Yeah. It is. Nobody standard. was kicked, punched. No assaults were committed. Yeah. Nobody was choked. I'm just saying, uh, this yeah, is gross. It's it's very possible <laughs> that like. If Trey Lyles does that, he gets a one game suspension. But they're like, no, eh, stop. we've reached the no. level of no. Like <laughs> that's but Draymond, that's like if he had shoved know. him or punched and then grabbed no, it. I know. I didn't think it was <laughs> no, I didn't think it was a great. I was expecting something egregious, though. That's Ooh. right. Uh we will take a look around the NBA. We'll talk Kings uh Wizards. That's the team. And then um Dodgers new super expensive starting pitcher. Did not get off to a great start. No. Tough scene. Uh, but, but LA still almost won anyway. We'll, we'll discuss that a little bit too coming up on ESPN 1320. Sacramento Sports Center. Best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and, and Price. Uh going on over here how much time do we have might hit the locker of snackitude I got three and a half oh you need anything thank you though Yeah, bro, Mookie tore it up. What do you go, five for six, six for six? It's insane that the Dodgers, like, their lineup is so sick. They have, what, three dudes who could win MVPs? Like, Shohei might mess around and win an MVP without even pitching. Yeah, bets four for five. Four for five, six driven in, a walk. I think I reached Nirvana last night when Colby Jones and Kessler Edwards shared the floor. Mm. Good for Kessler. He's yeah. out there aggressive. The Wizards have someone named Eugene Amar Amarui. I think that's a fake name. I don't believe that's actually a person. If he was, he should be on the 
Uh, kinda. I guess you'd call it a dark gray. Hmm. You should be on the Memphis Grizzlies. Who? Oh. Eugene. Hmm. Dude, Gigi was sick, though. Gigi was so good last night. Tom, maybe? I mean, it just depends on who's on the roster. What did you grab out of the Fortress of Snacktitude? I grabbed a raspberry fig bar. The, can I, can I, here's a take. The raspberry is dramatically superior to the blueberry. I know. I, I think it's possible it's because the blueberry we already had access to yeah. so we don't appreciate the yeah. blueberry for what it is i think that's probably right i've eaten so many of the blueberry ones yeah especially when they and started so giving specific. us two for one <laughs> mm. <sighs> all right second hour here we go Hour number two, hanging out with you till noon. That is James Ham. I'm Kyle Madsen. They are D'Lo and KC, and they will be coming up next. They will take you right up to 4 o'clock. And at 4 o'clock, we will. Uh, it becomes tournament time on ESPN 1320, 98.5 HD2, your smart speaker, and the free Odyssey app. That's right. So there's college basketball going on all day. Men's college basketball tournament has officially started. Um the games right now are on 102.5 FM HD2, the Bet Sacramento. And then at 4 o'clock, the games will come here. So D'Lo and KC will sign off, and then we will have basketball for you, uh, whether it's your drive home, maybe you've got some errands to run, whatever it is you're doing. If you're watching basketball all day and you got to leave the TV, we will, we will have your basketball fix right here on ESPN 1320. Hell yeah. So the Kings did it good last night. They comfortably kicked the hell out of the Toronto Raptors, which was honestly, it was so nice not coming in here going, hey, a win is a win. So Take refreshing. It however. I was so tired of that conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, did they let that bad team stick around? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they won. Like, hey, they won. They never let they ne it was never close, man. Mm -hmm. Even the first quarter, I think the Kings were up five after the first. Yeah, and it felt like ten. Like they 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 the Raptors really felt like they just didn't have anything, and they didn't. Early on, it was a weird game of runs. It kept like the Kings started six zero, and then there were like there were like three six zero runs when the score was like twenty to uh, like fourteen. Like there were six mm zero -hmm. runs everywhere, mm -hmm. and so. It just kind of felt like a game where the Kings needed to lock in just the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. And then once they did, it was like, it, it was game over. I thought the energy from De'Aaron Fox was like, okay, that's what we need to see every night. Yeah. That's it's, that's it. The way Fox has been playing lately makes me think he was bored early in the year. Yeah, but there's games even within this where he kind of looked bored. or or yeah, he might be. Where it didn't, like, even the Knicks game, I don't think he was like fully a hundred percent like there. And then you get to the next game. And I, I kind of felt the same way. Like, mm. uh, so I, I thought this was, this was a good, a good, good start, a good game. Well, the good news, well, excuse me. The good news is the Kings won. The bad news is they didn't get any help. They're still the number six seed, mm -hmm. but the Clippers who they're chasing to win the Pacific division, try and grab the number four seed. Clippers won. Yeah, they beat the Blazers, one sixteen, one hundred three. L.A. though seven and eight since the All Star break, but somehow just staying just out of just out of arm's reach, just out of reach of the Kings. Every time it's like, oh, the Kings got to win. What did the Clippers do? Oh, the Clippers. Won. Yeah, but aren't they like three games in the loss column above 
above the Kings, although we're running yeah. out of games. I right. Mean, that's, that, that's that's what I that's what I'm saying is if it was if it was yeah February 21st, you'd be like, oh, dude, this mm. is a race. But they're doing just enough to stay out <laughs> to stay out of the way. Yeah, frustrating. it is frustrating. They're only a, a game in the loss column above the uh, the Pelicans. The Pelicans have done a nice job of tracking down the, the Clippers. Hey, the pe- dude, the Pelicans are not. We talk about how the like hey, the Kings can they chase the Clippers and what are the I think the Pelicans, aside from their dominance against Sacramento this year, I think they're kind of scary come playoff time. I think they I don't think any team wants smoke with the Pelicans, dude. Yeah, I'm kind of like if you had a choice between if somehow, let's say the Pelicans get to four. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be the five. Zero percent chance. If you're the Kings, you don't want the four or five. Let's say the Pelicans are the five. You don't want to be the four. No. (laughs) But that's and and this is not a Kings exclusive thing. I don't think Mm -hmm. the Pelicans are athletic, long. They have players who have been there before. I, 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 like this team, uh, there's a b- large portion of this team that has won playoff series before. Yep. Like this isn't a new thing. The difference is, oh, Zion apparently lost 25 pounds since since the in-season tournament and is playing the best basketball of his career and he's healthy. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, man. That's, <laughs> what makes I don't think him, they're going to win the West or anything, but... What makes them so dangerous, Kyle, is that you have to do something so specific to wall off to wall off Zion. Mm-hmm. And what that does, you also, you have to defend Brandon Ingram. Yes. Okay. So that means if you're, if you're sometimes sending a double team at one guy and double team at another guy, mm-hmm. that means that all of these other players that they have, which, you know, some of them are, are really good. Like CJ yeah. McCollum is a really good player. Very good player. Valanchunas is a very good yes. player. Yes. He's not just some scrub. Right. But then you also have the Herb Jones and the Trey Murphy. And like you have, you have all these other players. Trey Murphy has like multiple 30 point games off the bench this year. Yeah. So that's what makes them so difficult. It's that you have to slow down Zion and it does draw attention. Now, I also don't think that that he's going to be able to stay healthy. And although we've gotten this late in the season, but also, I just don't know what he has in the playoffs because sure, we've never seen it. We're talking well, not only have we never seen it, but we've never seen him him play eighty something games. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, we haven't seen him play seventy really. Yeah, that's that's definitely if you're if you're looking for reasons uh, to to say hey, this they'll fall short because of X. Like yeah, a thousand percent. And like I said, I don't think they're going to win the West, but I also don't think there's a single team if you're lining things up that's like oh, can't wait to play New Orleans. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone saying that. Stephen McBride in the in the chatty house brought up exactly what I was thinking. It's a great point. Uh, Zion is like the Giannis effect, and that's not to say that that Zion is is Giannis. I don't think that's what Stephen's saying, but what they do to warp your defense makes it easier for the Pat Connaughtons of the world and the Chris Middletons and the Bobby Portis, because as Stan Van Gundy once famously said, "Build an effing wall." That's what you have to devote so many resources to slowing that guy down. Mm-hmm. And then he's enough of a playmaker. Brandon Ingram's enough of a playmaker that, man, they're going to get some open looks. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's scary. And they're good defensively. Yeah. I, that's a whole nother yeah. thing that they're just, they are very good defensively. Yeah. The Pels did not play last night. The Warriors beat the Grizzlies 137, 116. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but hey, Jonathan Kaminga can play, man. Oh, he's, he can hoop. He, yeah, he, twenty six five and four last night. He had seven dunks. Yeah, he's growing into into the role. So, yeah. and they've really had to morph who they are mm-hmm. all season long, just because some of their players are getting old. Yeah, you can't. They can't do what they used to do with the. They still do the motion offense and and all that, but it's definitely there is a lot more uh, Jonathan Kaminga bailout because he can get inside and score inside. Yeah, and out they of take necessity. Advantage of that and his, his athleticism yeah. for sure. Um. Yeah, no, uh, Golden State now three up because they're relevant, not necessarily to the Kings anymore, but man, they were trending the wrong way. Houston trending the right way. Houston now three games back of the number 10 spot, mm. but it's uh, it's dicey. That's a separation they, sure. they kind of needed, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, also, Gigi Jackson, 35 points, 7 of 14 from three. Yeah, he's good. He's really For freaking a, a good. barely 19 year old. Just turned 19. Yeah. He's the youngest player in the league. Yeah. He's, <laughs> I mean, again, somebody has to score because that team 
you know, they're bad. It's, Somebody has to score. But 11 yeah. of 19 and 7 of 14 from three, though. Yeah, he's a he's a player, man. Uh, Suns beat the Sixers 115 102. Um, so the Suns still behind the Kings. The Kings don't get any separation from them. But your note here is the one. The Kings play the Sixers soon. Can they get the version of the Sixers that can't figure out how to win a game? I hope so. Because they've already played the Sixers without Embiid, and it didn't go well. Yeah, I, here's a sort of the crappy thing for the Kings. It, it's that, you know, you're playing, they play, be, before the Kings play them on Monday, they played Phoenix last night. They play against the Lakers and Clippers on Friday and Sunday. Mm. And then you're getting Philly on the second night of a back-to-back on oh, Monday. Man. And right? they've been on the road since Wednesday. Yeah. So, but my problem is like, are they going to figure it out before then? Because if they do and they, they somehow go back to who they were, but they beat the Lakers and they beat the Clippers, but then they find themselves or Embiid's like, oh no, I got to get back. We've lost too many games. <laughs> like, and you're like, oh no. And then the Kings all of a sudden get a different version of them. I don't know, especially um, uh, Tobias Harris hasn't played or he didn't play uh, last night. And, you know, when they're running out, Maxi, uh, who did not have a good game at all, Mm-mm. but Maxi with Ubre, with Kyle Lowry, with Nick Batum and Oof. Mo Bamba. Oof. And then they're coming off the bench with like Paul Reed, KJ Martin, Cameron Payne, and and the Buddy Hilde. And some guy named Jeff Doughton, which uh, again I, I probably should know, but I I don't. And Ricky Council the fourth. The, I, I I'm not sure that I know who Ricky Council the fourth is. That is Wichita State slash Arkansas legend Ricky. I kid you not. His middle name, according to Basketball Reference, is Nicardo. Ricky Nicardo. <laughs> That like, is not a joke. Like Ricky Ricardo, but, but Nick Cardo. Nick Cardo. Oh Council no. The fourth. Oh. Played 12 minutes last night. He's averaging what's he at per 36? Let me find his per 36. Uh, are they uh, the all name team? 23 and 7 per 36 for Ricky Nicardo, who gave the Sixers 12 good minutes last night. I mean, just like you know, Buddy Hield's real name is Shavano Rainier. Right. Yeah. Knew that. Yeah. And you know why he's named Buddy, right? I don't. You like don't know me, why please. he's no, I I just know. Oh, that's a great story, Kyle. Do we? Oh, we blew through our break. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Jesse, help me! Help me! <laughs> help me! Help you! <laughs> uh, let's see. How do we do this? Producing on the fly. We will go to. Uh, we go to twenty-seven and thirty and then forty. Okay, we're going to twenty-seven. Oh, so all right. Going. Well, because if we break now, it's a whole thing. Yeah, we can't break at fifteen. I'm in. All right, anyways, so give us the story. We got 11 minutes. The, the story is spectacular. His mom loved married with children. And he is literally, they started calling him Bud. But there's a drug dealer down the street who is also named Bud. So he couldn't be Bud like Bud Bundy from Married with Children. Incredible. He had to be called Buddy. This is remarkable. And that's how Buddy Hield got his nickname. No joke. I'm not. That's I'm fantastic. not making that up. I like that so much. Yeah, I've written that story. That's I also romance. broke the story. Uh, well, partially broke the story that Buddy Hield was a year older. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I got in trouble on a different radio station in this in this about town. The, the age? Yes. Oh, because. We came up with the idea to make a a shirt that was, uh, or maybe somebody made the shirt. I can't remember exactly, but somehow the idea of a McLovin ID. Oh, with Buddy Hield? Yes. And with the wrong birthday on it. Oh. was a thing that we like talked about because like, it's fun. It's not a bat. It, it It's not, it was a, it, from what I understand, it was a clerical error. Like somebody, cool. somebody somewhere along the line ha- put in the wrong birthday, did not think it was that big of a deal, but got a phone call. It was like, we don't joke about that. Like, oh my Are God. Are you kidding me? Dead serious. Okay. So here's how that played out. I'm watching the broadcast and Buddy goes over on, I think it was post game. 
Mm-hmm. And they said, hey, happy birthday, you know, 25th birthday. And he goes, no, 26. Uh, and it, they just like kind of glossed over, okay, what's going on, man? Everything good, blah, blah, blah. It was Doug and it was Grant at doing like a post game. And mm-hmm. I'm like, did he just say he's 26? So I go in, I'm like, well, he's not 26, he's 25. I look everywhere. I'm like, hmm. So I reach out to media relations and I'm like, hey, he just said he's not the age that they have everywhere. And they're like, okay, like, how about this? We're, I think they were on the road. He said, well, um, we'll revisit this when they come back into town and, and I'll just leave you. You can ask him that question, but I'll let you ask him that question like over on the side, like during pregame. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. So I go over, I'm like, Hey, so what's the deal here? He goes, I, what do you mean? I'm like, are you 25 or are you 26? And I'm 26. And I'm like, okay, why does everywhere, every, not like everywhere says you're 25? Yeah. He goes, I don't know. He's like, I think basketball reference put it in wrong one time and that's how it got wrong. And I'm like, what does your ID say? He says, it says I'm 26. And I'm like, what does your birth certificate say? He says, it says I'm 26. So I don't know how this worked out because like, look, that was everywhere. So when he went through the draft process and he's one of the oldest, he's a senior, he's a 23 year old senior. Mm -hmm. He was really 24 the whole time. So like he wouldn't even have been a prospect. He would not have gone number six in the draft as a 24 year old senior. I feel like you're underestimating Vivek a little bit there, but go on. Well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> but, but either way, well, and Vivek didn't draft him. He was drafted by the Pelicans and traded as part of the DeMarcus That's right. Cousins. You're right. Trade. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's right. Yeah. So the whole thing is like, come on. And I'm like, well, and, and again, Vlade and Peja are like, no, we, we do like nobody. Knew. Like, well, we had to look at it like, mm, like he's an employee. We had to do the I nine thing. And I'm like, there is had to do the I like, I like there's there is absolutely no way that you guys knew his age. Yeah. So it really like to me, it did come down to almost like a Miguel Tejada thing where Miguel Tejada was, you know, a year older, at least. Was he a year or was he two? And who's the other one? Uh, 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 Yario Garcia that becomes Jairo Garcia. Yeah, uh, that was. Uh, Santiago Casilla. Can, uh, Santiago Casilla. Yeah. Uh, no, there was another one. Um, and yes, there were another player that it was a pitcher. The year. I can't remember who it was. Um, I yeah. did this with. Uh, there was one day. I was bopping around on the internet, and realized that it was Jack Cooley's birthday. Mm. And so I text him. Because I saw it on Basketball Reference, and I was like, "Oh, hey, happy birthday!" He was like, "It is not my birthday," and I went, "What?" And it was off. It wasn't off by like years, but it was off by a couple of days. So I don't know if it's correct now, but it says it's April twelfth, and I feel like that's not right. Really? Yeah. Like I said, not as dramatic as the buddy thing, but still weird that that happens. I, uh, you know, the the Kings played it off like it was no big deal, but. It is it is a big deal in the grand scheme of things. I mean, because now Buddy Hield, you know, like he's been in the league uh, however long. He's Buddy is thirty one. That is crazy. Yeah, Buddy's thirty one. So you know, he's been in the league for I don't know since two thousand sixteen, so eight years. But yeah, wild. That's fascinating. Yeah, I don't have like, and again, like covering Buddy was was fun. But he was a he's seems like a, a fun guy. He is a fun dude. He's a good guy. Um, you know, you never know where he's going to take things. Um, you know, half the time you're like, I'm not quite sure. I know what he just said. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when you listen back, you're like, OK, I think I know what he said. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a fun loving dude. Yeah, I was a fan. I like buddy a lot at Oklahoma. Um, other games from last night. Oklahoma City uh, beat the Jazz 119-107. How comfortable would you be with the Kings playing OKC in round one? 
Like how con- how, not not comfortable. How confident would you be with the Kings winning that series? I think it's a good series. I do too. I think it's four two series. Like I, I actually would choose the Kings to win that series, but I think it would be like a six, a good solid six game series, six okay. maybe seven. And okay. people say, oh, you think you're oh you're going to take the Kings over? You know, like the Dan Devine piece. I I read oh you know teams at the top still are probably looking at the Kings as the softest. Mm-hmm. As the easiest first round yeah, matchup, yeah. I don't believe that at all. Like, I if you're a team like OKC, who you know the Kings have dominated, like mm-hmm. two of the games this year were like they beat them up. Uh, what the series at two one, right? Kings. Yes. Yeah, that's that's one of those teams where like the matchup isn't good this year. Now, mm-hmm. two years from now, sure, sure, I think the matchup will be totally different. And like, look, I I think the Kings are going to be a different team with. Keon Ellis in their starting lineup too versus a team yeah. like that. Yeah. So now, as opposed to you know whoever d- trying to defend Shea, you now have another body to throw at him. Yeah. Like I there do are think, some limitations. There. I do think there's something to that with, and whether this is right or wrong uh, is not is not what I'm trying to say. I think it's the difference between like okay, they're 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 the Kings. They were a first round exit last year, mm-hmm. or you can play the team with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, or you can play the team with Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal and Devin Booker. I think that's probably how teams are looking at it. Maybe. And I don't I don't think I necessarily buy that. I would I would definitely if I, I'm if I'm Minnesota or OKC, I would way rather see one of those teams. I think but maybe this is how fans are looking at things. Fans might look and say, "Oh, the Kings are an easier thing." Oh, uh, de- like, definitely do. But but basketball people are are different. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know, like OKC is a is a very talented team, but if I'm the Kings, I love the the 6 like I you don't want to be 7, but the 6-7 mm-hmm. versus being in the the 4-5. So, the 4-5 is one plays 8, mm-hmm. right? And then four or five, and then the next round, one plays four or five, the winner four or five. Mm-hmm. Like there's a potential that you, if Denver finishes number one, that you could bypass the Nuggets, one of, uh, well, two of the Nuggets, the Clippers, and the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. And if you got into the right vein, if you're six three and it's say it's against Minnesota or six three mm-hmm. against OKC. Well, then the next round, you play the winner of the two seven. Mm-hmm. And so you could get to the second round and be up against Minnesota or OKC. Right. And that's like a pathway. Yeah. 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 Where, I mean, I'm not saying the Kings are going to wipe out those teams no matter what. Yeah. But, but that's if you're it, playing but, well, but if you're picking, well, and if you're picking a path, you would way rather choose the one with like, hey, there's a team with either a limited or no Carl Anthony Towns and then a young team that's in the playoffs for the first time versus, you can play Denver <laughs> or you can play a Man. Clippers team that is uh, healthy and full of guys who have been there before or the Pelicans who are your nightmare matchup. Like yeah. that's, just, that's what that is. That is not, oh yeah, OKC and Minnesota, they're cruising to the Western Conference Finals. I like, guess not it at all. No. But no, if no. you got to choose a path, that's pro- and honestly, that's probably a path that a lot of teams would rather take. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a Kings exclusive. Nope. Yeah. All right. Um, we have to hit a break now. We're oh, not going to blow through this one. Just blow through all the breaks. No, I'm not going to do it. Make it as rain. much as I would like to. <laughs> um, we will not blow through this break. We will be back. Uh, I have, you know what? I'm not done with this playoff matchup discussion yet. We'll look ahead to Kings Wizards as well. But would you rather see the Thunder, the inexperienced Thunder, or the little bit banged up Timberwolves in round one? We'll discuss that next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Center. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody's asking who makes the snack bars. Nature's Bakery. They're fig bars. That sounds like a weed shop, bro. 
<laughs> Nature's Bakery sounds like a weed store. It does sound like a weed store. Yeah. How much time do we have? We still have four and a half. Oh, I'm going to run to the special. We have a lot of time because we had to combine breaks. No, we didn't combine breaks. Oh. We're going to break it. We'll come back. We'll break it 43, and then we'll oh, okay. get out. Well, I was going to go grab a snack, but James is leaving, so I'm not going to leave you guys. Oh, get out. What? Bro. Ramsey, don't play with me, dude. You give me apple cinnamon flavored basically anything, I'm eating that. Let's see. Apple cinnamon. Uh, apple cinnamon Cheerios. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, those are going... Get them in the cart. Oh, and I can get same day delivery on these things? Come on. No, I know. I know. I should have never doubted them. Yup. Yup. Throw a little cinnamon on some applesauce. That sounds delicious. Bro, they make apple cinnamon versions of those fig bars. Well, they don't put them in a Costco pack. Though. Yeah, I know, but they put them on Amazon for same-day delivery, so. Oh. Oh. Uh, two a minutes. I'm going to go grab a snack. A new addition to the Fortress of Snackitude? Uh, hello, friends. Oh, so VJ, how about an apple fritter? My wife makes homemade apple fritters that are incredible. Incredible. I might bring those in. I need to bring some of those in. There we go. Yeah. Hmm. My wife is a very good baker. Although those aren't baked, those are fried. But man, I'm telling you. They are off the charts. Um Oh, thanks, Johnny G. Yeah, this is all like what we do here with the chatty house. I, snack. I didn't get a snack. Oh no. The, the snack I brought is like a cumbersome uh it's like these lentil onion things from oh. Trader Joe's. They're delicious. Sour cream and onion lentil rings. They're really good. Um it's just like the whole bag of them and I don't want to be have to deal with it. So you should have grabbed a small bag of Hawaiian chips. I have half an hour left until I get to eat lunch. So. Oh, that's true. That's true. Hey. Yeah, I I was telling you, my wife makes incredible apple fritters. I have not brought those in yet. One of these days. Oh, here we go.
Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. I'm telling you, bro, nothing gets the people going. <laughs> more than more than hump. more than my humps by the Black Eyed Peas or food talk. Yep. You talk food, people are in. Talking favorite snacks. Cousin Yahoo in here saying veggie sticks are, are low. Hey, fun. I rock with the veggie sticks. Like they're like chip ones. The poof things? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're really good. You know what else I'm really into? I, I've been into this. I so this is a snack that I eat, but then I'll eat it so often that I get sick of it. Is carrots and hummus. A big carrots and hummus guy. Okay. I I like hummus too. Yeah. 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 Trader Joe's that Jesus. Trader Joe's does sorry. Does this one. Uh, that is a spicy hummus, a jalapeno cilantro hummus, and then a classic hummus layered. Oh. <sighs> Delicious. Delicious. Mm. Hippies. Great, good, healthy snack. Yeah. They're chickpea like puffs. Like it's like a Cheeto puff, but it's made out of chickpea. Yeah. I don't know. Love a chickpea, dude. We got some games going on right now. Duquesne is only up three. Michigan State get the dub? Um, I think. Think? I'm pretty sure Michigan State got the dub. Charlie said his bracket's no longer perfect. He picked against Tom Izzo. That happened quickly. I think oh, one BYU of my... BYU coming back? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Oh, snap. They need a name for this. Like March craziness. <laughs> March wildness. Oh, strong. What should we be... What should we nickname the tournament? March, March mayhem. Oh, strong. Get the alliteration. Yes. I think that's good. <laughs> it's also free throw awareness month. Free throw awareness month. I can't tell you how many. You think watching the king shoot free throws is brutal? Watch some of these college dudes. Oh, yeah. It's tough. Got, my favorite is like, here comes this guy. He's a projected top four pick in the draft. He's shooting 26% from the free throw line this year. Like, oh, my God. You know what that doesn't and I'm do? Not, that yeah. means that you don't project out as a three point shooter. Dude, at not all. at all. Not at all. <laughs> and I'm not a free throw. I'm not a, a there. You know those weirdos that argue like, well, LeBron James can't be the greatest player of all time because he only shoots seventy seven percent from the free throw line. Whatever. It's the dumbest thing. I'm not that guy. But also, when you're shooting sixty percent from the line as a guard, mm. <sighs> don't love it. No, don't that means it. that your three point <laughs> percentage is is not like you don't project at all as a three point shooter. I remember that became a thing in like public like a wider in like 2015 yeah that just became the thing don't look at the three-point percentage look at the free throw percentage yeah what they should clean doesn't matter if they've got a clean stroke from the free throw line you can see the mechanics are there yes right and then yes. you can work with those mechanics right that's wild um for the sacramento kings in round one we were just talking real quick looking around the nba scoreboard from last night we got uh, sidetracked on oklahoma city versus utah okc beat the jazz last night uh, 119 to 107. We talked about facing the Thunder in round one for the Kings and your confidence level in that matchup. Would you rather see, though, the because I think these are the two teams that if you're choosing for the Kings, this is the way you'd want your path to start with either Oklahoma City or Minnesota. Which matchup would you prefer? I, It's a coin flip, really. I, I think without... Cat, I'd probably face. I'd probably want Minnesota. See, um, I want no smoke with Anthony Edwards. I get that, but I, I mean, two years from now, I I would agree. But I don't know that he's so elite that you can that he can carry you through an entire playoff series. I think. I see, I I think you need four games. Okay, so, and it, it's the same reason I think the Kings can win any playoff series. Not to say Anthony Edwards is as good as De'Aaron Fox. He he's not. He hasn't done enough yet. But I think you're seeing in this stretch without Carl Anthony Towns, the peaks have been high enough and often enough that it, I would be, I just don't want to deal with those problems. Okay. So the Kansas, I mean, when it comes to Minnesota, here's my problem with Minnesota when it comes to the Kings. I think almost every other team in the league has an ability, maybe not, maybe not Denver. But well, most of the other teams that we're talking about, they have a way of playing Rudy Gobert off the court. Sure. I don't think the Kings have that ability because you have Demona Sabonis. Mm. And so there is an aspect to it where 
yeah, you can get caught. You can get Gobert caught in a bunch of uh, a bunch of you know screen and rolls up top, and you're going to be able to pull him away from the basket a little bit. But I also like he usually plays not only major minutes, but he plays well against the Kings. Like mm-hmm. I think that Domana Sabonis usually comes out on top, but he is a difficult matchup, and I don't think that that's the same for a team that goes like Kevin Durant at the at the center position. Or, you know, when you look at all of the screen and roll guys that that Dallas has. Like right. They don't have conventional centers that make sense for Gobert to, to hang in against. Now, you need three-point shooting centers, so maybe you can go Trey Lyles and go small ball and, and, and beat up and mm-hmm. get him off the court for, for stretches. But that's that's in the, again, the eight or nine minutes that Domas isn't going to be on the court in a playoff series. Can I... I'm stuck on the Anthony Edwards thing. Sorry. Yeah. Since Carl Anthony Towns went down seven games ago, <laughs> so seven games, they've won four of them. But again, it at Indiana, they won. At Cleveland, they lost. At the Lakers, they lost. At Clippers, they won by a bunch. And then they won two at Utah. They lost by three to Denver at home a couple nights ago. Okay. Anthony Edwards in those seven games. 31.1 points, 7.3 boards, 5.4 assists, 1.7 steals, 1.4 blocks, and he's shooting 48% from the field on 26 attempts a game. So basically, he's turned into Shea. Yes. Ostensibly. But Shea's doing that with a real team. Yeah. So it just, that's... That, it's the kind of... He's having the kind of run where he's dragging them back into a game where they were getting blown out by the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. He has a chance to win it from three. He had the he had the big block in that first game without Carl Anthony Towns against Indiana. Yep, he had the block to win it. He's just doing all these things, night in and night out. Whether it's in the box score or this one big play at the John Collins dunk, where I just again this is vibes, where I could see him just taking over a series, winning that series, and everybody being like, "Oh my God, Anthony Edwards has arrived." And I don't want to be on the receiving end of that. That's I, all. I, I get that. I get that. But I would also, my argument would be if he doesn't get that block, they're two and five over that stretch. Uh, they're three and four. And four like, and three. Oh, I thought they were three and four. So they'd be three and four. Okay. Over that stretch. They'd be three and four. And that's not like murderer's row. No, 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 no. No, they beat Utah twice. They beat the Lakers. Who else did they beat? Oh, the Indiana. Clippers. The Clippers, the Clippers win is is impressive, and then losing the the loss to Denver was was an impressive game. But even in that game, they got twenty six from Jaden McDaniels, yeah. which they're not going to get on a on a nightly basis. No, I just that's I, I I totally get. I think you're right. You said coin flip at the beginning, and I think that's probably about right. Yeah, but I'm going to go with the team for for the same reason. Look, I thought the Kings were better than the Warriors last year, but I thought the Warriors would win the series if if they did because they'd just been there before. It's the Kings' first time there. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I feel about about Oklahoma City. It's Oklahoma City's first time there. Yeah, okay, Shea Gildas Alexander might be the MVP, but Chet's not a good or I'm sorry, Domas is not a good matchup for Chet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just they they don't have a single player who scares me the way and I love Shea. I picked him to be MVP. I love Shea. But I don't think there's a player between those two teams that scares me more than Ant in a playoff series. Okay. I think. That's where I land right now. It's tough. That's the deciding factor. Like you said, it's a coin flip. That's just because I'm on the radio and I have to pick one. That's yeah. that's that's the reason I, I would pick the Thunder over Minnesota. Okay. No, it's if I'm fair. picking a matchup for the Kings. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. I definitely would, would not want to. I mean, both of them are good teams. And that at the end of the day, I think the limitations of some of the the three-point shooters, uh, like like Josh Giddey isn't a great three-point shooter. You you have to defend Lou Dort now, like, nonstop. To like, yeah. Like, that's the one thing, like, I was surprised that's, to mm-hmm. see. OKC is number one in the league in three-point percentage. Yeah, dude. Every single dude can shoot. Yeah. I mean, it's Isaiah really Sh- Isaiah crazy. Joe can shoot it. Jalen Williams Shoots is shooting 44.4% four, from three. What in the world? Yeah. Not, yeah. dude, the West is a gauntlet, man. There's no easy path, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, But we have more regular season to get to before the Kings can even get there. They're in the number six seed right now. That is not a guarantee. If they want to get that six seed, they got to do things like win tonight. We will have keys to a Kings victory for you coming up next. And we might, we might talk a little baseball too. Maybe we'll All see. Right. We got the handoff uh, coming up as well. D'Lo or Casey will be in, in the final segment right here on ESPN 1320 Sacramento sports center. 
Sickler. Yeah, OKC has, let me see. Holy smokes. They have nine guys shooting over 40%. <laughs> I mean, Gordon Hayward is shooting 58.3% since, since joining them. Are all of those on any kind of volume? Uh, Not not a ton. Who's, who's on so, three or more a game? How many? Um, 40% on three or more. Three. Jeez. Dort is shooting 41.1 on 4.9. Yeah, you've got Jalen Williams at 44.4. Aaron Wiggins is shooting 49%. I might change my answer. Lindy uh, Waiters is uh, is shooting 42.9. Uh, you got Trey Mann at 42.1. Davis Bertons at 41.7. Is he still there? Uh, oh, no, he might not be. Did they deal him? Is he part of the Gordon Hayward thing? I think so. Kaysen Wallace, 41.5. Kaysen Wallace can hoop, dude. He, and that's at 2.8 shots per game. And then you've got Kenrich at 39.1. You've got Chet at 38.9. Shea is all the way down at 37.6. The other Jalen Williams is shooting 36.2. Man, this team can shoot. That's just an equalizer, man. That's wild. They're fun. They're developing quick, and they play defense. Trey Mann is no longer on the team. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't kept up with like the finer nuances of their entirety of uh, their entire roster, especially since the Kings haven't played them in months. Let me see transactions. They signed Mike Muscala. They waived Pokacheski. They signed Bismack Biombu. Converted Lindy Waiters or Waters from a two way. Uh, they traded Bertons, Trey Mann, and Vasily uh, Misich for Gordon Hayward. I didn't hate that pickup for them. I mean, they have so much depth. It's like you can kind of deal with having Gordon Hayward on your team. And then if he's any good at all, I don't know, he's averaging 4.5 points over 14 games. I don't think the Kings should take a look at Poku. I botched this. I did the timing wrong. Short segment. Jesus. Jesus, Davis. Man. Ah, shoot. Oh. This Duquesne BYU game is a barn burner. We got 61 60 Duquesne. March. With 128 left Insanity. and a free throw left. March Bedlam. Oh, really good. Look at Duquesne making their free throws. Rick Carlisle. Oh, no, that guy, BYU's coach, looks like bald Dirk Nowitzki. Oh. Dirk Nowitzki, another guy who was ripped off by somebody. He lost tens of millions of dollars to a financial planner. Uh, I also believe... Oh! 45 for BYU is a hoss. Oh, my God. Look at their center. Oh. oh. Kyle, he's in his mid-30s. Absolute <laughs> unit. Oh, they had that. Well, that's a big dude there for Duquesne. Oh, great pass. Oh, oh no. Him. That's a foul. All right, here we go. Wow. Now, back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. 
Yeah, it's your boys. Keys to a Kings victory tonight. Looks like D'Lo is going to be pulling up. So let's rip through these real quick. James Ham, what is your first key to a Kings victory? Uh, Kyle, if I was prepared, I would know exactly what my keys are. Oh, rinse and repeat. That's what it says. Rinse and repeat. Damien's here. Hey, Damien, I messed up the clocks today. So we have like four minutes. <laughs> it's not four. It's not four. Uh, our out is at 5432. So we only right. got a few minutes. All right. Uh, it, rinse and repeat was your was your first key. Yeah, you took care of a bad team last night. Take care of another bad team tonight. Yep. Uh, I have number uh, number one for me. Don't let Corey Kispert get going. Oh, don't let him cook. That's a random one. There, I just he's the kind of guy that'll hit nine threes against the Kings. You're a big Corey Kispert guy. No, I, I'm not. I just know he can knock down a three. Uh, number two. Uh, bring the same defensive intensity for the sixth straight yeah. game. Yeah. Is it more than a trend, Kyle? Uh, it is when Keon Ellis is in the lineup. Uh, right. It's Keegan time. I need Keegan Murray to do something. I didn't get to do my whole thing on Keegan Murray today, but we'll do it tomorrow. Number three. Uh, number three. No excuses. This is a chance for win number 41 and the second straight 500 season. This would only be the 10th time in Sacramento Kings history since they moved to Sacramento in 1985 that they would have a 500 record. Damian Barling in the building, everybody. It's time for the handoff. Uh, key number three for me. I don't know how much time you spend in DC, the both of you, a but there's a there's a restaurant called Medium Rare, mm -hmm. and at Medium Rare, are you familiar with Medium Rare? Yeah. It's a prefix menu, and you pull up, and it's steak and fries and this delicious little vat of gravy, and you sit down and they go, "What do you want to drink?" And you tell them, and they go, "How do you like your meat cooked?" And you tell them, they write it on the table, and then they come back, they give you steak and fries, and about the time you're finishing up that delicious steak and fries, they come back with a second order of steak and fries. What? Yes. My wife and I ate like kings and were out of there for like 75 bucks after tip. This is, I've not been to watch medium it. rare, bro. Okay. You've never been to the, you've never been to DC? No, I haven't. Been oh, to that's oh my God, you, you would love make. it. Yeah. yeah DC it's, is legit. DC is one of my favorite places. Yeah. Cause like, I'm a big history guy. DC. And yeah. oh like, yeah, you'd love it. Yeah. You'd I haven't been there for all the history it. stuff. That was, we were watching mysteries at the museum. Great program, by the way, uh, on, on, I think it's discovery plus is the app we watch it on. We were watching it one night, figuring out where we wanted to go on our honeymoon. And it's just this show. They go around to different museums and do deep dives on artifacts. And we were like, we should go to D.C. because there's a lot of museums there. Oh, yeah. And then we ended up loving the city. On your honeymoon. Which on our honeymoon. Spectacular. And it rained, I think, most of the time. It rained the first day. Yeah. The day we walked the monuments. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Pouring rain. It's a, it's a great About time, this though. time last year, right? Uh, two sir, years. We've been married two, for two or years. Two years. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I remember May, I was there. We ended up going May. Yeah. Just oh, after. Man. Just after cherry blossom season gotcha tough ah, scene yes that's a big time in dc yeah no it's great uh good kings win last night boring great kings boring win, which is what yeah. everyone wanted right like that's you, we don't get those very often i think kenny looked up the last time you know obviously they beat denver which is fantastic but everybody was on their edge of the seat whether they were going to be able to hold on to that lead even mm -hmm. when it got to like 30 mm -hmm. the last time they beat a team like toronto and toronto's obviously better than what we saw last night but they're dealing with so many different yeah. things right now you can't really fault them for what that looked like mm -hmm. was charlotte in january so you know that's a that's a that's mm -hmm. what the game should have been exactly what we saw not including the bucks game no the the the, 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 the but no a, a bad team talking about oh god oh gotcha, like gotcha. It, okay, it's okay, great okay. they beat you know you, you you beat good teams but again with those teams especially with a guy like dame lillard uh, 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 jamal murray uh, guys who can score so quick you're kind of like Oh man, the lead's down to twenty. Yeah, oh yeah, crap! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, call timeout, Mike. Oh, the lead's <laughs> down to seventeen, and you're just begging for a basket to like yeah. slow, you know, slow things down. And I and I feel like with what we saw yesterday, with what we've seen the last couple of games, the Kings are playing good basketball, and it, obviously it has to continue tonight. So there's not mm -hmm. too much. Hey, we've turned this thing around. Get the get the job done tonight because Washington is legitimately the worst team in the league, and they're a very different type of bad team than Toronto is. So you know. Take care. You know, I, I feel good about where they're at, but we'll keep it moving. I have a fun thing about the Wizards. Remember the Kyle Kuzma tweet after the oh, Pistons yeah. loss to the Celtics don't in overtime for their 28th consecutive yeah, loss? I want to be that team. And Kyle Kuzma quote tweeted the yep. score and was like, at this point, it's like, just don't be that team. Yep. Since then, the Detroit Pistons are 10 and 28. Wow, man. The Washington Wizards are six Man. and 33. Yeah, I knew that was going to be bad. That's tough. 
and now you don't want to be that team. Now you don't want to be the Wizards. Yeah. Are they the best 11 win team in the NBA? <laughs> uh, the Wizards Many are, the, are, asking. Are, the, are the Pistons. The Pistons have 12 wins. The Pistons are now oh, better Pistons. than the Wizards. Yeah, Many are asking. That's a tough Shoot. scene, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a tough that's scene. That's crazy. Dude. I don't think the, 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 the dumbest part in this obviously isn't an ex- I don't think Detroit's that bad like they're not a 12 win mm. basketball team I I, I they I have think players that you. like they they need some you know they, they, obviously that their talent's a little behind for sure but they're not to me that Detroit team is not 12 win bad no and they didn't think that that's why they hired and paid Monty Williams right like they thought they were going to be a, 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 better than a team yeah. but they yeah. also they tied Monty there for like 42 years so he can't leave I think it was 41 yeah 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 Let's it's a lot right. of years so it's like hey we're gonna li- you'll be able to get us through this it's like yeah okay well it's just like you look at the roster it's like Cade Cunningham okay Cade can play Jaden Ivey okay he, hey Jaden Ivey can play like, Jaden's really breaking out this J- year. Jalen Duran I like Jalen Duran a lot Oof. like they have they have a legitimate they're young like yeah, yeah Thompson twin yeah. oh a sore Thompson he can play yeah they just have he can play but he's not I mean, he's out, right? Isn't is that, oh, is isn't he that out? the twin that's out for the season? Yeah, he's out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now he is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you just kind of went into this year like, oh man, maybe the Pistons. No, they, they just... they've got to grow a little bit. They need some veterans there to kind of tie things together. But that's that's a team that'll that's a team that'll be much better next year. But what exactly much better means for them mm-hmm. doesn't mean like twenty four wins, twenty five wins, twenty six wins. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be a win in the teens next year again. Big big key for me will be not losing twenty eight in a row. That's 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 strong, that but down. you can see you you can lose twenty eight in a row and still not be the worst team in basketball. Shout out to the Wizards. That's Man. true. <laughs> I'm excited for the Jordan Poole Keon Ellis matchup. Me too. Can't wait for oh, that one. God, Keon is going to make Jordan Poole so miserable. <laughs> it's going to be a good watch. It's going to make I'm, him so miserable. I'm excited for it. D'Lo and Casey coming up next on ESPN thirteen twenty Sacramento Sports Center. Thanks, friends. Goodbye, guys. Good stuff.
plug in your headphones, you stupid son of a bitch. Hey, at least you didn't forget them in the locker. Well, yeah. did a whole first segment without headphones the other day. No, that's solid. It happens. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Oh, he's nice, man. Yeah. Russ. Okay. Another Russ? gift, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice, man. You know I'm a big Russ guy now. Yeah, you are a big Russ guy. I forgot you weren't here yesterday, James. You should have heard our 245 yesterday leading into what I thought. We'll just correct it when James gets here. We're like 20 minutes into it. Where's James? And Kenny goes, James isn't here today. He just told us that for three days. Oh, so about those three guys that escaped from Alcatraz. You don't, you don't. You don't show up for one day and the whole thing goes to hell. It's all right. Hey, Jesse let us blow through a break today. So well. Just in there wow. Wow. Just, just in there watching us. So eleven fifteen, they're still not breaking down. That's crazy. Wow. Vibes, baby. Vibes. <laughs> Vibes. Upset city. Upset city, baby. Duquesne. Where's Duquesne at? Oh, no, no, I, okay, all right, damn. No, that's not a question I know the answer to. No, but you're about to look up. I'm I am. Look Sounds up. like an Ohio place. They're in the Atlantic 10, which doesn't mean anything anymore. I'm going to say. Oh, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. I do. Oh, this is funny. This is funny. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Hit them victory air horns one time, one time. Hit them victory air horns one more time. Before we get to Young Zell, I got to pay something off for the chatty house watching Duquesne upset BYU here. I asked, hey, where's Duquesne? Well, we all know where BYU is, right? Yes. BYU's in Utah? I'm an alum of BYU. This is a shoe. That's a different. That's this a, is a shoe. <laughs> I'm that, from BYU alum. <laughs> that's a conversation for later. Duquesne. Uh, is located in Pennsylvania. Ah, I was gonna say Ohio. You know where the Odyssey headquarters are? Pennsylvania. You know where? Well, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Just another example of Utah getting its ass whooped. Hey. <laughs> Come on, man! Sacramento Kings get the win. Let's go! Sacramento Kings, whole squad going crazy, yeah, we back with it. Northern Cali going crazy, one sack winning. If you doubted us, then ain't no back spinning. This is real right here, ain't no catfishing. Uh, uh, so tell me what you see now. See now. Down the lane of the rebound. Rebound. It's 16 now. Look Let's get a shot like the beam now. Tell, tell them like the beam. Hey, 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 hey. One burst, one burst, one burst, one burst, one burst, one burst. One burst. One Josh, verse. Job's not done. Got game. Got a game tonight. One verse. Job's not done. We go two verses tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Kings take care of business. Job's not done. We got to handle business again against the worst team in basketball, statistically or record wise. Yeah, that is that is facts. It, it, they are the worst team in basketball, man. They they the, the Washington Wizards have just lost life. It's a but 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 it's it, a very it different. Matter. It's a very different bad basketball team than we saw last night. In no mm -hmm. way, shape, or form do I believe the Toronto Raptors are what we saw last night. But they are decimated by, you know, family tragedies, personal issues, injuries, all sorts of things going on uh, with that group right now. And the Sacramento Kings stepped on the floor, did exactly what they were supposed to do from the second quarter, from the end of the second quarter into the third quarter. They put that game absolutely out of reach. And we welcome you in here to the Thursday, March 21st edition of D'Lo and KC. I'm Damian Brown. The ultimate needle mover in God mode himself. He's BYU alum, Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. You want to fill us in on that real quick? Yeah. So um, one one of the times uh, when I was going to Cal State East Bay, mm -hmm. I had to finish a, a math class to be able to get in. 
and it was really late in the whole like registration process or whatever. Um, the only place that was offering the math class that I needed online was BYU. You. And uh, yeah, it took it about three weeks. I'm a Cornell grad. Oh, this is shoot. Shout out Cornell. Yeah, I'm Andy yeah. Bernard. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I went to Cornell. You don't get that What's... reference, but that's fine. Yeah, no, I I, 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 I took a plant based nutrition, not course. It was a series of courses. Yeah, uh, through Cornell. So I'm a Cornell grad. Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. This air horns for me. Absolutely. I'm, you know, my my allegiance is not with BYU though, unless they're doing good, and then that's my allegiance is with them. Well, but you know, my allegiance. Pennsylvania is, kicks Utah's ass again. It happens all the time and literally multiple times a day yeah I, I got i got love for grambling though those are my people um obviously michigan you guys all know <laughs> that to, we had uh, to do some research on grambling well, last night had to, had to check the car facts did, did that check out <laughs> he went there for a year well did he graduate no how's he alumni? graduate in a year did you have to graduate to be an alumni well, no, I think an there's, alumni. There's means different you word there. There's different. Terms. He's not like, a yeah. Grambling State graduate. We're talking about uh, Earl Stevens. Well, a year he's not a. You're not a graduate though. No. Well, that's you're what an saying. alum. Like that's okay, the difference, right? Okay. okay. The, 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 the 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 graphic was. Oh, they had him as a graduate. Grambling State alum. Ah. Not gra Grambling State graduate. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Before he did not graduate from us. A year's a long time, though. I tell kids all the time. <laughs> a year is a long time, especially from. Uh, california i'm like man go to these hbcus go to the south go to the east coast man if you don't like it california ain't going nowhere yeah, don't do what we did do what we tell you to do <laughs> yeah. california ain't going nowhere you can come right back well that's debatable some people think it's going to break off into the ocean they've been but... saying that for 90 years oh. it's like boxing they've been saying boxing is dying for 90 years the slow death for california and for boxing <laughs> kings get the win last night 123 to 89 we wanted it's not often you go into a game trying to sell it. Hey, we got a game coming up. Man, I hope it's boring. Uh, and sure enough, uh, that game was as boring as it could possibly be. Uh, it was everything we hoped. It was glorious. Yes. Uh, the Sacramento Kings outscored the Raptors 67 to 38 over the second and third quarters, uh, led by DeMontis Sabonis' 24th triple double of the season, 51st straight double double. I'm sorry. DeMontis Sabonis' is league leading mm. 24 triple double of the season. 51st straight double double, which he has a chance to tie Kevin Love's record in Orlando because it's 53. Oh, yeah. And so then has a chance to break it here at the, at Golden, the Golden One, one Center. Center. That's how it should be. Yeah. And he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I can't imagine it not happening. <laughs> you talked about it when we were on Sports, uh, Sports Sunday, and it's like, I don't even know what that looked like. Yeah, you're right. I don't know what that looks like either. Yeah, like him getting eight rebounds or something like that. Once again, I think he got the assist first last night. Was it a double? I think it was the rebounds first. Oh, I, I meant, I meant uh, the tenth, the other one. Oh, it feels like it's double. always the rebounds yeah, yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought the double double was the no, assist, you're, you're but it might have right been on the that. Yeah, you're you're probably right on that. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna happen. This guy is a double double machine a literal double double machine i think that's exactly what mike brown called him last night uh, i think he called him a triple double machine and if not you're getting a double double out of it mm. um six double digit scores uh, for the sacramento kings uh led by De'Aaron fox who finished the game with 20 uh kings led by as many as 38 mm. uh in this game needed that and uh we got minutes from we, we, we got minutes from chris duarte who played fantastic we'll talk more about him Shout out Sam if he's listening. You got 12 minutes from Kessler Edwards. Oh, man. We Colby Jones played we last him. night. JaVel McGee got booed by his own teammates after <laughs> uh, after getting off the ground for a dunk. Uh, Jalen Slauson played last night. Got a little got a little coaching from Mike Brown there in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like it was it was amazing. Everybody got some run, man. We love to see that. Um I would give a big, big shout out to to Drapes and Katie because uh I thought the moment this game was won or lost was something they pointed out. Uh, there was 246 to go in the first half. Mm -hmm. The Kings had been up by 18. Mm -hmm. It got down to 12. And Katie yeah. said, This is I know exactly it's a big time about. moment right yep. here. And from that moment on, the Kings ended up closing the half on a let me see if I got this right. A, a 15 to 2 run. 
I to go up by 23, and it was over at that point. You're 100% right, but I can't lie. In the moment, I laugh. And I'm going to tell you why I laugh. And I this is this is what sucks about live radio and live television. Uh, when Drape said it, I knew exactly what he was saying. Like, yeah. I, I understood it to a T. But Katie gave that line about, hey, like, you you can't let them go on a run right here going into halftime. Mm. And and I think Drape said something like, yeah, they go on a 6-0 run. You come out of half, you're at a deficit. Well, and I'm like, well, no, you're up 12. <laughs> but 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 I knew what Drapes meant. Yeah. Drapes was talking about the momentum yeah, and he was 100 yeah. percent right, because which pointed out right there. Look what happened the other way. Mm-hmm. They got the stops, built that defensive momentum into the third quarter, built that lead back up to I think it was 20 or whatever it was or yeah, close got it to, to 22 at the end of the half. Came out and I think it was three or four straight stops oh. and it was over the game. The game was oh. over right there. And so <laughs> Drapes was 100% correct, even though his wording was a little funny. The momentum went the Kings way. They carried it over into the third, mm-hmm. and that thing was over. And those guys had to fill time for d- d- damn near 19, 20 game minutes. For real. Um, this, this is what they haven't done against teams like the Raptors, like the Wizards tonight, over the course of the last couple of months, right? Or maybe you could say all year. When they have teams like that that they're uh, they're better than, they the issue really hasn't been getting up, mm-hmm. you know, and, and getting a lead. It's given that knockout blow early to put the game away. Yeah, they did that last night. They get, finally did that last. Stick night. with the analogy. They 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 drop their hands, mm-hmm. right? They get that lead up, and then they they drop their hands and take some punches, and then you got to wind up fighting back. Yeah, uh, because because all of these games, and and they almost all hit the same, uh, I don't know if story arc is the right word, but they, they all hit the same type of rhythm, right? The Kings will get up big, and there's a moment either in the first half, end of the first half, or beginning of the second half where they let off the gas and a 13-point lead becomes five mm. or something like mm-hmm. that. It happens all the time. Look at all the games. Mm-hmm. Detroit, it happened. Yep. Chicago, it happened. Yep. Um, Charlotte, I think it happened as well. Like all these games follow the same pattern and they broke the pattern last night. Then hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Yeah, I hope so. Um, cause we need to see it again tonight because they've got a tough stretch of games after that with Orlando, uh, Philadelphia who lost to Phoenix last night. That was bums. Not helpful at all. Well, they're not. Um, but that's a team too, that is just just trying to keep their head above water right now. Um, and then, of course, the the, the, the games everybody has, has got circled on their calendar, There's the, those two against Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and the Dallas Mavericks coming up next week uh, at the Golden One Center. So tonight's game is really important. Last night's game was important mm-hmm. because it's not one that you had to battle into overtime with. It's not one that you had to, you know, fight off a, a, a run in the fourth quarter. It was one that you pretty much put out of reach with over a quarter and a half left. Yeah. And you were able to let De'Aaron chill, Domas, get get get, get the trouble double and relax. Um, the only starter that played 30 minutes was Keegan Murray. Mm. Uh, you got a lot of minutes from a lot of guys uh, last night that was really able to help uh, the Sacramento Kings. So there's often not a lot to talk about with games like this, which is good. But, man, the Keon Ellis story continues. Man. Man. And Keon said something in post game that was so funny to me. Uh, we'll pass that along to you. Mike is raving about the way this team is playing defense. Uh, we've got a great list of guests. Anthony Slater joins us exclusively. Oh, come on, man. At hey, 12. Hey, come on. <laughs> Anthony Slater joins us at 12.50. Me telling you guys to stop when I alerted it to you. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> Like, That's facts, bro. Yeah, dude. You I've know, even held you know back what lately. you're doing. Like, you know what you're doing when you do stuff like that. <laughs> some would say I'm an S starter. Some, some some people need to. They, we need to send our brothers a dictionary so they can understand what pocket watching and 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 and, and exclusive mean. Anthony Slater is going to be with us in forty. Just like we announced yesterday, <laughs> we Anthony Slater yesterday. is going to be with no, us coming up in about 
40 minutes, a little less than 40 minutes. <laughs> Will Z back with us uh, for the first time this week. And then, of course, Matt George uh, closes out the week coming up uh, at 315. So uh, hang out, man. We got a lot to talk about. And we'll open up the phone lines for you, 916-909-1320. We'll keep you up to date. Sorry, and Danny in San Francisco. We'll keep you up to date with day one of the N. C well, You can't do tournament. that because no one knows the tournament's on. And if you alert them, they're just going to turn the show off. going to turn. You're right. But be with me all day. By the way, ESPN 1320, your home of the NCAA tournament. Shout out Anheuser-Busch. Shout but, out Anheuser-Busch. Hey, we got some things to announce. We're going to be in these streets. Well, let's do that. Then. Yeah, we're going to be mean, in we'll these streets. I mean, we'll talk about it all when we come Yeah, back. we'll be we'll in these streets. We'll Steve and KC here on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. I don't even know. I meant to tell you. Do you know about these appearances? Yeah, we have. We have two. We have two appearances one's next week at bar west on thursday no, yes yeah, bar west on thursday for the tournament um one's at tom's watch bar there one's at go. bar west uh Thursday and Friday or uh next Thursday. No, so so we're gonna be at Bar West next Thursday, mm-hmm. uh immediately following this show. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be at Tom's Watch Bar for the national title game. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's we'll be at Tom's Watch Bar for the national title games. That's a good look. Tom's is so far. It, yo, we really that is the that is the spot. Them boys, like for real, for real. That, that place is as advertised. Kyle in there? Yes. Tell Kyle to download CapCut on his phone, and he could start messing around with videos that way. I know he wants to learn stuff. That's I just he could just mess around with stuff on CapCut. No, okay, that's fine. Now straight to hell. Uh, uh no 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 live show planned but we do have a couple of watch parties planned i was i was dying at those uh at those wrestling clips i sent you guys man when Yo. Vince had to switch it up yeah with... <laughs> oh i think he made him mad i think he made him mad <laughs> said vince really thought he was a... he had lost it it didn't happen. i don't know why vince always does that dumb shit he books these like he books like a striking finish <laughs> and the crowd doesn't react, and you wonder why. Well, yeah, shout out Kane Velasquez. Like, yeah, right, exactly. Kane Velasquez was doing Hurricane Ranas or whatever they call it. <laughs> nah, do it MMA style. Yo. Also, how, how, what percentage are we at that Shawn Michaels was like genuinely trying to fight Stone Cold too? Like, <laughs> he was when drunk. He tackled him, yeah. He <laughs> was so drunk. You know, these are funny. things I did not. Did you notice that when, like, when it happened yeah that's the uh I no, no i can't say i noticed it when it when when that happened <laughs> i think that was the sunny days episode of raw i think, I think that's it was the yeah they said it in the tweet that was um <laughs> i got that clip from wcw with the tagline imagine being bret hart and they choose this guy over <laughs> you and then you had the the um, Broner clip yesterday. You tweeted out. Oh, yeah. that's my favorite. I Have watched that twenty that times. Before? No. So remember, I told you about uh, Av um, and Paulie Mal- Pauly Malinaji after the fight when he was like, "Don't be bragging about my side piece." Somebody put that clip out there last night, and I retweeted it. That was my favorite part on, of that man. clip is before you can hear Pauly like he's talking like right next to Adrian, and Adrian's like. What you lost? You lost that square. He's trying to be discreet. He's like, "Hey, bro, don't, don't, no, don't, chill, 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 don't do that, chill, chill, no, don't do that." He's like, "What? What? You lost? Don't be, just don't be bragging. Don't be bragging. Don't be bragging about my side piece. Don't be bragging about my side piece." It's just like, "What you lost?" Fair squares is like that. That's what set Polly over the edge. I think just because he's like, "What are you mad about?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is funny that's very funny <laughs> yo man that that's is hilarious 
time. Bro. That might be my favorite like post fight <laughs> clip ever. I think. What was James Harden doing in that clip? Oh my gosh! Did you see uh, Ty Lue? No. Uh, we'll talk. We'll, we're gonna talk about all that. Ty Lue. Oh man. <laughs> Bless him. Bless him. Also, just Harden showing how unserious he's always been. That was. That was damning. For him. Uh oh, why is YouTube TV trending? They're probably killing it today. That's why. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's getting love. It's getting love. <clears throat> hey, um, <sighs> I went to the went to the doctors today. I had a doctor's appointment just to mm-hmm. check up, make sure everything's good. Mm-hmm. Uh. It's actually been a long time since I've been to the doctor. It's yeah, not okay. Same, bro. Yeah, same. Um, same so same. Er, er, everything's good. But I made sure when I was leaving the doctor's office, this is shoot. This really happened. Mm-hmm. I said, thanks, JB. <laughs> I had to, I had to get on, my fox man. off. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> thanks, JB. Did you do some planks? <laughs> Did you do some push-ups? Did you throw Ryan in the air? This dude trying to reenact the De'Aaron Fox Kaiser. Hey, and his initials ain't even JB. It's, <laughs> it's DK. Did he just, what, I said, thanks, JB. What the hell is wrong with you? It brings Kenny back in here, right? Bro, you hey, maybe let's do it. Let's do a cat scan, dog. <laughs> let's do a cat scan, bro. It's on the yeah. house. On the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take I hit dog look. with the thanks, JB. Oh, no. <laughs> that reminds me, remember the office, hey. Michael Scott trying to stick his foot in the little the, the MRI, machine. MRI machine? Yeah. <laughs> What's worse, a head injury or a burned foot? A head injury. A head Yo, injury is much worse. What's wrong with Michael Scott? Man? Well, Dwight got a concussion. He was trying to help him. He crashed his car into a pole. Why did he got put a... his foot in there? Well, because he want because Mike wants people to feel sorry for him. So <laughs> he he wanted people to believe the injury was worse than it was. So he came in. He stepped on his George Foreman grill. Oh snap! And so he Barefoot? burned his yeah. So he because he gets out of bed, so Why? he wakes up, he puts bacon on the George Foreman grill, and then he goes back to sleep so he can wake up to the crackling sound and smell of bacon. Yeah. And so he gets up and he stepped on the grill and it clamped on his foot. I don't know what's so hard to believe about that. And then to go into the studio on, or to man. go into the to the to work, but he wrapped his foot up in bubble wrap. <laughs> Come on. And so when when Dwight, Ooh, when right. when Dwight raced <laughs> out hilarious. to get him to help him because he was asking for help, he crashed his car into a pole because he was in such a hurry. He got a concussion, uh, drove Mike back. They noticed, hey, something's wrong with Dwight. He's repeating himself. He's acting different. He's being weird. And so they 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 had to give him a, a CAT scan or a uh, an MRI. I can't remember and, which one it was. And, and then Michael Mike tried, tried to put to, his foot into the machine. To take the, the, yeah. That time when the yeah. CAT scan was on. Yep. Check his hey, what about Michael's filling out the form at the hospital? Reason why you're here? Oh, bringing friends to hospital. Yeah. Oh, you thought you thought they meant reason why you're here. The show really Come took on, it down for once he left. Come on. It's <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. By the way, um, real quick, we'll we'll check periodically, but you know, up updated standings on the D and Casey tournament challenge. Um, somehow I'm 66. Well, it's, it probably means you're like tied for second or something. Adam Ace is, is first right now. Could have All the right. fastest growing bracket though. Fastest growing bracket in the game. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Keon Ellis might be the fastest growing loved king. No, for real. In the fan base. Uh, he continues his. We love life. Keon. That would be a uh, Celtics fan talking about Keon Ellis right there. I think. Tommy Heinsohn. Tommy Heinsohn. I love Walter. Walter McCarty. I love Keon. They had, they had the same impact. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Kings are seven and zero when he starts. Do with That's that great. number whatever you will. Uh, four steals for Keon. Uh, 22 Toronto turnovers <laughs> led to 33 Sacramento Kings points last night. We we joke a little bit. The the Keon thing is like the seven and zero when he starts stat is starting to kind of 
take life and like, like it's becoming the undertaker streak <laughs> it really is becoming the undertaker streak is it, look it's like it be it, like you, you the first time they pointed out you're like oh yeah he is seven and oh and then like every win started to mean more so tonight it's eight no right but you mm -hmm. beat washington mm -hmm. but if it goes to nine and oh Come on now because you beat Orlando, and it's gonna be nine and zero yeah. when he comes back home. Yeah, now, now it's now, <laughs> now it starts to take on a little bit of it, the 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 dynamic of that that streak starts to change a little bit. And like you can beat like King Kong Bundy or Albert or whoever the hell it Albert. is, but when you start beating like Triple H a couple of times and Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, oh, now it's different. Mm. And and they got they got they had uh they had uh King Kong Bundy last night in Toronto. They got <laughs> Damn. they got now who okay, who are the wizards? I mean, my first thought is the Brooklyn Brawler. No, they're not the Brooklyn Brawler. They're the worst well, no, well, first of all, of Undertaker, he didn't beat the Brooklyn Brawler at WrestleMania. No, for so one off of the Undertaker's analogy. streak, um, the Wizards are who did he it was Albert it, and it's that Albert other guy. and Big Show, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Albert and Big Show, and then whoever that Australian. Oh no, guy is, yeah, no, it was that. Albert and uh uh what was that dude's name? Oh no, it was uh, was it was supposed to be, it was supposed, yeah, it was Albert and Big Show, and it was supposed to be against The Undertaker and Nathan Jones. But he was just so bad. And they Nathan were just Jones. like, no, forget exactly. it. Yeah, just forget it. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. absolutely Nathan not. Jones. He's not going out He was there. so bad, they pull him out the match. He just comes in at the end, roundhouses Albert, I yeah. think. Yeah, they, the, they just had The Undertaker beat both the of them. Who the hell was Nathan Jones? Yeah. He was, you, if you look him up right now, you'll see why Vince liked him. He was just a big, giant dude. From Australian prison, I believe. I, I believe that's what he was from. Gosh, so 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 they might. Who were the who, Wizards? They might be Big Show and Nathan Jones, or in, Big Big Show and uh Albert. It's like WrestleMania 19 tomorrow or tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does look like a a Vince creation. See in Orlando, he looks like Ryback. He does look like Ryback. Yeah, except oh, he's taller. taller. Yeah, yeah he's right. taller. Um, Orlando is Orlando like? Mm, that's a good one. That's Diesel. What Mark Henry, Orlando, Orlando's Hunter. Nah, Hunter's too high. Well, we got we got to tie these to the streak, though, right? Yeah, those are all street guys. Mark Henry was a street guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was a street I guy. I would say they I... almost had Mark Henry was almost the guy who ended the streak. That's disgusting, right? Mm. Yeah, they thought, nah, never mind. This is a bad idea. Mm. That's a good call, though. I probably give them Mark Henry status. Mark Henry, yeah. they're they're up and coming. Mark Henry's a Hall of Famer. He is a Hall of Famer. And, he, and gave a, one of the most famous promos in wrestling history. <laughs> that was that was just the cinema jack, right there. The, the, the salmon jacket promo. <laughs> I'll never forget that. They are currently they're fifth. Orlando in the East. I think Mark Henry's a good one. That's a good call okay. by you. All right. Yeah. Hall, Hall of Pain era Mark Henry. Okay. What? Well, okay, wait a minute. Now, what you said is perfect. That's perfectly fine. But who was number nine on the streak? nine do you know off the top of your head Just no okay. i feel like it might be oh come on man nine rick flair maybe that's wrestlemania wow it could be hunter well wow. let me let me let me look I'm pulling it up right now you, you okay whoever gets there first is the winner i, f I feel like I'm I'm going Rick or Hunter. It's one of those two. One of the because he yeah, I think he wrestled. I think he had Hunter three times at WrestleMania. So they as, pret they pretend like that didn't happen, but I think, I think you're right. Did. As nine as, and zero was Triple H at WrestleMania seventeen. Okay. So as like the the style match the the actual the uh, resume should, and who the person was yeah. is Mark Henry. Yeah. But literally. Yeah. The ninth on the on the nine yeah. and zero was Triple H. So the magic it's Triple H could be Triple H. Yeah. So really? the Raptors might have been the big boss man. That, well, that or giant that Gonzalez might, hanging from the oh, they were the giant Gonzalez. <laughs> That's the call right there. Big boss man hanging from the hell in a cell. Was giant wild. Gonzalez eight? Giant no, giant Gonzalez was like two. He who's, was three. Giant Gonzalez was three. Who's eight? Eight is big boss man. It kind of checks out with now nah, big, big big boss Bo man. Are remember than, that match? Than the remember Wizards. that match ended with big boss man hanging from the top of the fleet center. That was crazy. But I was just saying because eight is washington tonight if they get the win yeah that could be boss man that's that's what i'm saying that <laughs> yeah, kind of checks boss out that could, that but could i be feel boss like a big boss man is a little bit better than the 2023 24 washington wizards 
A yeah, but bit. it's like big boss man. It's like you got some respect, but you're big boss man. So the Wizards have no respect. That's none. some none. They could be Jimmy Snooker. They're called oh. the Lizards. Well, that's that's not appropriate. <laughs> it's not wrong. Hmm. Anyways, Keon is seven and zero. Keon, he does great things. Keon said something in the post game that made me laugh. Well, what what he said because I didn't, I haven't seen it, I haven't seen or heard this one. He was at the podium, right? And and I think it was, uh, I think our man, it was our man, I think it was our man, Chris. I think he's the only one there. Um, who's talking about the importance of putting a team like that away the way that they did? And Keon's like, yeah, um, you know, it's great for us. We're able to rest those guys, rest the starters. You know, we got a big game tomorrow night and, and you know, another game tomorrow night. And, and it's just great to get those guys rest. He says it with a straight face. He's just talking. He doesn't realize what he's saying. Uh -huh. And all I can think is, Keon, that's you. <laughs> like, you're one of those guys. Like, Keon <laughs> was talking like he was, with all due respect, you know, Jalen. Yeah. So, like, no, bro, like, you're, you are a starter. Yeah. You're one of them dudes. You're, you're, it, you're out there. And it was just, like, clear that it hasn't registered with him yet that he's one of them. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of made me chuckle a little bit because he kept referring to the starters as those guys, them, no, sir, you're, rather than us. You are him. Right. You are them. Right. The record right. is one thing, but he kind of feels like a missing, like the right piece for the Kings right he, now. It, like he's yo, just kind of connecting everything right now. We'll we'll play it. Uh, Jesse, I'll give you time to find it. if you, And we'll play it after we talk to Anthony Slater at 1250. Um if you go to the Kings YouTube page, we'll go to the the the, the post game interviews. Go to like the ten minute mark, and we'll you'll hear Mike Brown just raving about yeah. Keon Ellis. We actually, I didn't see that in there. We actually both noticed the same thing. Like he's he loves Keon, and 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 it just it goes to what we were talking about. Like Keon is exactly what Mike has wanted from jump. Mm -hmm. He didn't know he had it, or he didn't know what degree that, that Keon could perform at. And he always seems to have liked what Keon brought. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in moments of, I don't know, uh, moments of uncertainty, like franchise uncertainty, team uncertainty, direction uncertainty, he leans on the offense, right? He, mm -hmm. He's been comfortable leaning on Kevin and, 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 and the guys that, that that bring something offensively or, or bring something more to the offensive end than they do the defensive end. But something happened in recent weeks where he's gotten more comfortable with Keon. And I don't know if that's Keon's comfort level on the offensive end or his – deep because he does have that. Or his defense has been so undeniable that now Mike won't go away. Now Mike won't go away from that. Now Mike shouldn't go away from that. And he – in my opinion, found the guy he's been looking for from jump. Yeah, well, and I, I don't mean this is is any shade or to create dissension or anything because this guy has played well as of late. I think Mike is is satisfied with it. But Keon Ellis, oh, oh, oh I just thought oh, I about think I know where you're going to go. Thought about the wording. I don't. I, I, I definitely think, don't I, want to I, do I that, think I know I'll where you're anyway. going to go. Yeah, he's what. Yeah, he thought Davion was going to be. Yeah, and I know exactly what Davion. I know exactly what wording you shot away from too. <laughs> he loved Davion on the introductory press conference, mm -hmm. talked about him, raved about him, and he thought that's what he was getting somewhere can along I, the way. Can whenever I say this though? Mm -hmm. I think he loves this current version of Davion for sure, for sure. Because Davion now is confident on the offensive end. The two have a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Like Davion's confidence on the offensive end has changed, mm -hmm. and they've credited a lot of that to Coach Jimmy and and and, and to the guys that have been working with him. They've you know they've talked about Steph Curry in the off season, which is like fantastic. Mm -hmm. But the season didn't start that way. Right. His whether it was a mentality or whatever it was, something shifted when Mike put him back in the lineup or back in the rotation. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Davion's been a to me a completely different player. Uh, I get, yeah. I get, I hundred percent get your point, and I don't think that was a slight at at, at Davion. Right. I just want to make sure. I think Mike loves this version of Davion for Mitchell. sure, and he looks at what those two do on the court together and how they they kind of feed off each other, and I think that is also something that he he's been looking for the entire time. Then you factor in the fact that kind of sneaky 
on the low, nobody wants to like mention it too much because they were very critical of him early on. Duarte's playing really yeah, good. He is as of late. Yep. Like he has started to get his legs under him. Maybe it took half the season or whatever, but he's starting to give that edge that he's looked for as well. And you get these these super subs, so to speak, and one of them is now starting in Keon. And it literally has kind of changed the fortunes of this team. Yeah. It's, it's I well, I got a question I'll ask you, I'll ask Jesse as well. Do you think this team is peaking? I don't want to say peaking yet, just because like it was the Raptors and stuff like that. But I will say now I think like because even with the Knicks loss and the Rock Rockets loss, I think now we're starting to see them play better. Like it's more Kings basketball now. So I don't want to say they're peaking now or whatever, but like they're on their way. I think like like we said the last couple weeks ago, or whatever. I wasn't confident in this team at all. Now the way they're playing, like I'm starting to believe in them a bit more. But you, you gotta it's gotta it's gotta be prolonged though. Yeah. You can't just do it for a for few sure. days. For sure. You can't ask them to do something and then not give them credit when they do it. So we asked them to do something against Toronto mm. and they did it. Like we asked them to do something against Milwaukee or the Lakers and they did it. Both teams like they stepped up big time in both of those. I think they're playing really, really good basketball. I'm going to hold off on peaking until like I I, I, I feel good about tonight. I, I want them to get through tonight. Mm -hmm. but. I think how the next four games after tonight play out could give you, I mean, they are, you know, Jesse has a, had, had this note that they're, they've won seven of their last 10. Mm. The, the math has them. That's their March record. Their March mm. record is seven and three. Mm -hmm. So we broke things down. Hey, Casey, I know you don't like this. King's been playing 500 basketball in February. King's been playing 500 basketball since the beginning of January. Okay. If we're going to do that, mm. we'll just keep the same energy here in March. They are not playing 500 basketball. Mm. This is a team right now that's seven and three has a chance to go eight and three in this month tonight with a difficult stretch of, of, of four games after that season high, 12 games over 500, which it felt like it was nine, 10, mm -hmm. nine, nine, mm -hmm. you know, 10, just repeatedly. They, I think they got to 11 a couple of times, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe once. And then, yeah. and then, you know, now season high 12 again, and with all due respect to, 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 to Washington, you got a chance to make it, you know, 12 tonight. But this Thir is a, this 13. Is 13. Would you, yeah, you 13. said 12, 13. This is also part of the story, though, right? And this is what we, we talked about the other day when I was like, it's always going to be something, right? Like, yeah. they won't yeah. they won't prove anything or anybody wrong because it's always what's next. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you beat the brakes off of Toronto like you were supposed to. Don't let a letdown happen against Washington. Yeah. Right. And then if they win the Washington game, all right, well, let's see what you can do against a good team like Orlando on the road. Mm -hmm. And then, but see, they for win me, that one, and then it's like, all right, you're coming home. You just had a good road trip. Yeah. Improve on that. You know what I mean? It's see, that's not exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. it, it, but, but you're right. Like, I think we, we absolutely do because of the urgency of the season, the urgency of the time of the year. We keep looking to what's next. You, you got to get through Washington tonight for a variety of reasons. But, I look at or I look at teams like Orlando and Philadelphia and in, in, in Dallas a little bit differently because those are teams that are in the same position as you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, um, you know, let's let's just for fun sake say they get through Orlando, but Philadelphia gets them. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia is desperate to win too. Like mm -hmm. they are they they are trying to 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 fight their way into the top six and and not have to deal with a playing scenario and perhaps an embarrassing exit out of the postseason, right? Those types of things can help mentally reset the team. Hey, Philly needed it. They were tougher than us. They got us last night. Now Dallas has an edge on us. We can't lose this game. Mm -hmm. And the beauty about that back to back is if something like that happens, you come out there, hopefully you get a, you know, in, in this scenario, I'm presenting you, you regroup, you get a, you, you get the win against Dallas. Now everyone has two or three days to like, okay, we got Dallas again. Mm -hmm. They're going to be more fired up to, to to get us this time around because they need this. Mm -hmm. We need it back because we lost to Philadelphia. Like we've got to get our our positioning back here. Yeah. And so, but you have, I think that's, I think that there's a there's a greater sense of urgency when you're moving when you've got a 24 hour 
game differential. Mm-hmm. Whereas in, in these two, these two Dallas games are like 72 hours apart or whatever they are. So I, I, I think there's a, I think those types of losses, while you don't want the team to lose, they can help focus you for the next game. And one thing that it does feel like is this Sacramento Kings team is focused. Yeah. They, they seem to be locked in. Losing to Philadelphia isn't bad. Was it was a, that was a really long winded way of saying losing to Philadelphia isn't bad. Losing into or, Orlando isn't bad. Mm-hmm. But how you respond to those losses will kind of tell the story of, of where you're at right now because I think everybody feels good. Mm-hmm. Last time they lost, they responded well. Yeah. And to answer my own question all, all the way around is I, I don't – I'm not going to say they're peaking. I won't say that. Um, I, you know, and, and I don't want to say I'm a one-man wolf back because I think you've seen the vision as well, Jesse, as well. Maybe you just didn't trust the team. But I think this is a continuation of – the basketball they've played since the All-Star break. I think those two games before the All-Star break, Phoenix and Denver, they went one and one. But the way they played basketball, I thought they they started to get locked in at that point. And, yes, there's been the Chicago game. I mm-hmm. think Miami was after the All-Star break, and Houston was as well. So you've had those losses. But just the way they've been playing basketball has been relatively consistent for – since the all-star break, it seems like they're starting to ramp it up even more, so to speak, because we've got numbers we'll talk about as well about what they're starting to do on the defensive end. Keon Ellis is bringing an element to their, to their game that we hadn't necessarily seen, or we had been looking for throughout the year. And I, I'm not going to say they're peaking, but it's a continuation of the basketball. I think they've been playing since the all-star break. But now what's happening is teams like Toronto and hopefully Washington, they're they're putting those guys away mm-hmm. at this point. Like they're mm-hmm. they did it with Toronto. We don't know what's gonna happen with Washington. Yeah. But if they handle them the same way, they're saying, look, we're not having those type of slip ups again. We may lose some games along the way, but it ain't gonna be to these kind of teams in a certain fashion. If I if I got this right, I think I have the Kings at nine and five since the All Star break, because their last game before the All Star break was that one hundred two ninety eight win against Denver, right? Yep. Okay, so they 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 beat the Spurs, beat the Clippers, lost to the Heat, lost to the Nuggets, and then have gone seven and three here in the month of March. So that puts them at nine and five since the All Star break. Good stuff. Um, it is. And as, what are as the couple games that you there's there's the Chicago fumbled. game. Yeah, the Chicago game is in there for sure. That 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 Miami game that a lot of people were frustrated with is is in there. I don't think that's fair, but I can't tell anybody how to feel about that game. Uh, and then the Rockets game that you and, referenced. And those games, like uh, when the Kings beat Milwaukee, Milwaukee was never really there, right? Like, oh, wait, far- I take that back. I got my my Miami my 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 Miami games mixed up. Uh-huh. That was the one everyone was missing of. I was thinking of the game they they had lost like seven in a row. Yeah, yeah. No, I got my my. Miami. Yeah, never but, mind. But, yeah, that's a tough loss. But no, it is a tough loss. But they had a watch party for that game, for God's sakes. Which game? The the Miami game. Oh, they, they did. had a watch yeah, party for that game. Jimmy yeah, and boys. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. But well, what I was gonna say, thinking about that game and comparing it, right? So let's just say on the on the flip side, R.I.P. Flipside, you already know the vibes. Maybe come back out to his family. We'll, we'll hopefully no, shout out to um, Flipside's family. Uh, the Kings beating the the Bucks, the Lakers. I'll even throw Toronto in it. Those teams, when the Kings beat them, those teams were never really a factor in those games. Kings pretty much dominated mm. those games from start to end. Mm-hmm. The games that the Kings lost to the, the Bulls. Games. Yeah, right. No mm-hmm. facts. The, the the games the Kings lost to the Bulls and the Heat, that's not what happened to the Kings. The Kings were playing good basketball in those games, within those games, and they had like a seven-minute stretch where nothing went right. Yeah. And they couldn't recover. Because remember, the Heat game was close. Then the Heat went crazy for like seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Then the Kings went crazy for seven minutes, and then it just became a normal game, and the Heat ended up winning that matchup. Yeah. But the whole, the whole point was, even in those losses, they played really good. The one just nasty game was really the um, the Nuggets game on the road without De'Aaron. 
yeah that was just yeah, that was bad non-competitive bad business yeah that was bad business, but that's like sure. one in the last 20 games or something like that yeah it pretty much is long-winded way of saying i think they're they're continuing well, we are long-winded on this show because we have four hours to talk time. uh and sometimes we just invite friends uh to talk with us uh we're gonna invite anthony slater to join us uh, an exclusive conversation with the Ant Man of the Athletic coming up here uh, on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN thirteen twenty. I love that our camera over there is called handoff. Yeah, <laughs> I love that I didn't shut the shut it down. Well, you never know who's going to that's gonna true. Come through. That's true. Kim might try to come in here and talk. She might. Well, she's busy today. She running around. Yeah, I asked her for something. She said, "Don't ask me for anything." Yeah, she's she was not. Said whatever, she Kim. Just get the me. right Lysol package next time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> we just say it to whoever at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Scream it from the mountaintop. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like Pac at the end to hit him up with that dude. <laughs> Fuck you and your motherfucking crew. If you want to be down with him, then fuck you too. I do love the tournament, man. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. Can't wait for it to come back to Sacramento. Probably in about three years. Is Keon now the biggest story for the Kings this season? Well, mm. no. No. No, yeah, but it's, he's, it's the he's guy we haven't the talked about yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the guy we're well, about to talk about, I think, with Anthony. Him and maybe it's unfair that we just – Domas is about to make NBA history. Yeah, no, we don't discuss that here, apparently. <laughs> make yeah. NBA history by leading the league and triple doubles and all, and not making an all-NBA team. No one man, a shit. man, man. Can you imagine being a dumbass voter putting Anthony Davis on that list? Took the first steps of making that move we talked about yesterday. First step, not nothing, on, nothing, nothing, on, nothing. Nah, nothing Let's to, nothing going. to. Yeah, just, just get the first going. step. Let's get this going. Some paperwork was filled out. Went, went back last night and looked. I'll send you guys. I think it's uh, gonna happen, bro. The it, that is literally the most nerve wracking time I've ever experienced, and I've gotten married. Right, like the wedding mm -hmm. wasn't. As nerve wracking as trying to make that happen. That's the back I just sent you guys. Went back like because there's workers there all day, so we went back at like six thirty. Walked it a little bit. And it was like, Phew. come on, man, <clears throat> come on. You might have some Trista stories. All right. <laughs> it's fenced off, so I, <laughs> man. <laughs> or alligator climbs the fence. You know they climb the fences now. Okay, man. What are we doing this for? <laughs> Alligators are crazy. Like, wow, this is why I don't tell you guys shit, man. You guys are ass. I know. I, this isn't like a. I think this is a fairly popular clip. You seen a clip of um that jaguar going into the water and killing the alligator? Is that yeah. the one where they're like, "How do you lose when you have the the like your home field advantage home or whatever?" Yeah, I've seen that. I, That's, see, but he I don't. I there, hate watching those, but yeah, I was like, oh. Hey, I hate to sound like this. I don't feel like there's any redeemable qualities in an alligator. That's not true. What? 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 What do they do? Tim Tebow. Well, well, even those gators were a little, well, <laughs> well a little hell. suspect. Well, well, why are they overrated? Um, it's not overrated. It's like the animal. If they, if the jaguar goes and gets them, I'm gonna cheer. Why not? Oh, you're, you're just out on, you're just you, out on why gators. Why are you though. rooting? Why are you rooting? Like, why do you have a rooting interest in that? Because they're relatively. Equal. I only have a rooting interest if, like, the gator is going for like a baby lion, and you know, Bro, they the go big for, lion comes and they go for everything. They're that's evil. True. No, that's a shoot. That, that's what I'm saying. Well, Where, cats what's are the evil. redeeming quality? That's fact. Of cats alligator. stink. I don't know well, about cats. Are very nice. Cats don't, do don't do that. know the worst. I'm not even. I'm never going to own a cat, but don't do that. Is Matt? Is Kyle in there? No, he's not. Okay, yeah. That's... Oh, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> Kyle's the cat man. But alligators have no redeemable qualities. None. All they do is go over there and fuck shit up and eat things. 
That's redeemable. You right. alpha right there. Like top of the not top of the food chain, but like I'm not even bothering you. And they would go eat me. I'm not, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just there. And they're like, oh, let me go eat Kenny's leg. So yeah, Jag, go get him. It's not right. All right. All right. Go get him, Jag. Your attitude towards Alex. I'm clapping. I'm standing, I'm standing <laughs> ovation. <laughs> Like your, Jeezy said, go at, get him, Jaguar. Your attitudes towards alligators are. Really? And remind you, this all started because you two talking about mountain lions and alligators <laughs> climbing over fences. That's another thing. They climb fences now. Alligators climb fences? Yeah, I seen that. that was crazy. I mean, I don't Is know that a shoot? Adapt. No, I, I seen a clip. Chain link fence. It's not the same fence. But they probably could at this point. Why would there even be an alligator in that picture I showed you? I don't know. I'm just traumatized forever because I, the man, I don't like alligators. Bryce saying Once in the again, chat, over demo qualities. Bryce saying in the chat, a gator would wipe, wipe out a jaguar. We've seen the film, Bryce. Send the clip. We've seen bro, the film. Bro, Send this, the clip. Once again, in the water, went into the lake or river, what it is, and got that gator and pulled him back on land. Well, why did the jaguar have such an attitude? He's doing God's work. Wow. Well, have you ever like fought till, an alligator? Or wait, wait till oh, yeah, I'm, I'm terrified of them. Wait, Florida wait. beat Michigan no, one time. No, yeah, no. Wait till this call. No, from, we always be Florida. Wait Actually, from this. Football, they got us. Wait, wait till this call from PETA comes in. <laughs> Jeez. I need PETA to defend them. Then they're evil. So okay, if I'm wrong, somebody tell me the I good that gators do in this world. Well, I, I didn't. I don't doubt that. I don't. I don't know. I'll look I it don't up right bother. Now. What are I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I don't bother alligators, crocodiles. Like if you live in the swamp. Do you? I'm not gonna bother you. <laughs> one time, one time, I was I saw this video. Anthony Slater coming up soon. Actually, right now, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the video uh, I saw later. Well, we we don't you. want Ant Man to weigh in on on alligators here. <laughs> well, goodness, I saw there was like a gang of alligators. What about alligators? <laughs> so, well, we've determined that alligators have no redeeming quality. They don't. They have no redeeming quality. They, they actually they keep open areas of water from being invaded from like foreign vegetation and stuff like that. All right, they're good that's for the ecosystem. Good wow. enough. Shout out to the Gators. They're evil. No, get them, Jaguar. Evil. I feel like this is something have is having to do with the Florida Gators. Like he's no, not it has nothing to do. With, no, no, it ha <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't. That would make much more sense, Anthony, if it did. not a Tim Tebow. It it, I'm it, starting to think I don't like reptiles because I hate snakes. Well, everyone hates snakes. What redeemable qualities do they have? Well, you carry them to the ring and put them on your opponent after you <laughs> hit the DDT. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> Anthony Slater of yeah. the Athletic. Like, what did I walk in? Yeah. Why am I on this show? <laughs> Anthony's <laughs> like, I'm going back to the other show I was on today. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Ant Man, yes, sir. You, we haven't gotten to chat in a little bit, man. Yeah. I, I obviously we want to talk about Malik and the tremendous piece that you wrote yesterday after talking with Malik and all of that stuff. But let's start with the Kings overall and the way that they've been playing in the month of March. We 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 begged for them to beat up a bad basketball team last night. And that's exactly what they did. They had some quality wins this month over, uh, you know, Milwaukee, a couple against the Los Angeles Lakers. What, what's your, what's your vibe right now on the way the Sacramento Kings are playing? You know, their record is probably where I would have predicted it to be. Um, you know, going back to the beginning of the season, it's been a weird winding path, which I'm, you know, you guys have documented on a daily basis, the teams they lose to the teams they beat, how they do it. Um, but you know what I'm trying to think, I mean, you know, I'm not doing the quick math here, but their, their pace is probably right around where it was last season. Um, maybe even Which a little was a higher. struggle to start the year. Like yeah. Mike would point that out a lot that this, we're just They've not moving the way we up did. to get yeah. to that point. Really. Yeah. yeah. And also like that was, you know, a fluky three seed last year in a sense of like what record got you the three seed. Um, and so, you know, I, you expected them to be a slightly improved basketball team this year. They didn't really change their personnel much, but you're like Keegan Murray, a little leap, just more continuity, second year in Mike Brown's defensive system. And I would say I think they're a little bit better, a little bit sturdier as a, as a playoff threat, especially considering we learned about some of their players in the playoffs last year. They learned a little bit about themselves. Um, so I, it's going to depend on matchup, who they get in the first round. Avoid Denver at all costs would be my uh, – you know, suggestion really to anybody down there in the West. Um, but if they get a Minnesota, a Thunder, I think they could threaten. Hmm. Do, do you look at um, this particular King season as um, typical 
for the the traditional path that the Kings are on, right? Like a lot of people are like, oh, they're not championship contenders. They're not this, they're not that. Well, they're essentially in their second year of being what they hope to be, right? Like a lot of teams aren't championship contenders in the second year of their, you know, eight years of being good. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Well, he loves you the reference. On schedule? He loves to reference the Nuggets and like the Mike Malone. It took him three years to even get in the playoffs. They had to have their playoff failures. You know, there was, I can remember because I was certainly one of the people that for years was like, you know, Jokic is okay. Like he's a great player, but like this core doesn't look like a championship type team to me. I saw them go out in the second round and the first round a couple years ago. I mean, you know, with Jamal Murray's hurt, Michael Porter Jr. is dealing with all the health stuff. I saw the Warriors like, you know, four won them in the first round. And it was like my opinion really even still going into last season was like, I don't see them as a championship team that can get over the hump. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between, the kings of now and and the nuggets is i don't think like a sabonis is ever going to become a Jokic, right we're talking about you know a historical great probably three-time mvp after this season um but i didn't think Jokic was going to become that a few years ago either so you're right like this does profile as like a team on the rise i think fox has got to be the one that makes that like championship 1a fifth gear type leap um mm -hmm. but the one thing i would say about fox is i've seen him in one playoff series because he's only been in one and he was excellent. And, you know, I know the finger injury late may have impacted, you know, game six, game seven. But, like, he was not only just, like, a, a problem, but, you know, talking to a lot of Warriors people behind the scenes as that series was going on and after. Like, there was a high level of respect of, like, the way they needed to scout him, defend him, and, and just guard him. And, like, they faced almost everybody in this era. And, like, he was one of the guards. They're like, no, he's, like, the real deal on a playoff setting. So that makes me believe, you know, they can threaten maybe more than some people believe. Uh, Anthony Slater, you brought up De'Aaron Fox, fifth gear, yeah. hitting that next level. Why does everyone hate DeMontis Sabonis so much? <laughs> oh, hate is strong. Um, doubt <laughs> him on, like, you know, that 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 next level stage, I think, is what you're getting Fair to. Fair enough. Why is that? Um, because I do think his playoff history has not been, has been lessened than his regular season output, you know, even last season. I mean, reality was like, he didn't have that great of a playoff series, right? The way the Warriors scouted was to force him into things that they didn't think he was quite as good at. And it worked, you know, like, you know, you, you remember the offense slowing a bit down when they were sagging off a bunch and, uh, he has a chance to, to, to prove he is improved and, and, and can matter in certain matchups. But even going back to his Pacers days, I do think, you know, even on the defensive end, in the playoffs, his lack of rim protection, um, his his inability to play next to Miles Turner on the biggest stage maybe inform some of this. But, like, I've got no – like, he's, he's an all-NBA center. His regular season this season, year has been insane. Um, but I think if you're saying, hey, I don't think you can be Nikola Jokic, it's not as big a slight as maybe – it might appear on the surface. The thing that I always um, think about with Sabonis is did he play up to his regular season standard in the playoffs? Absolutely not. But people act like this was the worst postseason he ever had. He still averaged like 16 and 10. Um, his assists were down, but that had to do with it's an, it's an assist, right? Like the passes were still there. He was generating the same looks. Kevin Herter, Keegan Murray for the first half of that series couldn't throw it in the ocean. Harrison Barnes couldn't throw it in the ocean. So that's one of the reasons why those things are down. And then you look at somebody who I think is really good. I think is really good and I love. But Bam Adebayo was just as awful last year. And he's an all-star. And he's I the, have my Bam no Adebayo doubts, doubts as well yeah. in the playoffs. But you're a like, Sabonis should have been an all-star. Like, I, I wouldn't take it that far, but I would say like, you know, you mentioned the Fox piece I did, which I'm sure we're going to get to some Malik Monk stuff, but Fox had a quote in that and he was talking about Monk and himself and, and what they learned in the playoffs and just like that shot creation, going and getting your own, being able to get to your mid range. Like it matters more in the playoffs when teams scout you better. They, mm -hmm. they, they pick at weaknesses. They take away some of the DHO stuff to Kevin Herter. Everything just gets more physical. Um, in my opinion, that takes away some of the stuff that Sabonis does well and elevates some of the stuff that Fox and Monk do very well. Monk and Fox were probably their two best players in that series because it was like they could just go and, and get by you one-on-one -on -one and score. And I just think scoring guards like that matter more 
in the second round in the West Finals than maybe your your more skilled center that that isn't shooting the jumper as much that needs some of the DHO stuff. It's nuanced stuff. Again, I'm not. I don't. I definitely don't want to come on here and like criticize the bonus. I think he. You know, I'm gonna vote him All NBA. So I'm talking about a top 15 player in the league this year. But I think there's a a fair belief that like what he does is doesn't you know impact winning as much as like what a fox does in the playoffs it, 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 that's interesting let's keep track of this by the way this is the new bit we're <laughs> keeping track of everyone who says they're voting for D- D- domas because if these numbers don't check out at the end of the year I, I got some problems <laughs> you you mentioned domas. Would, by the way you'll see you, you know it comes out afterwards yeah Oh, that's right. It does. It does. I do remember reading that the other day. It does. I I didn't know that before the other day, too, that it it comes out. Um, Will you vote De'Aaron? I haven't gotten to the point where I I needed to look at it, but I would – that's going to be tougher. You know, two kings out of the 15. I think Sabonis has had a a better, more consistent season than Fox. Mm -hmm. The names – you know, at 14, 15, 16, oh. 17 of this whole NBA list get re- yeah. really difficult to parse out. So I, I I would say I'm much more likely and expected to vote Sabonis than maybe Fox. But I'm not saying I'm not voting Fox. I just haven't looked at it deep enough yet. I got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. Before, I do want to talk about the piece you wrote on Malik and and and, and talk, you know, about the most intriguing player uh, the Sacramento Kings have right now, especially headed into this offseason. But the second most intriguing player on the Sacramento Kings right now, Anthony, might be Keon Ellis. Can you offer any insight as to what Keon Ellis might mean to Mike Brown? Because we've speculated over the last couple of weeks that Keon is the guy Mike has been looking for since he took over as the Sacramento Kings head coach at the beginning of last year. Yeah, long, active defenders who deflect and disrupt, but also don't have the responsibility that De'Aaron Fox has on the other end. Because like he'll tell you a lot of the same defensive tools that Ellis has, Fox has, but he's also like De'Aaron. You know, you know, you need to score thirty-one. You need to take a bunch of shots. You need to conserve your energy and guard the worst player on the other team for stretches of the game because like they need him on the offensive end. Where Keon Ellis is the type of guy he can. He can, you know, say, take two shots tonight, two open threes if you have them, but lock into your defensive assignment. Use most of your energy trying to guard a Jalen Brunson, uh, you know, Gary Trent, whoever, you know, they feel like is the most dangerous. And, yeah, he has been looking for that. Um, He's been obsessed with this, like, closeout thing, like the way they can't, you know, they don't close out as well as other teams. And and he blames a lot of it. Like, they're a low wingspan team. Uh, Mm -hmm. A lot of their guards aren't just – short or even wings aren't just short but they're not long they're not super bouncy athletic keon ellis is i don't know what his exact wingspan is but you can feel the length out there you see it with the steals and the deflections the blocks how about some of the blocks he had on bane that was crazy yeah, i didn't know he had that, that i think it's crazy. six eight right yeah like six, six seven, eight, six, eight. eight. Yeah. yeah that's a very plus wingspan you know you yeah. from the height um and yeah he had you know he searched for it with Kessler Edwards, right? Who did he have in who was his first year at camp? He took um Casey Akpala. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been guys he'll go search former, former King starter Casey yeah, Akpala. Right. <laughs> it's it's also what Davion Mitchell hasn't been able to develop into. I mean, I think still think Davion can help and um but he's just you know, it was just the knock of, about him coming out of the draft. He's short and the wingspan's not long. He can be a, a pest. But in the NBA, especially on bigger scoring wings, when you need to upsize, downsize, you need length. And Keon Ellis has it, and he's growing. And, like, Mike clearly has a – blue. like, uh, do you think Kevin Herter is getting his starting job back? No. Not now. I don't. Mm -mm. I didn't think he was going to lose it, like, if he was stayed healthy. But I I, I think Mike got the perfect way to – I mean, obviously no one wishes injury upon anyone, but this this made Mike's decision to me really, really – easy and uncomplicated yeah the other thing and this really matters and it's really going to matter as we get start to talk about uh not only the malik monk offseason potential contract but you know keegan murray's extension eligibility is uh, you know coming down the line in the future what sabonis is making fox is making keon ellis i'm looking now at his contract six hundred eighty three thousand the rest of this season 2.1 million next season then they have a team option for 2.3 so that's really, really affordable the next few years. And they need affordable uh, impact players to round out uh, this roster because, you know, they, they, they're going to need to save money somewhere. 
Uh, I'm going to read this just because Anthony's with us. I, I, we got to get to the Malik Monk thing, but this from your partner over at The Athletic. The NBA is the Sham Sharania. The NBA is shutting down the G League Ignite team after this season. Oh, wow. Uh, canceling the development squad of elite draft prospects and veterans that launched in 2020. Uh, full story, of course, over at The Athletic. Uh, that's, that's stunning. Very stunning. It's gone poorly this season. You know, yeah. I don't know if you, they were getting just waxed in games. I remember early in the season, they were giving up like, you know, 150, 160 point nights. It just, it feel like it went better in its first year. I, you know, I, the, it is surprising, but it's also clearly hasn't worked, right? Hmm. Interesting. It, 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 that puts overtime elite in a potentially Big completely thing. different, yeah. yeah, completely different category now. NIL, I would assume, probably has impacted them right now that colleges sure. are willing to pay. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the big lore, right? Run. That was what? the big lore of the ignite was you get paid. Yeah, yeah. Now you're at Alabama, you get paid more. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I'm, you remember who played for the ignite year one? It was Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga. You know, they used to, it used to be much more sparkling to go there. I mean, because it was a new thing. I feel like it's kind of faded. Kaminga kid's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He, he had some explosive dunks last <laughs> night. Like, that kid is so good. I think he had like seven dunks last he's night. He's nasty. He he's really really good. Um. Okay. Interesting bit of news. We could get to that, but let's talk about Malik Monk here. Um. Yeah. You wrote about him, uh, in 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 recent days, and let's start with his relationship with Mike Brown. Uh, it seems to be one of the most unique relationships that Mike has on this team. I think he likes it. You know, I think Mike Mike. He said it a few times. Remember they had a players only meeting a few weeks ago. And Mike was like, finally, yes, yell at each other, speak to, you know, I think he's been searching for personalities that bite back. Mike Brown has coached some of the craziest personalities in the league. You know, I mean, you guys probably remember this, but you know, who was the first behind Ron Artest in the malice at the palace, you know, who was chasing him down, yeah. you know, and he's told me stories of like Ron Artest from back in the day, they'd land in New York city and, and, Ron would be like, hey, Mike, you know, come on. We're going to a local park. I'm wearing, you know, it's the middle of winter in New York. I'm wearing Timberlands and some jeans. And I'm, I want to get shots up in like Rucker Park or wherever, you know, in the middle of winter. And he's like, okay, you know, we're doing that. All that. I mean, I know it's a winding way to say, but like Mike likes personalities. He likes confrontation. He thinks that lead helps lead to winning. Um, they, I remember his last season coaching the Warriors defense. Like, you know, he had this accountability you know, metric and he wanted Draymond really on his young guys and they would be yelling at, you know, Jordan Poole and some of the young guys. Like he believes in that kind of personality in the locker room. And Malik Monk has, I think, really embraced that type of coaching and the fact that, you know, he, he can yell at his coach, you know, as long as it's in a, you know, well-mannered way and in a sense of like they know like once this argument's done with, we're just both trying to win, we're going to move on and not take stuff personal. Um, and I think Monk is like that. Uh, you know, he mentioned, I remember even, I didn't put it in the story, but I mentioned that dynamic and he's like, I was coached by Calipari. You know, he, he used to yell at me more than Mike has ever yelled at me. Mm -hmm. So neither of them minded. I think it brings the best out of both of them. Mike can kill him for not taking a charge, right? I put that in the story, but it was like, he brought him in last year. It was like, you never take a charge. We need you to do something defensively. You're not going to suddenly be, you know, Keon Ellis getting all these, you know, deflection steals. You're not going to be a rim protector, like learn how to come over and take a hit yeah. and uh he took that coaching well and, and has implemented that into his game so yeah i do think their dynamic not only works well but i think it could potentially help them keep monk in free agency that's the next thing i was going to ask you too is um it, it seems like it's you said it in the story and you just said it now malik monk it's one thing for it to be available to have that type of relationship with your coach but he's embraced it you know, it seems like he uh, openly embraces the fact that not only can he talk to Mike a certain way, but that Mike will talk to him a certain way. Mike will will get on him. And obviously nobody knows. There's a number of different variables. But reading your story, one of the things I came away with is almost like a DeMarcus Cousins. Loyalty might be love with Malik Monk. There may be a price on that loyalty, <laughs> but he, he seems – very appreciative because I heard what he had to say about uh, Frank Vogel. And he says, every yeah. time I see Frank Vogel, I thank him for, mm -hmm. for what he did. And the Kings probably, probably not thanking Steve Clifford and James Borrego when he sees right, him. I think that right. was clear too, right? No. Yeah. You, you, yeah. It's a good point. 
Yeah, but, you know, the Kings, to a certain degree, took a chance and, and gave him at the time the biggest pay that he ever had, biggest opportunity he ever had. And you go into this summer, and I wonder – how much that may play into it, right? Like if the if the numbers get too crazy, then yeah, the numbers are the numbers. But if it's relatively close, you know, the loyalty that he has maybe to this franchise, to Mike Brown, to De'Aaron Fox, maybe that may weigh uh, in the Kings' favor in being able to bring him back, maybe with a little cheaper deal than somebody else could offer him. I agree with that because even though he's coming off the bench, Mike has clearly shown he's a, he's a top five guy in this rotation. He's closing. He's playing starter minutes on a lot of nights. Uh, he's we know his friendship with De'Aaron Fox. That he's said that that was important in his free agency decision. Uh, he likes the city. The fan base has embraced him. Uh, also, he mentioned it like he kind of likes the slow nature of Sacramento. You know, it it, it keeps him more focused. He's uh, taking up golf, this like golf obsession, because he, th- you know, part of it is I think it calms his brain. Because I mean, that's what golf does, right? You know, you get out in the nice weather. The day I talked to him at practice, he was like, you know, we wrapped up the interview. He's like, all right, cool, we're done because I got I got a tea time, you know, I got to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that part, you know, you might be thinking, hey, you know, maybe Malik Monk searching for a bigger market. No, it does not seem like that to me at all. Really, the two variables at play i think are like kind of how the season ends which he mentioned you know if this feels like a plateauing situation if they go out in the play-in if he has a bad series and maybe mike's going to somebody else maybe that could change the equation because that's what happens across the league how seasons end uh but then the money one which we which you mentioned 17 ish million is the starting salary top starting salary that the max that the kings can offer um if if and really, I we should also say four for 77, which that sounds a little bit more like a beefy, you know, life changing deal. And they could offer that with raises. Whereas, yeah, maybe if um, Orlando, Detroit, name your name, your cap space team comes in at like four for 100, where it's like 25 a year. Maybe that's just that's too much, too big a gap to not go get. Mm-hmm. But if it's just 20 million, it's four for 80 range, four for 85 compared to four for 77, four for 90 loyalty comfort belief in this roster moving forward let's say they go to the second round they look like they're on the rise malik monk is really good in the playoffs maybe he's like thinking hey i can come and start next season Mm -hmm. yeah i think that could you're not just going to go chase an extra few million and maybe leave you know a place you become comfortable four for 77 doubles his career earnings that we established last year uh yesterday at 36 uh, we feel like we know what the Kings think of Malik Monk. Do we have any idea what the league thinks of him? You know, I think that they they've you know it's mo- it's team by team, right? You know, right. there's really only about like seven teams that could theoretically overpay you know pay him over what the Kings uh, can can get. But I think at 26. Polishing the game, he his game the way he has, the efficiency's gone up, the shooting, but also the playmaking over five assists per game this season. I think his reputation has spiked across the league. And then the other thing that that current NBA free agency markets don't bring is very many impact players. You know, guys now extend. Like not like Fred Van Vliet was like the be- best name on the free agency market last year, if you remember. So he got paid out. Um, you know, Dylan Brooks gets big money because Houston really wants veteran free agents, but nobody's sitting there uh, mm-hmm. anymore. This is not the Durant 2016 days. The Kawhi Leonard gets the free agency days. Like guys just don't get there. So Monk's one of not the, uh, only a handful of names that, you know, teams out there c- can actually obtain. And because they know, you know, you literally can go into the summer knowing what the Kings can and cannot pay him. Mm-hmm. You can try to, you know, you might have to go over the top, but you might be willing to do that. So uh, to a long-winded way of answering your question, like I think because of his age and, and production, uh, he he has a, a, a pretty grand appeal out there. You know what just dawned on me too? I feel like Jamal Mosley and Malik Monk might kill each other. <laughs> Malik but, Monk like, Jamal like Mosley's a giant personality. Yeah, like is. those two, like, like what you just said, like Mike and Malik can go at it. And I think a lot of that has to do Obviously, Malik has a certain disposition that 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 works, but Mike has a, a a disposition where it's easy to clash and then walk away and mm-hmm. like, no, we're fine, right? But we had to have that clash. Jamal might be like, "Yo, see me outside." <laughs> 
Like you just watched Jamal Mosley dur- just during a game. Yeah. And he's tough. Yeah. He's tough. I don't, I don't think the league monk minds a little mind me, uh, meet me outside. Comment. Oh, I don't think I don't he think does he either. Does. I think Jamal. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. That's like, what I mean. Like you talked about Mike Brown's being able to have that interaction and then be like, Hey, we're good. Like, I love you. Not everybody can yeah. do that. Not yeah. everybody can have that interaction and be like, it's all good. They may carry some resentment or whatever. I don't know if Jamal Mosley would, but he, you know, that's another factor. We're just hung up on Orlando, Anthony. That's the team we keep. Y'all talking worried about. about Orlando, I mean, huh? It makes sense. Like, and 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 they don't suck. Like, they're a good basketball no, team. Like, it makes sense. And so, that's we we expect Malik Monk to get cheered uh, on on it was Saturday. A Saturday. Yeah. Oh wow. Is, I mean, <laughs> you, y'all, you guys are probably following it more than me. Does it feel like like the Orlando fan base is like? Oh, they yeah, out there. So like, on, yeah, on every post, like whether yeah, it's a Kings yeah. post, a worldwide wall uh, post, or whatever. I guarantee you every time our Orlando fan is like, Thirsty oh, I can't ass. wait for him to be here. Yeah, Give yeah. him the money. Then all this other stuff. So there, he's on their radar for they sure. Oh, he would. He'd kind of fit, to be okay, honest. Well, okay, down. We don't down, need down, that. Like, no, we understand that. It's kind of unspoken at this point. We yeah. just know that it makes sense. Uh, great work as always, Anthony, man. It's great to catch up with you. We appreciate you. All right, y'all. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, Thank my man. Go. That's Anthony Slater right there of The Athletic. Great stuff. Uh, as always from Ant Man, we gotta make an effort to spend more time with him. Let's uh step out. We'll come back. Uh we'll talk more Kings basketball. We'll talk more Mike Brown. Uh and Mike Brown will talk Keon Ellis when the D Lo and Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Just did one of those James Ham breasts into the mic. Sorry about that, guys. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, there he is. Shout out Daily Sabonis. Excuse me. Daily oh, Sabonis. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Bro, that emphasis was just a little. Where's, did I hear that? Did I hear that? Was I alone? Where's your head at? Emphasis no. was a little. Oh no! No! <laughs> no! Ball start, Kenny Caraway. Wait, Ball start, oh, Kenny Caraway. Hey! A five yard penalty. First and five. Thank uh, Vegas you. Barlings. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I trying... I just hadn't heard. I hadn't heard it that way. Daily Sabonis. I was just trying Look, to get Zabo, some love. Zabo heard it the same no, way. Oh, Twitter account. Get no. out of here with hey. that nonsense. See, throw a flag on Zay too. <laughs> No, <laughs> throw Brian Cruz out of here. <laughs> Y'all look like Draymond Green going after Taylor Jenkins yesterday. God, Poor that Taylor just collapsed. That, God, that therapy worked great for him. <laughs> Goofy ass Draymond Green. When do you guys think the next time they'll talk about Alan West will be? <laughs> <laughs> next time somebody does something stupid. Um, hmm. We're doing a cash giveaway contest during the NBA playoffs. Y'all got any ideas? Y'all got it. We just come up with. We we need a new Charlie. I know you're listening right now. Do not call it the purple and black giveaway. <laughs> do not do that, Charlie. Um, 
We'll think of something, Charlie. I know you're watching at your Jess right now. We'll think of something. Green light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a perfectly fair. Yeah, it's perfectly fair. Oh, right on, man. Yeah, Ant Man is. Anthony's one of the best, man. We always enjoy talking with Anthony Slater. Oh, Caraway's cash giveaway? We could do that. Well, Caraway's cash giveaway. Yeah, it's not my money, so give it's give money, give 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 Kenny's money away. I like yeah. that. You know, broke as a joke, no ends at all. Can't play anyway, ball in my Tim's is small. You ain't broke. I know when you're broke. That's just when you come in angry. Can't I know, buy trees I, with government cheese. I, 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 I know the day after Kenny pays bills. It's a tough day. <laughs> Oh boy. I got a hip I'm, look. I got a hip complex to that day, so he knows not to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ask me to do hey. something else. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, you know what I've been been thinking about? I've been thinking about Tuesday a lot. How I'm gonna approach this. Because there's one way I want to approach it, but I don't know if that's best. <laughs> what's <laughs> what's Tuesday? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, I know how I want to, oh, I was like, yeah. I don't think that's best, man. Yeah, no. The Royalty Rumble Cash Giveaway. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Send it. Send it. I think giving giving away uh, the the the. Uh, Caraway's cash giveaway. Kenny's cash giveaway. Would be I don't even have no money. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Kenny's cash giveaway coming to ESPN 1320. That's I don't a even shoot. have no money. That's a shoot. We got $500 a day to give away. I guess we can't say cash. What? That's what, that's what Ka Kyle is saying. Yeah. Uh, nothing started yet, so we're good. What? I don't uh, know. Kenny's... Money giveaway? Can we, can we, say we can't money? say cash. How, how do you give away cash and you can't say cash? Oh, because it's not cash. Oh. Money? Well, Jesus. Kenny's like people... currency giveaway. <laughs> 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 that's the shoot, though. We are doing a cash giveaway, so stay locked in. I think that starts next month. We got a lot going on. As a matter of fact, where, yeah, where are we at? Where where's, we at? That, where's, where's that book Charlie wrote us? Charlie wrote a book for us to read. Yeah, I got, well, I got one. Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, Charlie, could you give us a little rundown of what we got coming up the next few days? This is what Charlie There's hands a lot us. Popping it's off. Like, Char Charlie, no, there is absolutely a lot happening. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Comes wait. with a script and everything. It does. Isn't that Eastern? Michelob Balcher is rocking with us. What's Eastern? Easter. Next week, I believe. Yeah. March 30th. Well, yeah, but that's not us. But why did. Well, okay. Oh. It's not my business. Well, James and Kyle <laughs> don't celebrate Easter, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know, well, but all right. Well, I'm spend, just looking out spend for Easter them. Sunday with the insiders. Come on, man. <laughs> what, what, what What's wrong boy, with that? What did your boy say that time? What did your boy Kevin Arliss say? <laughs> Back from the dead on Easter Sunday. <laughs> One of the great calls of all time. <laughs> Shout out Kevin Harlan, man. It's called yeah. the 30th is a Saturday as well, not a Sunday. That's okay. So that's what I, I thought Easter was on the 31st. I thought so, but yeah. Oh, okay, well, oh, yeah. oh, hang Char out. Oh, Charlie, it says Sunday, March 31st. That's wrong. It's Saturday, March or, or uh, Sunday, March 30th. Yeah, that's not a real day. No, it's Saturday, Saturday March 30th. Yeah, it's all right, Charlie. We got you. The it's insiders, good. the insiders are going to be at uh Players Pub that day. It's a good look. So, you cannot, in fact, spend Easter with the insiders. Players, pl players oh. Pub sound like sound like it pop off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it pop off. I used to watch there. W. I've watched WWE back WWF pay per views there before. I think that's the place where I've watched a number of boxing pay per views. I watched um, Andre Ward and Kovalev. I think this is the same place. I don't remember the name, but I think it's the same place. Uh, if they're showing pay per views like that, then yeah, I probably did. I watched like three boxing fights there. It's a cool place. I think. Uh, we'll keep you updated on all these watch parties. So they start next week on March 28th. Uh, we're going to be out at Bar West. 
Mm -hmm. uh, same place we were for that 49ers Eagles game mm -hmm. um, during the regular season. Uh, but yeah, March 28th, immediately following this show, uh, we'll be out at Bar West to watch some NCAA tournament action, uh, courtesy of our friends over at Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. We've been rocking with Michelob Ultra yeah, for a couple people. years now. Yeah. Uh, so we appreciate that. Um, so a lot going on, of course, NCAA tournament action immediately following today's show as well. Also, uh, today, tonight, following all the first round action, the day yep. one action. Yep. Tune over, turn, tune to CBS 13. <laughs> I think we got a winner. Uh -oh. We got it. We got a winner. Oh, hey, no. Are right, you ready? You want, you want to say it? No, yeah, you yeah. got it. All you right, got right. it. I don't want to steal your heat. It's not my heat. It's Cobb. It's Kyle Masters heat. The fastest growing giveaway in Sacramento. Come on, man. There it is. Run it. There it is. Run it. The fastest growing Run giveaway it. in Sacramento starts during the NBA playoffs. And it's actually going to be fast and growing. I like that. Well, that feels like a flag, but I, I don't I don't I'll take know. the flag on myself. Yeah, okay. I'll take the flag on myself. Unnecessary yeah, roughness. Be, oh, the fastest uh, growing yeah. giveaway in Sacramento. Hey, this is Charlie. Yeah, if get, Charlie needs to green light that one. Yeah, hey, this, is, this is your fault, by the way. Charlie needs to green light that one right there. Is this, is this contest exclusive? <laughs> oh, this contest. It, yeah, it because call it that if you want. Exclusive means no one else has it. So that's a shoot. That's that that that's actually fact. Some people like I, I don't know. Not everybody graduated, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, but we've been we've been fumbling a little bit. So oh, I, I, I interrupted on, man, you. Man. Come on, y'all wild. Man. I interrupted you. <laughs> this is your announce. fault, man. This is your fault. <laughs> the fastest growing giveaway in Sacramento, which is the that's the that's the leader in the clubhouse right now for our for our cash giveaway. Um <laughs> You're on you're on TV tonight. I'm on TV, man, for uh in Sports studio. Action. Yeah, yeah. Did you do what we talked about yesterday? I didn't. I don't have time. I don't ever have time. You gotta ever, get there. Ever, get ever. there before you go in. It's not gonna happen. I don't have time. Time. There's never any time. That's a good reference right there. That's good. That's good. Kyle, did you pick up on what that was? I don't know if Kyle was. No, outside, Kyle, no, 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 Kyle. Kyle, the, Kyle, speaker, Kyle you the, speaker, did. the speaker was down. Say it again. Try it again. Time. There's never any time. You gonna get the Saved by the Bell reference? All right, that's fine. I don't have time to do my hair. No. I don't have time to study for test. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Everything will be fine. I just have to take one of these. Everything will be fine. Wait, wait, you really are taking drugs? Jesse, no. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. I need them, Zach. I need them. I can sing. You cannot sing. You cannot sing. I can't sing. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. I'm done. I'm done. This show's over. I don't want to no part of this anymore. That's why he's the goat. That's why he's the goat. Oh, Jesse. You remember that time we had to ride our bikes home after going to the drive-in and it was really dark and scary? We were scared, but we made it. We'll make it through this too. Scene. <laughs> that's incredible. And it's, 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 it's one of the great episodes in, in TV history. Oh, that reminds you, when, when Damien comes in, I don't know if you listen, I'm gonna step all over my uh, Casey's corner for the day. This kind of blew my mind, but yes, I mean, the, I'm so excited. Episode, come on, man. No, Death Have Nemesis, you... like saying in the chat, what's going on? Honestly, it's 1 30 right now in the <laughs> middle of the <this> show, bro. <laughs> what a great, I mean, I've probably seen that episode 10 times at least. I might have seen every Saved by the Bell episode 10 times. Yeah, you, it's goat stuff. Both are going to be very happy. That I committed to that bit the way that I did. Bro, we just have Michael Scott doing an SVU episode for his audition on D Lo and KC. <laughs> I love my job. Speaking of hey. TV, speaking of TV, I meant I meant to tell you, did you listen to my KC's corner today? I'll step on it I, a little bit. I, I didn't. I I I I got I got so this it. Is, into this the is even better. A little late. This is even better. Did you see what they're doing a reboot for? An animated reboot? No. Good times. Stop it. On Netflix. Is it Kenny Bears? It's not. It's oh. Seth MacFarlane. No. <laughs> hey, so, okay, you, you both are going to be happy I did this. 
y'all know how this show works. Yeah. Get up, go to the kitchen right now. Oh, or snap. it's all gonna be gone. Yeah, hey, go to the I'm kitchen right now. Out. All three. I of already you. know what that means. Yeah. The tribal no, team, huh? I th- no, no, no. I it's I, th- I don't know what it is, but it looked fire. Go, go, go. Take care of business. Goodness gracious, I love. I I literally sent the producers and the co-hosts out there. Meanwhile, I can't hit play on the Mike Brown sound we have right here. Jesse has to do it, so I have to wait for Jesse to get back. So that might have backfired because I thought I'll just run this Mike Brown sound. Who, oh, Mike is, was was just absolutely raving uh, about Keon Ellis yesterday. He also talked about, and I don't know that we'll, I don't know that we'll get to this. Uh, part of the sound uh, from Mike because uh, he talked uh, quite a bit yesterday after the he he talked for a, a good deal of time yesterday after the the Raptors win. But he's talking about Domas, and that's kind of a thing that we've got a. He's like, I don't. It really is a shame that Domas isn't getting the recognition he deserves. He's having a historic season, and I can't remember the last time. Like I remember when. When Russ, you got, you know how much I love Russell Westbrook. Like, I remember when Russ was having that season, and there were haters who tried to like downplay it. But in the end, everybody knew what they were seeing, right? Everybody knew we're seeing something most of us haven't seen in our lifetime. And even if we have, it's something we haven't seen in a really, really, really long time. But what we're seeing from DeMontis Sabonis right now is maybe it's not a one of one, but it's, not something you see regularly. And listening to, you know, because I think Anthony Slater gave us a very honest answer to that ask, uh, question when we asked, hey, why, 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 don't, why don't people like DeMontis Sabonis? Why do, I asked him, why do people hate DeMontis Sabonis? And it's talking about a playoff series? Yo, what the hell does that have to do with any, like, what, does a playoff series have to do with what DeMontis Sabonis is doing right now? That doesn't check out. It doesn't make any sense. He's having a historic season and it's getting brushed aside. What are we talking about? I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. looking. Oh, Good looking, okay. big dog. Good All right. looking. Good looking. All right. Yeah, that was solid. Shout, right hey, shout out. I got you. Shout out Kiki's. Shout oh, out that's Kiki's. Kiki's, that's Kiki's yeah. doing oh, what they do. That's hey, Kiki's salute. doing what they do. Yeah, Kiki's is. Kiki's is on point. Absolutely, I might, I might yeah. have to, to to step out there. You need and, to go right now. I can, no, 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 I can do no, say no, about no, about again. No, well, th- okay, definitely not. <laughs> Though that was arguably one of the run of the <laughs> one of the great moments in show history, I believe, because I don't think I was fully prepared for you to commit to that as much as you did. Uh, but it was pretty flawless. And then See, Jesse, you feel it, you feel it. Then Jesse following it up with the Office Law and Order Michael Scott. <laughs> no, wait reference. a minute. What he auditioned for Law and Order? No, he auditioned for a play. And <laughs> he, 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 his, he auditioned for Sweeney Todd. Yeah, and so his audition <laughs> was he reenacted an entire <laughs> Law and Order episode by himself. Law and Order. I'm dead. I got to get to that show. Yeah, one day. You can't even get to Sephora to get some makeup for tonight. I, I, once again, never any time. I understand, but you're going to need to get there. I know. I you're know. Need, Maybe it, Jazz has get, some at get the, the house. Get, the, get the, the foundation stuff, and then you know Sarah and Jake could help you get the powder right before you go I'm on. A, I'm going to ask. Because that's ask really you. what you need is the powder to lighten up the them lights. is going to be tough. I do. I mean, I do have a wife. So I'm going to ask her. I'm like, what? You do have a wife. How can you? How can you help, help me, me out. with this right now? You're a little, you're a little darker than Jasmine. Though. That stuff. I'm a matters. lot dark. Well, I should probably shouldn't. She'd be mad if I said that because she mm-hmm. says she's dark skin. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, Jasmine. <laughs> okay, Jasmine, settle down. <laughs> but that stuff matters. So maybe maybe the powder will help. Maybe you stay away from the foundation, but the powder will help. ESPN 1320, your makeup tutorial there channel. There we go. Hey, can we pull up that Mike Brown sound while you guys are getting into Kiki's? This is uh, Mike talking about Keon Ellis last night uh, following the Kings' uh, easy victory in Toronto. Well, what do you make of Keon's ability to, to have so many deflections and steals and block shots? And what is it about his mindset and or his skill set that allows him to do that? I, <clears throat> I was talking to one of my coaches a couple of days ago, and I was trying to figure out who he reminds me of defensively. And I don't, I'm not sure yet. He, his his skill set is unique. He's, 
His arms are a lot longer than what you think. Meet Bob. Bob just oh, got no. his back for him. That's right. It's that time of the year. That's terrific. No, I wanted to meet Bob. Struggle through what the tax mains or procrastinate until the well, deadline. Well, but wait, can't do that. Bob remembers freetaxusa.com. Yeah. Oh, to the internet. Well, that's good. With just a few clicks, Bob's tax navigating tax waters oh. like a pro. It's terrific. Yeah, his anticipation and his feel for a young guy, never been around it. Not, not for a second-year guy that played in the G League his whole first year and got limited minutes so far. I. I I I've I've been in the league 37 years and I I can't fully grasp it, grasp it because he's so young but he plays like an old soul <clears throat> and his feel is like an old soul but he's probably a little bit quicker than you think a little bit more athletic than you think arms are a little longer than you think and his feel anticipation hands it's early but they m might be second to nobody i you know I, i'm not sure so it's gonna take some time for me to really figure that figure him out but he's doing he's doing a hell of a job for us you With know what mike means. looks like mike mike is like a guy who thinks he just found the perfect girl <laughs> right like he he he's got this new girl and she's nice and she's beautiful and she can cook and she's successful and he just wants to tell all of his friends about her <laughs> like that's mike right now he is telling all of his friends about his new girlfriend that's 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 what that's what mike looks like when he's talking about keon and and you know you're spot on you know what mike also looks like and sounds like Sounds like he had an epiphany. <laughs> sounds like he, had, he sounds yeah. like he had the same yeah. epiphany. And he's trying to control. He's trying yeah. to be like, look, man, I don't know. But this all everything that he's talking about with Keon Ellis, it carries so much more weight for me coming from Mike Brown. Because number one, he's a defensive guy. He's very critical of defensive play from individuals in the team. And with that, he's he's seen it all. This guy, we, Anthony Slater just talked about, like some of the guys he's coached, the, the some of the defensive players he's coached. He's coached Ron Artest. He's mm -hmm. coached Kobe. He's coached mm -hmm. Draymond Green and all this other stuff. And the the excitement that he can barely contain <laughs> about what he's seeing from Keon Ellis, it really feels like he's trying to like play it slow. Like I'm not I'm not going to rush the judgment. I'm not going to put too much on this kid's uh you know on his game and everything else like that to to be disrespectful to the other greats that I have coached but unbelievably impressed with what I'm seeing he he looks like he's had an epiphany with Keon Ellis that's funny I didn't think about that but that is exactly <laughs> what it looks like uh he had an epiphany are the Kings playing better defensively like is it our imagination or are they really better defensively the numbers say they are now, take with that what you want. I mean, the numbers said they were terrible. Well, you can't year. ride the numbers when you say that they're terrible, or and, and then ride the and then ignore the numbers when it says that they're better. Right, and that that's you right. can't pick and choose and, when numbers matter. And and unless and, it's a plus minus, then then well, that's exactly that when just, you pick and choose. Oop, that to the sky. But um, but um, I, I'm I'm the opposite end of it, right? So because I the Kings were 29th in defense, I'm like. <laughs> They're not as bad a defense as everybody says they are, or the numbers indicate, right? So now that the numbers have risen, maybe I can't just be like, see, look at the numbers. You know what I mean? But I do think they're a better defensive team. I think a lot of that has to do with Keon. I, James Ham said something that was great and perfect one time, and he was right. said it often, but this particular case, he talked about one of the benefits to – maybe not having Kevin Herter in there is one less shooter on the floor to start the game and mm. one more person that isn't looking for a shot. Yeah. He's setting the groundwork. Well, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. He's setting the groundwork for what, by the way, there were, there was quiet, noise yesterday that we might have an update on Kevin, like an official mm. from Sacramento update on mm. Kevin Herter today. Mm. We learned from multiple different people. Chris Biederman, I think, was the first one to report it. We 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 said it on this show, 
Biederman, who's out there uh, 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 traveling with the team, uh, tweeted it uh, as well that Kevin Herter is not on this road trip. Mm -hmm. And um, we also heard that there there should be an update today from the Sacramento Kings on Kevin Herter. Got it. I feel like the fact that we he might be able to return, just given the yeah. little bit that we know, yeah. uh, he might be able to return at some point. And I think what Mike is doing is is setting things up for if that return comes, hey, here's what we're doing moving forward. And we talked about, and I don't, I again, I don't want to change our tune. I think we were we were both. There's not a starting lineup change coming, mm -hmm. not at this stage of the season. It could create too many complications give kevin a chance and you know you got Keon right there mm -hmm. when you need to the the injury unfortunately eliminated that mm -hmm. now you've made the switch now you know what it looks like and now when kevin comes back it's like hey here's what we're doing and here's why we think it's best yeah. and we have a sample size now to show us we think this could really really work for you because look what it's doing for domas at the start of games, look what it's doing for De'Aaron. Look when we have Malik out there. We think you can benefit from this, and this is how we're going to go attack. Hope you know whatever the postseason looks like for Sacramento. Spot on, spot on, and it it, it does it does feel like it balances things out. And I mean, you could look at. I think Harrison's a good example of that. You know, when there's five offensive guys out there, I think it can work. I'm not like I said. I'm not going back on how I felt. I mm -hmm. think it can work, mm -hmm. but. I do understand the thought process of maybe you can be even better offensively with four offensive guys and, and be a better team because you got that one defender. And here's the thing about it. Keon Ellis isn't um what, what was my man's name? Anthony Roverson. He's mm -hmm. not he's not yeah. him. You know, right. all due respect to him, but he he was literally defense only, Tony Allen, defense only leave him open. Andrew Bogut, you can guard Tony Allen and help because he's not, that's not who Keon is. You leave Keon o open, he's going to knock down an open three. He's going to knock down a contested three. He's mm -hmm. going to get out and transition and do things. So he's still able to help on the offensive end, but his defense is just, it, it's getting more and more impressive by the game. Yeah, and his value to this team is increasing by the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love the idea. There's Mike Brown having an epiphany. <laughs> Mike Brown having an epiphany, uh, talking about his new love, uh, Keon Ellis. I love it, man. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it because another thing Mike did when he, before he started taking questions, was he sat down. And it's not often that Mike talks about. Yeah, we made shots tonight. Uh, you know, the three ball was really dropping for us. Not that he ignores it. He certainly does. But when he started that press conference after the game yesterday, he talked about what you brought up earlier. The four stops to end the first half mm -hmm. and the three stops to start the second half. That completely changed the game. It went from the Kings are in control to immediately after halftime, this game is over. Mm -hmm. And the second part of that is the shot making. You can get stops, but if you're not scoring, the lead's not changing. Right. He didn't reference the shots. Right. He didn't reference none of that. We got four stops to end the first half, three stops to start the second half, and that changed the game. Mm -hmm. Mike is all about defense, and that's what he's going to praise when he gets the opportunity to, and that's what he was praying, uh, praising yesterday. Yeah. Straight up. I got another question as it pertains to this team. Um, it involves Keon, Keegan, and De'Aaron. We'll talk about it. Uh, we'll talk more about what happened uh, around the league as well. And uh, as you said, bit, job's not done. No. Kings got business to take care of tonight in the nation's capital. We'll talk with Will Z uh, about tonight's game. Uh, and we'll talk with you. Uh, Jamil, we see you. Hang tight. 916-909-1320. Steven McKay Brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. I got to watch out for y'all. I ain't even going to be, you can hear me. I ain't going to be eating this chicken on camera. No. You know, doc, <laughs> Dr. David will cut it. Speaking of, uh, speaking of, of, of 
just have you followed that thread of what's the craziest thing ever said in an interview? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, pretty good so far. Oh my! God. I don't think I have. And there's there's one that I I got uh, Beanie Siegel. He said, "I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to even play the audio here. It, it's a, it's crazy." You see, Ka- you see Cameron talking about living next to the serial killer. No. So he's like, "Yes, yeah. so you wouldn't call the police." Like, yeah, I'm not going to be like, "Hey, he's in apartment 30 or whatever. I'm going to move though." <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he said that. I remember when he said that. So look, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm just gonna sit it. If you guys want to uh, play the audio during the break, I mean, technically you can't, but this is just wild. This is wild. Did he see the wild? Bro. Okay, Benny. Well, all right. I don't. Okay. Thank you. I don't. I don't know why he felt the need to share that. Let's salute. Man, that thread is maybe the best one of 2024. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, man. Avery's in Omaha today. Oh, see if he references Buddy Hield, Ramsey. Who's in Omaha? A- Avery Johnson. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Here, uh, Dr. David, all... Uh, I'll uh I'm not gonna retweet the Benny Siegel clip, but I'll retweet the thread so you could find it. So I just retweeted it for anyone who wanted to find that uh craziest thing said in interviews. And it's like the quote tweets are at like twenty five thousand. Like that that yeah, everybody's clipping clipping their favorite interview. They got magic on there. Oh boy. <laughs> I had to look up the word post haste today. Po- po- post 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 haste what does it mean it was like- kyle kyle responded to an email i will figure out how to do this and start doing it post haste and i thought it was a typo so i looked up the word and i guess it means quickly could have just said quickly bro kyle's kyle's vocabulary is I think it's like a shakespeare like, word um, or something it's um clive fraser like kyle be yeah kyle be showing off Clyde Fraser, like he said, this, that's that's State education. No, it's fire. Stingers up. Stingers up, baby. Stingers up. Oh, tank tickets next week. Was tank maybe I deserved? That was tank, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe I deserve. Maybe I deserve when we mm-hmm. don't go. Come on, bro. You the say I'm tripping, just a homie from upstate. Don't he know it's one o'clock in the morning.
Yo, Indian Charlemagne got a couple of them joints. Yeah, I was gonna say, in which one? <laughs> okay. Hey, I just need to say this real quick. There's a number of different people listening all over the city right now because we are the number one sports show in the city. Right now, as I look here, there's about 945 people watching on YouTube and Twitter and Twitch. Yo, this Kiki's is bomb. Kiki's did this. Yeah, Kiki's. I got some of these chicken wings. Mm -hmm. I got some of these fries. I think they're like barbecue covered fry, barbecue and chicken covered mm -hmm. fry. I mean, bomb. Yeah, their they're loaded bomb. fries and their tater tots are phenomenal. Come on, man. Kiki's, let's work. You got to go. This is my meal. I go, I get the, the fries or whatever. You got to get the little mini chicken sandwich on the side or whatever, the little slider, and then you pink lemonade. Create. You can create. I keep pink it lemonade. simple, man. I, well, I like their burgers, too. But I keep it simple. I'll just get the wings. And, I, you know, I don't do a whole lot of, like, flavor and stuff yeah, yeah. on the fries. I just keep the regular it's fries. a lot of flavor. That's a wild thing. <laughs> but I know what you meant. They load their fries up with sauces yeah. and all of that. These are bomb, though. Yeah, yeah. This barbecue chicken, whatever. I, I don't know the name of it because it was just out in the lobby, but I'll get these again. Fire. Yeah, Kiki's, we need to work. Like, I know we work. Mm -hmm. I know it might be stereotypical, but, like, Kiki should be on board with you. <laughs> okay, see? Yeah, let's <laughs> figure it out. Like I said, there's a 1,000 people watching right now. Countless others listening right now. They need to know this stuff. Yeah, Kiki's is on point for sure. Uh, and it smells incredible. Um, I had said something. Oh, oh, I remember what it was. Let's get to Jamil first. He's been waiting patiently. 916-909-1320 if you want to talk with us. Jamil, what up, baby? What's up, boys? What's up, boys? Hey, real What's quick, up, my guy? Seconds. I'm on the clock. Hey, see, you be killing me, man. <laughs> You be killing me. How do you know that whole reenactment to Saved by the Bell? Which I remember that that episode perfectly. By Everybody the way, does. How do, hey, how do you not know that there's a Back to the Future one? Uh, <laughs> look, hey, hey, hey was, Back to the Future one. Look, look, hey, back, back hey, to the Future one. Didn't come on every day for two straight hours between TBS and and WGN. That's how I know Saved by the Bell and not hey, Back to the around, Future one. Around the same time era, though. Around the same time, right? Though, so you don't get no pass. Man. Jamil, no, no Jamil, pass. I don't think you understand. It's 105 <laughs> degrees in Sacramento in the summer. I'm at my grandmother's no. house. No. Two o'clock to three o'clock was TBS. No. Three o'clock to four o'clock was WGN. Saved by the Bell for yeah. two straight hours every no. single day. Now nah, Jamil still win. That's a good. That's a good call right there. That's <laughs> a good call right see there. Back to the future really one. Back, back to basketball though. Back. I'm about to get cut off by Jesse. Hey, let's give some <laughs> shout out. To Monty McNair because apparently he has an art to spot guys like Keon Ellis. Mm. If you guys go back to and I, and I keep saying it, you guys go back to his to his Houston, you know, debut when he was with Houston, they had a certain art to finding guys like Keon Ellis to plug in to what the team is missing. If y'all remember that Houston team, he put the, the team together good. It's yeah. the guys that didn't play well. Remember Harden, I think, went with the hammy, Chris Paul with the ankle. I mean, they just started unraveling. Monty McNair is going to put this team together well. You guys got to believe that. Just keep on believing. That was my purpose of this call. Love y'all. Y'all have a good one, man. Love you back, my bro. And that's, and that's a great call, man. Um, it, it, <laughs> there's a lot of great stuff in there. But the, <laughs> over, the, the, the overarching point is we go up and down so much through the course of a regular season. And we try to dumb this down. And we try not to make it a... Uh, a cop out but when 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 trade deadlines come and go when when free agencies come and go and and you don't land exactly what you hoped or exactly what we talked about or exactly what was reported or different things like that you've got to make a decision do you trust Monty McNair or not and it really is as simple as that you could be critical of his decisions you could be critical of of you know of, of things he may be doing or not doing as long as you have the full complement of information but you either trust him or you don't I don't like James Harden. I never have. I don't think I ever will. But I'm not going to talk like they weren't a championship team. Mm -hmm. That was a championship caliber team right there in Houston. Yeah. And they acquiesced quite a bit to what James Harden wanted. And I know the number one thing that I learned from Jill Ash during the general manager search process, even before Sacramento hired Monty McNair, is Monty works really, really close with the coaching staff mm -hmm. in Houston. He was working really, really closely with Mike D'Antoni. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I think Daryl Morey was working really, really close with James Harden, Mm -hmm. which is why we saw some of the things we saw, I think, with Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook and so on. But we can't pretend like that wasn't a championship caliber team. Uh, And you look at um, a guy like the guy that comes to my mind when I I hear calls like Jamil and what they talk about in Houston, uh, like a guy like Daniel House. Daniel Mm. House, the years they were – you know, the one or two years they were like legit championship contenders was a guy that got off the scrap heap and was major for them. I want to look at, at the, at his history, but I feel like, feel like PJ Tucker wasn't really PJ Tucker before he got to Houston. You know, he really blossomed in that role in Houston and made a career for himself because of what found him. I mean, he was, uh, you know, much heralded coming out of Texas and high school and stuff like that. But he was trying to find his way in the league. And Monty and um, Daryl Morey found him and put him in a position to to be successful. Clint Capella, nobody kind of knew where he came from before they found a way to incorporate him. So to Jamil's point, um, Monty, you know, whether it was his direct move or he helped or he scouted or whatever the case may be, he has experience and being able to find these guys. And I, I think um, it's no coincidence that they found uh, Keon Ellis the way they did at, after the draft was over and also said, hey, let's commit to this guy. This was before we're talking about Ellis Island and everything else like that. I know he played well earlier in the season, but it wasn't this. But they still said, you know what? No, let's let's lock him up because we think he's capable of, of playing a big role with this squad. And now look what he's doing. He's one of the best stories uh, of this Kings season this year. Do the Kings have three legitimate defenders now? You talk about Keon, and we've seen, you know, Keegan's phenomenal growth. By the way, it's shame on us. Keegan played really well yesterday. Keegan's not shooting particularly great, Mm -hmm. but... He's playing really well, like he's doing other things uh, out there on the floor. But when you talk about legitimate defenders, it felt like months ago this team had zero. Mm. But you look at the growth Keon Keegan has made. You look at the growth De'Aaron has made on the defensive end. And now you add Keon Ellis to this mix. Suddenly it feels like you've got some guys in a Kings uniform that can defend. Absolutely. And defend at a high level. And, and it's, it's paying off with what we're seeing on the court and numbers wise. I think this team, the I saw our guy, uh, CK McClatchy legend, K Flipman, was on Twitter talking about this team is now 15th in the league in defensive rating. Mm. They started March at 20th. So they were able to climb up to, to 15 at that point, And then they expand on that a little bit more. Their top five, since like the beginning of March. So let's 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 put that into a little bit perspective because we're coming off the Raptors game and I don't want this to be made about the Raptors. Mm-hmm. The Timberwolves, they played in March, mm-hmm. the Lakers twice, the Milwaukee Bucks, uh the Knicks are thrilled with the you know they, the, 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 <laughs> those types of games, right. <laughs> exactly. Um but they've played some heavy hitters. They played I mean the the T-Wolves they might, I don't know if they're a division leader at this exact second but they're pretty close to it. The Milwaukee Bucks are, are are not at the top of the Eastern Conference, but they're they're pretty close to it. You got the Los Angeles Lakers, who you, you can't turn on the TV without hearing about the Lakers for forty five minutes, despite the fact they're like a ten seed. But fine, whatever. <laughs> like you 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 knock those teams off. That's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Absolutely. It's not just about what they did against the Toronto Raptors last night. It's about what they've done over the course of the last twenty one days. One hundred percent. Good stuff. Fifteenth, huh? What what's been the rallying called? Just be average on defense. Just be average. Well, and look. Well, the, the crazy thing about that, they're seven and three since mm-hmm. March first, mm-hmm. and I feel like the offense has gone up. So this is one of the things we talked about. They can maintain the offense and get better in defense. It's a relatively small sample size, but we're looking at a team that plays at a seven hundred clip. Yeah, just a quick, just a quick glance. 124, uh, 109 in a loss. 130, 131, uh, 104, 129, 120, 91, 121, and 123. Mm. Those are the points scored this month. Mm. I think you're absolutely right. Um, 
not just the amount of points that they're scoring, but what I think is most important to Mike, because it's it, it seems like whenever questions about this team come into play after a loss, one of the first things he brings up after bringing up defense is pace. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, like you see when this team is playing the way Mike wants them to. Yeah. Make or miss, they're running up the floor. We go back to, I think it was the first Lakers game this month. The, there were there were five minutes left. The Kings were still running. They were still pushing the ball up the floor at the same exact pace that they were in the in the in the first quarter of the game. And you could see as they were pushing, 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 and the clock started to wind down. Lakers get a couple baskets. LeBron, specifically, LeBron get a couple of baskets. The Lakers think they got life. LeBron snarling at the camera. <laughs> Kings come down, push the pace, hit a three, and you can see their body language change. Mm-hmm. Like we can't stop this. Right. And the Kings have the ability, when they're operating like this, to deflate teams Mm -hmm. in those runs. And I think what's happened in the past when we talk about them kind of falling apart, you know, being able to get a big lead on a team yesterday Mm -hmm. and then put them away as compared to getting a big lead on a team and letting it disappear, a lot of times the tempo of the game changes. And it's like, well, we're up 20, let's slow things down they uh, appear to have gotten out of that habit where we're up 10, we're running, we're up 20, we're running. Mm -hmm. The, the lead drops to 10. We're continuing to run. We're not trying to slow this game down. We're we're going to continue to play at the pace that we believe will beat everybody else. This may sound strange to, to hear and to say, considering what's the one thing everybody always talks about this team but I still don't think they get enough credit for being devastating offensively. This is, I this, yeah. This is a top offensive team. But I think I know why game. that is. Why do you think it is? Because everybody else is doing it. Mm. It's part of the reason I think these people are diminishing Domas. Mm. It's because they don't compare Domas to the rest of the league. They compare him to Jokic. Like you're literally comparing him to one other guy while ignoring every other center or player mm-hmm. in the league. It's like, well, Jokic does it. So, okay. That's so Jokic person. and Domas do it. Like, there's two <laughs> in the entire league that do what they're doing. Right. And y'all have gushed three straight years, four straight years, five straight years over Nikola Jokic. Why aren't you gushing over? Everyone was gushing. And here's the reason I say that. Everyone was gushing over the Kings offense last year. They said it wouldn't translate. They said it wouldn't matter once the playoffs got here. Mm-hmm. Now everyone's doing it. Mm-hmm. And, oh, well, oh, we've seen that. Oh, now it's a problem. Now because it was not just the Sacramento Kings that are doing this, the Indiana Pacers that are doing this, these other teams, it's Oklahoma City. There's no, well, now it's a problem. Now the league's sending out memos like, oh, this is offense. <laughs> it's gotten out of control in the NBA. That's why. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point, man. It's a great point. I just, I think, I think people lose sight of that. You know, when they talk about the Kings, when they talk yeah, I don't about disagree. Um, who they are and what they could be, I think they, you know, they just kind of look at it like, oh, the Kings can score. No, this is one of the most dynamic, potentially devastating scoring teams in the game. Mm-hmm. And they're eighth in the league in scoring. Like, I don't know the offensive rating, but eighth in, in points per game. But I still think it gets gets overlooked. Boston's averaging 121 and I don't like 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 and, and that's the the other Boston's 55 and 14 there are 11 games ahead of Milwaukee mm. who acquired Dame Lillard in the offseason mm-hmm. no one cares it doesn't fit their storylines which is amazing because it's the Boston Celtics right no one's got nothing to say about what they're doing on the offensive end and defensive end their plus minus differential or their or their point differential is eleven point five. I believe mm. that's fifth all time. Mm. All time? Yeah, it's oh right God. right behind the 2017 Warriors. Um, but they play the Pistons next, I think. So we'll see. Jeez. Wow. 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 That's crazy. These, that is. It, it, they're they're having they're having one of the great seasons of all time. It's, yeah, it's only... a historically great season. If you look at the stats and the numbers and all, I get like why they're not talking about Boston. Just kind of. I went to the 49ers is more so you're there every year, win it finally or something like that. But as far as the season goes, yeah, they're historically great. There is no other 
double digit point differential in the entire league. Mm. Just Boston. And what's theirs? 11.5. Boston, I think, is the top scoring offense in the league. They are. Or no, Indiana still is. Well, yeah. points per game. Yeah, points per game. I'm sorry. You're right. Indiana still is. I'm sorry. I Could be the now. first round matchup, too, right there. They're going to beat the brakes off Indiana. Indiana beat them, what, three times this year? I think three times. No, nah, maybe just twice because they, they lost both games. Indiana beat the Bucs and the Celtics a bunch of times? I think you might be getting yeah. confused with the Bucs. I they, beat, they beat Boston twice. They beat them both both times in 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 Indiana. Then it's two and one. They beat thing. them in the in the in season tournament. Okay, yeah. Then I think it's like two one because Boston beat them by like fifty or something like they that. Beat they beat them by fifty in Boston. Boston. And then another game on TNT, they beat them. But I don't think they beat them in Indiana. Well, one of the no, because one of the games was the um, the one where Tyrese got hurt in the Jalen Brown game, where they reversed the call or something like that. And the Celtics lost. And another one was the in-season tournament game. Mm. And I think they've had another one in Indiana that they – I don't know if they won or not. Right, the season series is Boston 3, Indiana 2. Mm. Okay. 3 to 2. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, they they played first round uh, in-season tournament. That got Indiana to Vegas. It was right before the Kings That was game. against Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay. Point being, Boston will beat the brakes off Indiana in the playoffs. They won't. Indiana won't win two games. I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. But the Celtics are like a week away from, maybe not even a week away from clinching the one seed. Right? Magic number is three. Yeah, it's March. For that's the that's insane. For the one seed, Magic number is three. There's that's 13 insane. games left. They um and they're. They're probably not far away from – if it's three, then it might be like five for the overall one seed, right? I'm assuming so. I don't know. Denver's pipe, record yeah, can't be that much different than well, it's Milwaukee's. Not, yeah, it's not Denver, though. It's or Oklahoma OKC. City. Well, well, yeah. It's, it's, they both, they're both at 48 wins. Yeah, again, so there's the other thing. They're, those two teams are at 48 wins. Minnesota's at 47. Boston's at 55. Mm. Wow. Kings got to play them. Hopefully, they clinch everything before the Kings play them. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Clinch everything. Put that'd Peyton nice. Pritchard out there, yeah. and yeah. and uh, who's your boy, the Green Cornet? Oh yeah, the Green Cornet. Shout out Luke Cornet. Yeah, put it, put he got, his, he got his spot back. Give uh, <laughs> best Luke in the NBA. Oh, oh, you're. I'm sorry. Come you're on, right. Man. You're what right. Did, what did my man Luke do to anybody, man? You're right. That was unnecessary. Come on now. I apologize. I apologize. Shout out Luke, man. Luke going to the playoffs. He is. But he yeah, might he's be. fighting for it. Huh. <laughs> That's my favorite like side story of Dylan Casey right now. His buddy getting to the playoffs. I don't think it happens either. Do you think there. he's sitting at home kind of like, like, wow, I really might miss it again. I thought this it's, was going to be the spot. I, I can't. I can't. And he's a free agent this year? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, that'd be tough. How are you going to sign a guy to a big money contract <laughs> who's never made the playoffs? He's, he's going to be in Charlotte next year, I think. Something like oh, that. Oh, and you know what? He'd he'd be living it up. Hey, I think he'd do well in Orlando. Detroit pays Buddy Hill. Hey, yeah, yeah. Say, no, yes. 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 I think he'd do well in Orlando. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. Flamethrower. That's 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 facts. That's the missing piece for Orlando. <laughs> Shavano. I like it. Where's Jacoby at? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good call right he there. Do, he do really well in Orlando. Jamal Mosley, he's a good guy to coach. Yep. Easy to coach. He, I, all jokes aside, it seems like he's been pretty nice in Philly and Indiana. He well, wasn't he a had, problem well, he had, he had, in Sacramento. He just had a diluted sense of reality. Do you think NBC, I think he still has that diluted <laughs> sense of reality. Do you think NBC still has that Buddy Hilde graphic? Maybe we can borrow it. It's a good call. He's we'll been on the Saturday. Second best. <laughs> Yeah. Or Monday, excuse me. He's been the second best three point shooter uh, in the league uh, behind Steph Curry since uh, they, March 19th. I was just seeing if maybe they would play. No, they're not going to play. Who's they? The Sixers and the, the Mavericks and the Magic in the playoffs. Oh. But that wouldn't happen. So maybe that's for the best, too. Uh, Orlando, man, if Orlando really wants to go to the next level, 
They should use all of their off-season resources to go get Buddy Heald. That's Honestly, we use the Tyrese trade as more ammo, too. Just kind of like, look at, we were so dumb. We traded Sabonis for Tyrese, and then we also traded Buddy Heald as well. Like, look at us. Oh, gosh. We're idiots. Yeah. Yeah, we're dumb. Yeah. Go, go get them, guys. Play them the Jalen and Jacoby clip. That's on Come a on loop. on, Orlando. On a loop. Flamethrower. Buddy so, Heald! Should we play him the... Uh... Avery Johnson clip? I mean, well, that'd be a little confusing. That. I heard Avery Johnson said something about Buddy Heald on the NCAA broadcast today. <laughs> he thinks be, he'd fit much better in Orlando than Sacramento. That'd be a little confusing because he's been on two other teams. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> fine. Don't, 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 don't ruin things for Avery. Just let Avery try to get Buddy to, to, to Orlando from Sacramento. <laughs> be perfectly fine. Oh, man. They're in the eight spot right now. Mm-hmm. Again, I think we talked about this yesterday. They're probably not going to fall below that. No. Because Chicago and Atlanta are like Atlanta's Atlanta's pretty much the 10th. I, 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 it looks like Atlanta's pretty much the 10th seed. Nine and 10. Chicago's are, pretty much the ninth seed. Yeah. Nine and 10 are done. Yeah. And then you've got, <laughs> you've got Philadelphia, Miami, and Indiana trying to figure things out for six, seven, and eight. And that one's oh, kind of fluctuating how it does in the West, where one day Indiana's yeah. in the seventh or eighth or whatever. It's It's been um, moving a bunch. Yeah, Orlando's kind of in that pe- the, the the Pelicans position, mm-hmm. where it's not super comfortable, but... Hell, and Orlando's sniffing four. Just like the Pelicans are. They probably, they're not crazy to think about three. The Pelicans? The, or, the or Magic. The, they two games behind mm-hmm. uh, Cleveland. No, I don't know why you. Well, hate now Cleveland. we can get I don't real know crazy. Why you hate Cleveland? Well, now we can get real crazy. There are three games behind two. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They're not catching Milwaukee. I don't think they're catching Cleveland. They might. Catch well, Cleveland. they might catch Cleveland. Donovan's still. Yeah, out. something. Yeah, the, the Donovan. He something like else happened. To, yeah, something else fracture. happened to Donovan. That was after he came back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, what are your boys doing? My boys? Yeah. Who are my boys? The Knicks. Those those are my boys. Yo, this thing with OG doesn't smell right. Shouldn't be playing. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. Like they, and I'm sure OG wants to play more than he wants anything. Mm -hmm. Bro, this is not it. He is not healthy. Nah, he shouldn't be playing. And they got him missing games now. Because of the because of the the, the 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 surgery because he's still in pain. So was it? Yeah, it was me and you talking about it when the Knicks were saying, "Oh yeah, we planned for this. It was gonna." It be was pain. Tibbs. Yeah, Tibbs said that. Oh, we knew this was gonna happen. And they were just, yeah, no, it's, everything's good. No, that's that's not. It's not okay. <laughs> Tibbs. See, I hate when they do stuff like that because Tibbs is talking about, oh yeah, yeah, he he yeah he was he was fine after the game, and you know he woke up and he wasn't. Okay, come on, man. Dude is screaming mid game, trying to grab a rebound. It's like he just ready. had elbow surgery. He's not. It, it's just a matter, I think, of the team, Tibbs, whoever, just brushing him back because hey, we got a playoff run and we could probably win something here with you. Mm. Get your timeline from a non team doctor. Yeah, yeah. So what is that's what is get your is timeline like. for a return from someone who is not paid by the same organization that you are. Yeah, that stuff is so angering because now he's missing games. And what do you think they're gonna say? Oh, he's soft. Oh, he can't play through it. I was literally about to say, no, that. he had surgery. I saw the headline on Hoops yeah, Hype yeah. or whatever. It's like they're thinking, um, they're saying, oh, you, um, Anunubi is afraid. Um, he didn't want to play, play through pain. Play through pain. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. they okay. dated that back to the Toronto stuff. So, yeah. Well, yeah, we heard OG didn't like to play through pain. And he's missed so-and-so games. They had numbers ready to go and stuff like that. That's yeah, cool. what is your whole ass like to do? You won't be, you, 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 you call in sick to work. You were talking about this dude playing right after he gets elbow surgery. That's cold, man. That's dirty. Work, How man. anybody could see the way OG was playing after coming back and think that that's okay is beyond me. Mm. Awful. Mm. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I have no doubts OG on Ananobi wanted to come back. Someone yeah, has to say, bro, to, yeah. you can't. You can't come back right now. Not, Wait. Not, and, and even if you're not sure before that, all you got to do is take three or four games to see him and say, come on, this, this isn't right. I know you tried. Appreciate it. But nah, man, come on now. Bad, bad look. Horrible look uh, yeah. for Tibbs, the Knicks, the Doc, everybody involved right now. Just a bad, bad look. Um, hey, there's something else the Kings are doing well. 
We asked them to do it, and they're doing it. Got to acknowledge it. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about sad. it. Right. Well, we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll also talk to Will Z because, as uh, Casey said, uh, to quote the great Kobe Bean Bryant, job's not done. Job's not done. King's got a job to do tonight in the nation's capital. We'll talk with Will Z uh, about the Kings and the Warriors when dealing with Casey. Brought to you by Sky River Casino. Return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. No, nothing today, guys. I'll have a kicking it with KC. Tomorrow. Right, Let's do it. Did you see the Ignite? There's no more? Yeah, the, we uh, talked about that during. Uh, oh, I must have stepped out there. Anthony's interview. That's when we saw. Oh, it. I got you. Yeah. But we didn't like really go in on it. We just, we got the tweet. It was like, oh, this is crazy. Then we went back to okay. uh, Monk. But, yeah, that's that deserves a little bit more attention. That's crazy. Excuse me, y'all. Nah, bro. For real, this this Kiki's is a bomb. Kiki's is consistent too. Like Coventry had what article? Hmm. Coppinger, who like he's not the worst like writer in the world or nothing like that, but he be like sometimes he'd be on like top rank because he worked for ESPN. No, he does that, yeah. He'd be on some bullshit, right? Um, but I don't like hate Coppinger, but sometimes he'd be on some bullshit. So he started following me one time, and then I was like, Oh, all right. And I just still would tweet like what I would tweet. Like if if there was some bullshit going on, I'd be like, man, some bullshit. <laughs> he stopped following me. <laughs> he said, get lost, pal. Follow me. At least he didn't block me like Dan Rayfield. What'd you do to Dan Rayfield? He tried to say something slick. And I was like, I said something like slick about Gervonta and pay-per-view vibes or something. It was nothing disrespectful, but I said something to the like, Oh, uh, Rayfield out here trying to get people not to buy pay-per-views. Where was that same energy for da 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 da? Then he blocked me. I was like, whatever, scrub. Mr. King, I got a question for you. What round do you think um Mungi is gonna get knocked out in? I'm just trying to let you know, man. Now, nah, Mangia is going to get knocked out. I I, I, I understand what uh, Michigan's saying. He is a little dangerous, but he can get knocked out. He don't defend because I'm going to knock his block off. Now, my question is always, does he have power to make Canelo respect? Almost didn't make it, but that might be the greatest chicken wing I've ever had. Oh, come on! I'm telling you, man. That might it's a shoot. That might be the greatest chicken wing I've ever had. It is bomb. Holy crap! That makes me want to stop at Kiki's for dinner. (laughs) I had just 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 one little chicken wing. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, I see that. I, I was, I was like, I could go, I could go. I was like, I gotta get. Like, I was talking to Kim. I was like, I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom. I could have gone. <laughs> Yeah, hey, calm down, Soren. Relax, buddy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. That's pass interference on Soren. Oh, so spot of the foul penalty yeah. right there, Soren. Whoa. Come on, man. It ends up being a 43 yard penalty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you guys see my show is on? Young and the Restless? The show, well, no. Right, Price is right? Yeah. The but, show we should model pocket watching after. I've got the, that the on the multi view right, right now. It, it's it's on the well. I think we could switch up. There's got to be another multi view. I think all the game. This is the time of the game. Oh, they're winding the day, down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they take the. They got like one or two games going, and then they start back up at like four or something like that. So you want to keep the multi view on? Yeah, multi view to... fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think two games are on right now. My bad. But yeah, that's how, that's how. Pocket watching, pocket watching should go. But it's I'm tired of you trying to change the game to like help you win. I didn't. I'm not changing. This Woo! is the rules. This is the rules. Well, might have lost D Low. Ooh! Shout out to Press Juicery and whoever put a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and oh man. A, Eight ounces of ginger in this drink. That one looked like I punched you back. My <laughs> goodness. I've only had this Kyan hit me Pepper harder than time. Kenny Caraway's Saved by the Bell reenactment. Well, shout out Jesse Spanos. And no top three show moment, though. Yeah, well, and people are asking for me to do the showgirls moment. Like, stop. Well, well <laughs> that was a wild transition from Saved by the Bell to, wild. to Showgirls. Yeah. What is, did a good job in that movie, though. If if Saved by the Bell. <laughs> I'm just gonna gloss game. past that. I'm just gonna gloss right past that. <laughs> it's a good role. Good um, if if your reenactment of Saved by the Bell in full, by the way, is a top three show moment, what's the top show moment in history? Is it the earthquake? I was just thinking the earthquake. Our top show moment? Yeah. Is it the earthquake? I don't. Th the earthquake is great, but I like it was like I don't think it was. Like the earthquake, I don't think is better than the dude who talked about he couldn't quit. Oh, um, OJ. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that was funny. I, I that put was a vote in for my man calling from jail, though. Well, the jail, yeah, the jailhouse jail. caller was good. <laughs> he he said, "I gotta go, man. The guards are coming." I said, yeah, was he well. in jail, and then he called like uh like a week later. I was like, "Yeah, I was." Is it throwing Joe? Out Alcatraz in the chat too. Like Alcatraz, I watched that back yesterday. Like that, that'll live forever. Alcatraz was a good one. Um, Joe Davidson's. Uh, <laughs> that's that's another one. Yeah, Joe Joe Davidson's uh, internet mishap or whatever it was. I'll take that one over earthquake. You'll take that one over earthquake. That okay. was hilarious, just because the context of before we're trying to get Joe on, just not working. All right, Joe calling is like we got him just from witness protection. Oh man, that was a yeah, that was, that was a class. Yeah, that yeah, was class. that was fire. That was fire. Every time James freezes is a great uh, moment as well. For everyone except for James. <laughs> James is the only one who did. Hey, the, remember uh, Maddie McQueen? The birth of Maddie McQueen was oh, that pretty was, good. That was pretty good. What did the they used to call it? The Maddie many faces McQueen. of McFoley or whatever back then? Yeah. That was the many faces of Matt George for that month? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Matt had a a, a little bit that he I'm wrote. Sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's, uh, there's got to be a Tristan moment in there. Soren, I forgot Tristan's about this probably light me up on that beam or something. Oh well, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. They had a shootout <laughs> when Sean Cunningham was like oh, outside yeah. an Elk Grove restaurant or something, <laughs> and we thought someone was gonna take Sean out. And then, there's like tires screeching behind them, yeah, like bro, the Sons of Anarchy going. You, <laughs> you okay? And then we credit some bonus to kind of switching things out by Polo through it in the chat. You can't come to my turkey drive, losers. Well, jazz, jazz, jazz might have changed the, yeah. jazz, might have changed the yeah. jazz, You know the the funniest part about Jazz's phone call. Is it was at like twelve oh two? Yeah, she didn't. She had been stewing on that all night. We didn't like, even acknowledge me remember. yet, and yeah, no, like Jazz is on the phone. I had yeah. no intention of like cutting her off either. She would have talked the rest of the four hours if she wanted. Yeah, yeah. What? No, no, no. What, to, to warm me up on that beam is well, is, that is up is, there for yeah, discussion. Yeah, that is. That is. Yeah, warm me up <laughs> on that beam. Is I mean, that lives there. forever. We literally sent DX to um WCW the other day. 
Coffee boy. Well, that's that. Yeah, we did do <laughs> that. That was that's, that's we an did all-time do that. The response to that one. That was crazy. The, the confusion <laughs> that ensued from the two hosts of that show was an all <laughs> was an all-time moment. And Draper repeatedly pulling the camera down, <laughs> clearly having no idea where the camera was focused every time he did that, also made for a uh, a humorous uh, stretch. Good there. times, man. I love this show, man. It's, Ricky yeah, Starks was great. I might be oh, all Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks yeah. is great. Yeah, Ricky Rose Starks and Brett Bre- Bre- Barish. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and them cursing and stressing uh, Jesse out. That's yeah. facts, dude. That was that was uh, young Jesse too. Just he's uh, a vet now, but yeah, that was yeah. like rookie that was, year. That was yeah. young Jesse. Literally yeah. just sitting. Finger on the dumb button, not moving, just sweating bullets. Uh, well, Matt, look, Matt like, George's tour of the dental office was solid. Oh, that was good. What about the first moments of the show when we didn't know we were on it? Well, oh, that, yeah, five minutes. Five minutes of just silence. Yeah, that was that was not the debut I was hoping for. Are we on the air? No, because it. Cause, all right, Charlie. Char- okay, here we go. And all I hear is the Sports Center update. So. <laughs> Kenny and I are just waiting for the update to end. And I hear Charlie, we're on the air. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. What? Okay, guys, great. Welcome to the show. Like, I'm hearing Sports Center in my ear, but no, it's good. You know what? That should have been the clue right there, out the gate. That should have been a clue about what this show was going to be. The fact that we couldn't get ESPN's big debut with their new. <laughs> Their new local show, we couldn't get it right. Oh, man. Everything was fine, but once the test ended the day before, a couple of <laughs> buttons were pushed. Charlie didn't know. Jonathan didn't know. We thought we were off and running. And poor Charlie, me and Charlie barely know each other. Yeah. Why isn't this idiot talking? <laughs> Who did you hire? Does this jackass know we're on the radio? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was getting an update on the baseball game the night before in my ear. Well, <laughs> my at that time, I don't even know what you were getting an update on. There was no sports. Maybe baseball was back. In I the don't time. even. Yeah, I don't even know what. Wasn't was. the NBA the first to come back with the bubble? Yeah, it could have been an NBA update. Yeah, because it was August of 2020, August 17th. Bloody had gotten fired. Bloody had gotten fired. We were talking about DB Cooper and escaping and all that. Us getting um the guy who hates Kenny who hates Kenny's laugh on the air. That was that was. Oh, solid. that was funny. Yeah, that was you. You 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 played that to perfection. You made him think you were just answering the hey, this guy, and he's got these grammatical errors. Don't you think it ruins the show? The the way in which he talked was like, oh, this is the most. It, it literally felt like before we had him on, I was talking to you guys like, yeah, Santa's here. Like Santa's been here. He's been here. You guys, and it's just like I just I had no proof at all. <laughs> there he was. And he's just, that's it. That's oh, it. Okay, just stop. The movie. All right, guys, stop goofing around here. Uh, Kings guard Kevin Herter injured his left shoulder during the first quarter versus the Memphis Grizzlies on Monday. Imaging confirmed Herter suffered a dislocated shoulder and labral tear. Oh, that's not that's not OK. Treatment options are still being evaluated. Herter will be listed as out. That is an update directly from the Sacramento Kings. Imaging confirmed Herter suffered a dislocated shoulder and a labral tear. So treatment options are being evaluated. Herder will be listed as out. My bad, big dog. Just give me my first thought. I and maybe I shouldn't do this, but my first thought with the, isn't that what Ja had surgery on? Didn't he tear his labrum? I believe he did. So the thing with labral tears, and I have never understood this. I don't see Like, I always use this example, and I understand it's not fair because it doesn't have, like, different things, but... John did tear it, by the way. If I take this and tear it, how is it going to get back together? You got to tape it. Mm -hmm. You got to put it together somewhere. If I just set this here, how does it get better? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so... Guys learn that you strengthen the muscles around it. You learn to do different things around it and you learn to just kind of operate it. Eventually you're going to have to have surgery. Is that, is that the same as I talk all the time about my calves, right? And when you have a strain, it's a partial tear, right? Like it's not, it's not separated like that piece of paper. It's not separated, but there's a tear there. And eventually over time, 
this is why the body, the human body is amazing. It does some some things do heal themselves. Like the calf tear will heal itself and it'll work back together. Is the labrum the same way, or is that nah? That's not what that is. You got to go fix that. See, I, I I don't think so, but I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so I don't I don't know. Do they still have those? I don't know. Don't they have one in the Thomas? Is that a, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not an express? Maybe it's a Holiday Inn they something. A lot in the I'm reading an interview where um, a doctor worked on jaw or whatever was doing a Q and A or whatever, and he's talking about like the labrum. If it's torn, like it holds like the shoulder joint or the ball wet or whatever in place. So like that's torn, like that kind of. I'm assuming you have to get surgery just because like that's mm -hmm. not going to hold it in place as well or anything like that. Jeez. I, like I said, we just got this news. I'm just, you know, talking with my guys and trying to figure it out. I hope it's not anything that requires surgery. Um, but that that's, I didn't like that more than the dislocated shoulder. Dislocated shoulder, you explained it a little bit. It feels like it's something that if it's a certain way, you can play through that. Um, you just got to be aware. It may slip in and out or whatever the case may be. I don't feel like the labrum is a torn labrum is something you can play through. I think it is something you can play through. Mm. I don't, <laughs> this fits our last conversation perfectly. I do think it's something you can play through. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's something you can play through without a certain level of discomfort and a certain level of modification. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's something you can permanently play through. My gut is that his season's over. That's my gut. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Like, I guess it, I, I, it, it truly in these types of situations is up to him. Yeah. I do think with, I, I, I think there's a way, like if you tear your ACL, mm -hmm. you can't play through it, right? Like no matter what, like you, you're not going to be able to play through that. There's ways that you can play through this, mm -hmm. but you have to determine how comfortable you are, um, how it affects your game, and understand you're probably going to need treatment on this at some point. Because if he's if he if he doesn't do surgery, and one of the frustrating things about a shoulder injury, specifically a shoulder surgery is the rehab process is excruciatingly slow. It's not Achilles slow, mm -hmm. but it's not ACL fast, mm -hmm. right? You do those ACL things, you're you're rehabbing like, they wake you up, all right, go, go do a leg curl or something. Like you right. go do something right away. Right. With, with shoulder stuff, you're like, okay, all right, let's see how high you can lift your arm. And you, and you move it two inches. Okay, do it again. Mm -hmm. That's your rehab for the day. Good job. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, they, 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 they'll tell you that they'll walk up the wall with your fingertips. Like it is excruciating and it's stretching, it's stretching, it's stretching. It's trying to find that range of motion back. So it's a long, often frustrating process. Mm -hmm. And you got to make the decision. You're going to go through something that sucks one way or another. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. Hear me out. Like, but it's almost like, might as well just get the surgery just because he was struggling before. And it's like, what we need, what the Kings need from you is to sit at that three point line and lift that shoulder up and throw it what's, into the hoop. What's the, the timeline? Can we look that up? I got to look did it up you right see now. That? The thing, the thing I would say, and you're not wrong, like somebody, because it's that, like he's like not, he was already struggling, but it's like, it wasn't really working well. And it's like, you're going to play through a torn labor right now. And it's just, we're playing good basketball. You almost, Almost the Kings part shut him down or something. Some, Man, somebody, somebody. That's a four to nine month recovery. So somebody that, and that's probably a regular person, but yeah, you, you know, like the, what I mean by that is not someone who's right. spending eight hours right. rehabbing their shoulder. I would expect if he got surgery now, he'd be ready for the season. You know what I mean? And that's a little less than nine months. But like you're saying, like this is a guy yeah. that's getting yeah. premium, you know, right. personal training, right? And he's at the height of his physical peak and all this other it's stuff. It's probably a decision they want to make relatively soon. So, but and here's the thing: like Jesse is mm -hmm. saying that from a very logical, probably correct place. I can understand Kevin Herter, and you talk about it all the time. And let's just see: if I don't have to get cut on, I don't want to get cut. Yeah, on. no, absolutely. 
you Absolutely. Know, can I get another so, week or can I get a couple of days to see something? So the downside to that is, though, and, and I, I agree with you 100 percent. This is a little bit different, though, because to me, this this is you can't wait a week. Mm-hmm. You have to wait like six mm-hmm. and see, hey, what's happening here in six to eight weeks? Right. Which means if it's not and this is this is the trade off, because I think you should avoid surgery at all costs if it's an option. There are certain things it an Achilles and ACL that's not an option. Right. With this, if it's truly an option and you can you run the risk though of waiting 8 weeks, delaying the inevitable. It didn't work and now you have to get the surgery in your 8 weeks re- you, you could have been 8 weeks into your rehab and now your timeline is 2 months out mm-hmm. of what it was if it, it's a risk. There's a, a kind of a, a risk reward thing that you have to you take. I imagine with Ja, it was, hey, man, we're not there. Mm-hmm. It, 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 given the circumstances of this season. You just started. Right. You're going to have to stop again for 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 a bit. Let's just get the surgery, shut things down. And we will start completely fresh next year. Yeah. Well, looking Kevin at, we'll, isn't Ja, so this is a very, very different. Right. This is a very different conversation. And, and to your point with Ja, it's probably a situation when the time it happened. Look, man, get it done now, and you can have a regular off season to get yourself back. You know what I mean, Kevin? Oh, I, man, and this is where I say Jesse, he's probably right. Like that's the the logical thing is, it's probably not going to get to the point where. It's going to be a hundred percent. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. And the, like, I'm also seeing it from my King's point of view, like seeing how they're playing now, Keon else is playing. We got a good thing going. What am I going to play a 60% Kevin Herter for? Mm. Now here's the other mm. thing. And I'm like I said, we just got the news. We're talking about it here live on D-Lo and KC. Uh, we're talking about exclusively here on D-Lo and KC. Well, yeah. Um, exclusive. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what does that, what does that mean for, <clears throat> and I and I hate doing this because I, I like Kevin. I respect these ball players. What does that do for his tradeability? Oh, I don't I don't know. It's not good. Yeah, yeah. it's not good. I feel dirty having this conversation. That's fair. That's like fair. I I mean it, it I, I it's it's yeah. fair. It's sports. It's what we do. Yeah. It's not good. You wait till the offseason. Like no, that. you can't. And the only reason, you, like you get, you, can, like he's you not going to be tradable in the offseason. That's, that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, you wait till they're saying, yeah, he's hundred percent. Like you, you need to see. Yeah, but that's probably about. the start of next yeah, season, and, that, and I think that's what that's yeah, I think that's what the you're deal getting you at. need to make is probably like July second. Yeah, the, if that or right. or the draft or right. something like that. That's why yeah. you make the playoffs and get those picks. That's tough. It's that it's, is tough. It's, I feel it's tough. I feel terrible for him. A tough tough season for him, man. Yeah, just, just a tough season, and and for him to have to go a, through that, you know, not only struggling up and down statistical season mm-hmm. or performance season, but now you got to deal with an injury and what that means moving forward. I feel terrible for for Kevin Herter. Yeah, I feel terrible. Kevin still has, he still has two full years left on his deal. At sixteen and seventeen million, respectively. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like it's you not, transition I, I, Kevin no Herter problem. to a bench role. I have no problem with him staying on this team. I know that's one of your your trade assets or whatever, but we we've said for a long time. Don't be surprised if this looks the same next year. Yeah, you don't have a lot do, to trade. Do him and Malik look work well together on the court? Um, maybe, I mean, there's a slasher and a shooter. I mean, Malik, that's what it comes down to. Honestly, like if we're going to move Kevin to the bench, it's like, yeah, if you work well with Malik, because that's what we're getting the most out of. I kind of Malik might be starting. Oh, there's that too. So now you're talking about Keon and and, and Kevin, but to your original question, Keon might be starting. That's what I'm saying. I think Keon, like, like <laughs> in my head right now, the way things are going, we'll just base it off of how we've seen it or whatever. I think Keon is starting next year because I think it's going to look, it'll, I think it'll look good. I think it'll look good the rest of the season. But, 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 but the scenario that I'm thinking in my head is what if Harrison isn't? So it's De'Aaron, Malik, and, and, and Keon, and Keegan, and Domas. That's what, that's what I was alluding to right there. Yeah, that's what it, if Keon is starting, that's what it should be. Honestly, 
Let's ask Malik. Because, yeah. <laughs> sir, what would you like? Well, yeah, I guess that yeah, is what. And I think he to. made it pretty clear. Hey, uh, he doesn't like coming off the bench, but it's his role here. Hey, Malik, no problem. That's not your role anymore. Yeah, don't worry about that, dog. No, we got, got that. Yeah, don't sweat got it. Yeah, don't sweat it. To, to answer your original question about Kevin and Malik, I think it works because the way I look at the the best way to utilize Malik, mm-hmm. as long as he has the ball in his hands, everything will be fine. Yeah. As long as he is the guy that's making the decisions, because he's shown to be a willing passer. He's averaging almost five, six assists this year. Are you maximizing that Kevin Herter spot with Malik, though? Are you maximizing those spots? Like, I know Malik's probably playing well, but, like, if Kevin Herter's on the side with him, are you maximizing that as well? What would what would be, like, what would be better in your opinion? And we got Will Z in here. We can all talk as a family. Will Z. Uh, <laughs> What's up, you guys? Hey. For those just tuning in, uh, Sacramento Kings reported Herter suffered a dislocated shoulder, which I think we knew, and a labral tear, which was mm-hmm. news to us. Uh, treatment options are still being evaluated. Herter will be listed in the meantime out. We learned yesterday from a couple of different people that Kevin Herter did not go on this road trip. Uh, he is, in fact, still here in Sacramento, and they're going through this process trying to determine uh, what to do next. Uh, will, this is obviously news to all of us. You 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 want to weigh in on this at all? I just feel so bad for Herter. Like, he feels... It was kind of between there's always one player who gets the blame of fans and it was kind of going between him and Barnes this year. Yeah. And I just heard her so much better than I think he's the played this year. really upset about Kevin Hurt. Oh, Kevin no. Hurt yeah. is baby, oh. really upset. It was Ke- I know. That's baby's fa- baby Z's favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it stinks for him, it stinks for the Kings, but I mean, the good news for the Kings is that they weren't winning because of Herder's like hot shooting. Mm-hmm. They were winning with Herder not playing as well as he can. So it doesn't mean that they can't go on a good run. And we've seen kind of what happens with this new look lineup. We'll have to see how they look when he's out for a longer stretch of time. But it's just, it just makes me feel bad for him. Yeah, yeah. I feel we all feel the same way. Um were were there? I talked about um, the Kings playing better since around the All Star break. Mm-hmm. Kevin was a part of that. Kevin was part of that group. Was mm-hmm. there anything before Kevin went out that showed statistically this team was trending in an upward direction, or is it kind of just skyrocketed since Keon's? I don't want to say him in the starting lineup. We all know that's seven and zero, Undertaker mm-hmm. Street, but just him getting more playing time. Is that what is catapulted or was it already happening with Kevin there and, and some of the things that were going going on with him? I think a little bit of both. It was already going up, but it kind of skyrocketed in the last, I think the numbers that people are throwing around are since March 10th, which is like five or six games. And it's, I think we just see more of it with Keon out there. Like the more he plays, the more we're seeing. But with Herter out there, we were seeing it too. Like, it's not just this last few games. It's since the All-Star break, really, they've had kind of a gradual uptick in their defensive intensity. And I put out the numbers today. And since the All-Star break, they are averaging 8.8 steals and 17.1 deflections per game. Wow. For reference, the 76ers lead the league with 8.5 steals and OKC leads the league with 16.2. But they're doing it as a whole team. You look at Herder himself, he was at 0.8 steals, 1.4 deflections. That's part of a whole. It's not just Keon getting those steals and deflections. It's everyone doing it together as a team. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How much of that? So, okay. Is Is that a Keon effect? Or is it just Sacramento is playing better and Keon is kind of shining a little bit in that regard. Maybe both. I don't know. I'm I think it... like, like, I'm, like I'm looking like Ke- Ke- Keegan started uh, mm-hmm. versus Minnesota. He did not play versus Chicago mm-hmm. and it looks like he it, it, just going back to March. And I know you said all-star break. It looks like that's where he started playing. That's where he's like, he's consistently, he's mm-hmm. playing every night now. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we're we're hyper focused on Keon, but all and, and yep. rightfully so. But all of the numbers say that the team is playing better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a collective, I think Keon. Are we echoing? Is that no, just me? You're good. I think, so. good. Um, I think Keon just allows everyone else to shift down a level and take pressure off of everyone else, and that's so helpful. And you see it with like Fox having the ability of a screen having Fox switch on the screen and go from Keon to Fox. That's a pretty even trade compared to going from Fox to Herder. You have a drop off of the opponent getting to pick on Herder a little. So it's just evens everything out. You still have some Barnes um, issues out there, I think, but it's the type of thing where you can just see, especially if they are able to get that one more wing defender. And this is looking at next year more than this year, but you see the same type of impact that could be had if you add in a lead wing defender as well, who can shift Keon into the role that Fox is in now with Keon playing. Will, and it's really you, exciting. I kind yeah. of messed up. Can you hang out for a few minutes? Yeah, for sure. I'm the one that was late. No, it's 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 fine. I re- we had more time today to mess with than I realized. So hang tight. We'll come yeah. back. Yeah. We'll talk more with Will Z. We'll preview. Uh, tonight's Kings Wizards game uh, when Dylan McCasey returned here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. For some reason, well, I kept thinking we had a three o'clock, which is why we didn't do 245, but we don't. We have Matt at 315. So nice. I should have I should have given you a little little more of a breather there, man. So oh, it's all good. It's nice to be back. Yeah, we missed you, man. Yeah, I always feel bad when I, I can't come on. Well, well you you don't get paid for this, Will. So you're giving That's us your. True. Time. It's, very, it's very nice. It's I think very the thing that's been that, kind of. Go ahead, Will. Was that Jesse? No, go ahead, Will. That's been kind of my mantra. I keep telling myself this year, so I don't burn out. Like I'm not getting paid for this. Like it's okay that I'm not live tweeting during the game. I keep having to like remind myself that, so I don't it's, it's, kill it's myself. Fun, man. Yeah, yeah. Just have fun. I was gonna say with Matt George feeling like he's at three o'clock. He's probably the only one guest that goes longer than James. Because even on Thursdays, too, I feel like he's at three sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because it feels like yeah. a whole hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Zay, trust me, I've been working on that for a while. <laughs> Will, what do you think about the guys who escaped from Alcatraz? Oof. I don't know. What do the numbers say about Alan yeah. West? Did they survive well? <laughs> I feel like those would not be positive numbers. <laughs> That's got to be some low, low statistics right there. You you weren't listening to that nonsense yesterday, were you? No, I didn't listen much earlier uh, throughout this week, which is so not normal for me. Um, I missed the whole Monday, the whole Yahoo thing. I was well, like, what is going on? Well, I caught up on it, though. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of our finer moments, Jesse. You were right. That was one of our finer moments right there. It would have been number one if he was on stream. And he saw the messages. Coffee boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That would have been fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's facts. That would have been oh, fire. Oh, man. Man, I feel so bad for Kevin. Yeah. And so it just kind of evened out their starting lineup. That's why I liked the idea of Barnes going to the bench was because it would even out the starting lineup. And it's kind of what we're seeing with just the different position. Yeah. How's Hannah? She's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah.
fun question. I don't normally get to see the chat because I'm, I was looking up other stuff, but I like the question, who's Keegan started against? Let's look at who those games have been against. So Keon starts a band, Portland, OKC, Utah, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Lakers, and Toronto. So some good teams, some bad teams. Pretty decent mix. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good question. That was a, that was a good thing to look up. I was thinking about that earlier. The first one I saw when I was looking at the March stuff was Minnesota. I know that's not all of the games that he started against, but seeing that one was like, well, he's, mm -hmm. it's not all Toronto's here. Yeah, and the wild thing is it's a lot of games that Fox has missed. Like, that's who he's filling in for in some of these games. What was it? Why do all of these top moments result in me leaving? <laughs> oh, oh, James. James saying Keegan hit the rookie wall. That's what it was. We don't like the wall. We don't like the wall. <laughs> oh, that's so great. That is tremendous. That is tremendous. James brought up the rookie wall and I left. <laughs> that damn rookie wall. Get you. It'll get you every time. <laughs> okay, we're coming back, Will. All right, we're back here with our man, Will Z. We're going to dive into the game uh, a little bit tonight. Uh, of course, news coming in. Kevin Herter, uh, labral tear mm. uh, directly from the Sacramento Kings. Uh, treatment options still being evaluated. Obviously, he's going to be out tonight. He's going to be out on Saturday, and he'll be ruled out uh, until the Sacramento Kings decide on what type of treatment option, or specifically until Kevin Herter decides on what sort of treatment option he wants moving forward. Uh, as we looked up, John Morant, labral tear, had surgery, ended his season. Uh, what happens next for Kevin Herter? Uh, we'll certainly be following pretty closely. Uh, Will, last night was an interesting game. Before we get into tonight's, it's literally what we all wanted. It's what we were mm -hmm. all begging for. It was an absolute blowout. Is there anything that you could take away from games like that other than great job done? Let's keep it moving. I think that's pretty much it. It's just you did you did the job. You had the defensive intensity. You They didn't even have a great game on offense in terms of their three-point shooting and turnovers. So it could have been even better. It's just kind of exactly what we've been hoping for all season, and now we have a chance to do it on back-to-back -back games, which I think everyone would lose their minds if we blow out two teams in a row that are yeah. bad. Like, is that even something that we can do? I, I don't, I don't is that an know. option? I don't quantify that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's not real. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's just nice to see a no-stress game. It feels like it's been a while since we've had that. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask, what well, would... We all want another one tonight. What are the numbers? Man. We know Washington's bad. Yeah. The record shows that they're bad. And I, I this, this feels like a dumb question. I don't know what else to ask. Why is Washington so bad? Like, what do the numbers say about mm -hmm. the way that they play? Here's a quick rundown. For looking at their defense specifically, which is worse than their offense, they have 25th ranked offense, 30th ranked defense. So they're giving up 124.2 points per game. That's the fifth highest mark in NBA history. They allow opponents to shoot 50.1% from the field. That's the highest in the league. Their three-point defense isn't bad, 36.8. That's 13th. They foul a lot. They give up 23.8 free throw attempts per game. That's fourth most in the league. They're terrible at offensive rebounds. They give up 12.3 offensive boards per game and 16.8 second chance points per game, both of which are most in the league. They don't get back in transition, 15.3 fast break points. That's sixth most. 
and they allow a league-high 59.4 points in the paint per game. So, easily said, they are bad everywhere on defense, and it's something where if the Kings were to lose this game, they'd have to be bad in so many different facets, especially just on offense. And it's just... Again, I would say close your eyes, throw a dart at a dartboard, and you'll hit a bad stat for the Wizards. Like they're bad, bad, bad. Man, jeez. Well, like I said, the the ironic thing about all this is none of these numbers make me feel any better. Right? It's I know, terrifying. I know they're playing well. Yeah. I know what they did last night, but the job's not done. Like we said, yeah, the job is not. not done, and they need they need to win this game tonight because. The other teams, the yep. Suns and the Mavericks, and all mm-hmm. those other guys yep. are in a spell where they're playing relatively easy teams as well, and you can kind of chalk up their win. Yeah. So for the for the Kings to stay ahead, um, and I don't want to say weather the storm. That's not the right term, but these other teams will start playing harder teams. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure they don't grant, gain any ground when they're playing the bad teams, and you are too. 143 to 131 the first time these two teams played. Yeah. Uh, lots of defense in that one. Yeah. And that's one where, like, the Wizards shot 40, yeah, 47.4% from three and lost. Like, mm. that's how bad the Wizards' defense is, that they can shoot that well from three and lose. Like, you know what and, I mentioned earlier? Yeah. Sorry, Will, go ahead. No, it's just and throw on that they have some injury concerns. And it's again injury concerns plus a bad team. It's Kings fans kryptonite right there. This is a perfect time to 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 save this. I, I didn't intend to. You know what the Kings did again last night? They shot eighty percent plus from the free throw line. There they go. There they they've go. been doing that. I mean, I know we're really like harping on the month of March. They've been doing that the entire month. Mm-hmm. They've been, I think there's one game and and they missed. It, they it was a low. Maybe they shot 13 free throws. Maybe they're like 10 to 13, or it, it was something it, that that percentage doesn't work out. But there was something that were they were they were like one off. They wound up shooting like 77 percent or something like that um, in the last handful of games. But they've been an 80 plus percent free throw team uh, now for a, a a pretty decent sized chunk of games. And I think it was, I think it was Harrison yesterday because they they brought that that was brought up to him. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, that's you. You don't think about it when you do it. It's not a it's not a thing until you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. When you're missing mm-hmm. free throws, it's a thing. When you're making them, it's not. It's second nature to make free throws in this league. It's only a thing when you miss them. And the Kings were missing them for so long and so many times. It was very much a thing. Uh, hopefully we're out of that trend of missed free throws being a thing uh, for Sacramento. Oh. Yeah, and if you look at it, last nine games, they're shooting 84% from the free throw line, which is great. The best part about it is that it's a team-wide trend. So in those nine games, Sabonis, 80%, Fox, 82.9, Monk, 93.5, Keegan, 84.2, Barnes, 82.4. Just everyone is suddenly hitting their free throws, which is how you collectively get that number up. Whereas before, it was everyone was average. And that's how you ended up as the worst free throw shooting team in the league. Yeah, well, like I said, this team is playing good basketball, and it's all the way around. They're putting, mm-hmm. they're starting to put all the components together. Offensively, they're on the uptick. Defensively, they're really on the uptick. Mm-hmm. And the little things like like free throw shooting, but the one thing that we want to see them take a little bit more control of is the turnovers. Mm-hmm. You know, the turnovers hasn't consistently been under control and i think that's the next step for this team to continue to be who they are and what they've been doing in those other facets of the game but protect the basketball it's a good segue into the swing stat for tonight which is turnovers i was looking i was like it's hard swing stat against a team like the wizards but the wizards score 17.7 points off the turn that's fourth most in the league probably one of their highest ranked stats for them and the Kings are giving up 17 points off turnovers per game. That's ninth most in the league. So, Kenny, like you said. So, we've seen it a few times this year where the Kings just shoot themselves in the foot with turnovers. And I think 
if the Wizards do win, it'll be because of that. Did you see the points off turnovers last night? I did not. I it was 33. The Kings scored 33 That's points right. off of the turnovers you. last night. That's how you got to do it right there. That is a phenomenal statistic. Man. 22 turnovers, 33 points. That's big time. They had another number. Uh, points in the paint they want. There it is. The second chance points. The Will Z special, 28 yep. to 4. Oh, love it. <laughs> 28 to if 4. They, yes. If they can win, start getting those steals and win both of those battles, I mean, you don't expect it to be by that margin, but those are two huge kind of battles right there because that's the possession and just field goal attempts right there. If you steal, get steals, that takes away shots from your opponent. If you get second chance opportunities, then you get more shots than your opponent. Like that's sneakily a great combination of two stats. Hmm. Uh, Will, great stuff, man. We missed you this week. Glad to have you back. And um, man, we'll be seeing uh, a lot of each other next week, man. Excited yes, for sir. it. Looking forward to it. Good to be back. All right. Man, Appreciate you, Will. Thanks, guys. That's our man, Will Z, right there. Make sure you're following him across social media platforms for the Z Cast uh, as he previews each Kings game in video form, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, TikTok, the whole deal. Make sure you're following our man, Will Z, uh, for your Sacramento Kings information. Kings are 7-3 and three in their last 10 games with the Wizards. Uh, coming up tonight, KC, you alluded to this a minute ago, it's the Magic and Pelicans. That's a good ball game. Mm. Jazz and Mavericks, first of two, I think, for those two. Uh, and Hawks and Suns. So, Suns. Watch out for the Hawks. Mavericks both on the second night of a back-to-back. Did they both yeah, play no, last night? Mavericks last didn't play last. Suns night. did. Suns did. Okay. Uh, the, the game Pelicans? we were looking at last. Uh, no, the Pelicans didn't. What the we, hell do I know? We were we Suns. were looking at the Warriors last night. That may be who. That's they right. Know. The Warriors and the Grizzlies. Yeah. 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 Or your boy, the reformed Draymond well, Green. No, he's better. He's better. It's fine. I'm so thankful. <laughs> he is a walking advertisement for therapy. It's great. Look at what therapy can do for you. Watch this goof. <laughs> I almost said, I, I, I want to be careful. I won't call that man what I was thinking in my head, but <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It really is, pushed though. old boy for no reason because he got muscled a little bit. And then, and then, and insecure then, dude. Did you, did you hear the, uh, no, you heard the broadcast, not, not ESPN, but your boys. I didn't hear my. I didn't hear your uh, boys. That's, that's I heard my boys. The, I heard the ESPN broadcast. Did you know who was on the ESPN broadcast? Well, yeah, yeah, the, right. The volume they, was down. they finally found the one thing he's qualified to do, and it's to broadcast the damn Warriors game. The volume was down. I'll tell you that right Goodness now. Goodness gracious! But he, um, yeah, it's your boy fits. Oh, well, I think I starts and trying to shove Draymond. Oh, for God's <laughs> sakes, that guy is a walking gimmick. He is doink the clown. <laughs> For goodness sakes, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, they was they was doing what they do. They was doing what they do. Is this a shoot? He said he tried to bait Draymond. <laughs> That's what he oh, said. Oh, come on. Come he on. He did say that. Yeah, yeah, he did say that. M do a hey, salute to you, Warriors <laughs> fans who endure that every night. Goodness oh, gracious. Boy. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, we're um, uh, Matt George is going to join us in a minute. We mentioned, indeed, we mentioned uh, the Magic and the Pelicans, Jazz, Mavericks, Hawks, Suns tonight. Uh, the Pelicans have an opportunity. This would be a big win for the Pelicans if they can mm. get the Magic, but we know that they're, 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 they're nipping at the heels of the Los Angeles Clippers. Mm hmm. Started to. You think there's a chance Paul George leaves? Well, we've there's heard some rumblings. Seems to be a lot. There seems to be more than there should be out yeah. there. Yeah. For there to for this to be nothing, right. like absolutely nothing. It's kind of the same way I feel, right? Like we keep hearing something. Yeah, so we some keep talk, hearing stuff. Some talks are happening one way or another. It right. Feels like. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, I think there's a possibility. 33, excuse me, 33 years old. Still a, still a high quality player. Oh, for sure. 
For sure, I'd take him here in Sacramento. Um, but Ballmer has his stars, quote unquote. Kawhi's locked up. I believe they're going to sign James. So he's going to go into that arena. Best defense James has played in years last well, night. I mean, come on, man. We also know why he's never won a damn thing in his career. Come on, now. That's crazy. I asked you earlier, did you see? Oh, Ty Lue. Ty. Yeah. Ty was literally speechless. He gets on there and he goes, um, he goes, yeah, man, I, I didn't even see that. So you guys just said something to this guys just, uh, <laughs> Oh, poor Ty Lue. Literally speechless. So that was crazy. That is, that was crazy. And everybody, um, said the same thing. I mean, just complete unseriousness by him go ahead Jess. let's listen here for those who haven't seen the clip we want it with sound or without without here's uh here's james harden with the ball and yep and he out to Kawhi. and for some reason come on man look at Kawhi. look at Kawhi. is like what what <laughs> bro what are you doing this is yo Kawhi said the hell was that Dude is just nah, just goofy for that. Just when you think he's figuring something out, he reminds you, no, he's not. Nah. How does the NBA mark that down stat wise? Is that a wide open three? It's, is that a guarded it's three? A good it's question. A, they, I mean, I bet it's there somewhere. It's a, it's a, it's a, he's he's zero for one in threes contested by a teammate. Because <laughs> well, if you look, um, he's literally the only player in that stat category. Because that Blazers defender is not going to get to him. It's just oh, oh he's not even cooked. close. Yeah, see. Like the only hand in his face is James Harden. That is ridiculous. And and so you, you, the cure for the common cold, the I believe the Clippers' next game is against the Blazers. Wow. So for those that are watching and or, or you 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 probably already know that the, the Clippers beat the crap out of the Blazers mm -hmm. last night. Their next game is against the Blazers. The Clippers were sliding, mm -hmm. and you know it said the Pelicans beating the Magic tonight would be massive for for them because that's that's a tough team and. The Clippers got the Blazers next, so they're right. safe to you know I, I, anything can happen. But Blazers are getting another one here, or excuse mm -hmm. me, the, the the Clippers are getting another one here and kind of regrouping after that slide. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a big, big, big game for the Pelicans, but th that's the type of stuff where every time you, hey, man, man, the Clippers, you know, they could go to the NBA Finals, and then there's that, and you're reminded, James Harden. Okay, <laughs> James Harden is on that team. Ain't nothing special happening with James Harden. Scooter nine one um Scooter nine one six brings up a good comparison. I think is that Manu Ramirez cutting off his own guy with the Red Sox. <laughs> Wait a minute, <laughs> I do remember. that was epic. That was Manu epic. Dove out. He worked. And he went out to of his get way that to get cut that. off. Yeah, that was pretty spectacular. That's an all timer. That's an all timer. But I'm gonna say no because in the moment I can see like Manny not really sure what's yeah. happening here comes the ball i gotta get it what was james doing can you imagine if james blocked it oh, oh my gosh can you imagine if james sends it to the third hey row? this is a shoot <laughs> Kawhi might have beat his ass Kawhi might have <laughs> punched him Kawhi in the face <laughs> the, the claw hits him with the mandible claw that was i couldn't believe what i saw when i saw that because I kept seeing we act like Kawhi Leonard isn't from LA. Right. Like he might he not, not a, turn not up at a moment. Yeah. He ain't about all that. I mean, to defend James, though, I mean, who amongst us has not done things for the vibes? Yeah, well, oh, I and guess that was, I guess was, he was vibing. That was his answer. You know, I just wanted to, you know, make make things, you know, lighter, you know, and uh get some different energy from my teammates. All right, bro. Brother, we were up bro. 21. Things were fine. Yeah. Bro, you're like you you're doing? you're like the fifth blessed player on this team. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> I hit you with 97 rock. Know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> God, he's so unlikable. I he's not Aaron Rodgers unlikable, but he's unlikable. I could not believe he did that when I saw that. I said, what in the world? You see Isaiah played a couple of minutes yesterday? I did see that, man. You know, I love that. I, I hope he, he signed a 10-day. I think it was over over the weekend, earlier yeah. this week. I can't remember, but he signed a 10-day. Unfortunately, he's with the... Uh, with Phoenix.
Well, Frank, Frank Vogel said too already that um, once they're healthy, he's not getting no time. <laughs> he Made said that? that? He didn't say he's not getting well, no time. He, he said he said he's not going to be a part of the rotation once we're healthy. First of okay, Frank, calm down. First of all, when's that? You wake me up when that happens. Next year, I guess IT's back, yeah, baby. Like, and what was the purpose of saying that? Yeah, Let him rock. I'm sure they were asked. Like, I'm sure he was asked about it because I mean, there's other ways you could answer. Well, that. Frank, no, Frank needs some like personnel courses. <laughs> I mean, only Isaiah Thomas can answer this for himself. But send him to HR. Is this, Jesus, is this the closure that we've kind of been waiting for for, his, for his, um, as far as him getting back to the league and all that? Like he can only answer that for himself. But I mean, we've all been kind of can no, Isaiah if, back? No, can Isaiah back? no, if there's closure, it needs to happen here. Oh yeah, it needs to, or he I needs would love to, that. yeah, or he needs to go out with a, you know, thirty-five point game or something on yeah. his on his sister's birthday so, or something, something crazy something like that. That would be. Um, like a Hollywood movie esque. Yeah, yeah. I gosh, I feel mm. still Wait, one of the strangest. Ready for all that, Frank Vogel? Jeez. Yeah, Frank didn't need to do all that. Frank didn't need to do all that. Oh, he ain't back here. He, he's y'all. He's trash. We ain't gonna do nothing with him. He's just here because these idiots can't stay healthy. No, Frank, that's not how you do this, man. At least he got some run. At least he got some run. Hey, and shout out to IT. Like, people will look at it, you know, he keeps getting these 10 days and keeps trying to fight Still to get into the league. It, like, my man has a dream to be an NBA player, and he wants to end a certain way. Mm -hmm. Carmelo didn't get the opportunity to end his career the way he wanted to. And in my opinion, Carmelo didn't get the opportunity to end his career the way he should have. Yeah. Um, guys, the, you know, the, 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 the way guys end, I'm sure, is important to them. Yep. Isaiah's probably coming really, 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 really close to the end. Yeah. If 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 this makes him happy, if 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 continuing to try for ten day contracts makes him happy, salute. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Whatever and loves he Nipsey wants Hustle, to do. and he's gonna continue yeah. to live on that dedication. Yeah, he still can play. Well, that's and that's that's always the baffling. That's always the baffling part about all of this to me is he can still play. I think the worst part about his story is just the fact that he missed out on the bag. Mm. Oh, by f absolutely. It's kind of like absolutely like along, along the lines of the Marcus or whatever. Like the Marcus didn't really have too much trouble finding teams towards the end. Like of course he just kept getting hurt, so he was out the league quicker and all that. But Isaiah got hurt once, and that was it. Yeah, I I love I love Isaiah Thomas, man, and and the way he um, approaches his dream, his dedication, all this other stuff. Like he still wants to play. He still believes he can play. And it's not beneath him to go to the G League. It's not beneath him to get a 10-day contract. I'm not talking about anybody who may feel that way, but he'll do it because he wants to keep it, keep his dream alive. Shout out to my boy. Run it. He sniffed it out. Oh, run it. Hey, shout out to my guy. I caught his reaction in the little screen. He caught it. That's my guy right there. I'm telling you, nothing, that's like, my nothing producer. Gets the yeah, competitive day, juice is going like this. That's my producer. One a day. Right there. You can have one a day. That's facts. Kelly, Let's send out. sell this segment right here, Kelly. Come on now. Our good buddy Isaiah Thomas, okay. former number 60 overall pick in the 2011 Literally Brock NBA draft. 12 active seasons in the National Basketball Association. His highest year, 2000 dollars for <laughs> yeah, very good. 2014-15. He made seven point two million dollars. 2014-15. 7.2 million dollars is his highest. Career earnings. 12-year NBA vet, Isaiah Thomas. One more time. How many how many years in the league? He played 12 seasons. He was the former number 60 overall pick in 2011. And his highest earning year was 7.2. Kenny Caraway. Career earnings for Isaiah Thomas. 
I need a dub here, man. You really oh, do, pressure. buddy. Yeah, pressure, no, you I'm do. Good. I'm right at 500, basically. You, no, not. Mm -mm. I'm going to say $75 million. $75 million is the guest for Kenny Carraway. 12 NBA seasons, the highest grossing year for Isaiah Thomas, 7.2. The reigning defending universal champion, Jesse Tapia. I'm going to go 65. Let me get that dub. There's no chance. There's no 60. chance of 60. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me coach you up real quick. You're going too high. He was the 60th pick. He's making peanuts, making Rick Berry money. He's not going to get to 78. 65? That's only $10 million. I'm left. taking the dub. He's probably about 53 or 41. It's bad when you lose. It's really bad when you get coached up while oh, come losing. come on. Come on. 35. Oh, my Point six million dollars. Wow. Yeah, he has not made money. Well, the only chance not. he had was that year that went to the playoffs and then his hip just How exploded. Much? He See, was so an all pro in Boston, an all NBA second team in the 2016-17 season. Top five MVP This is what I couldn't too. remember and what kind of threw me off. Is he only, got about a no, you're right. One million dollar deal. You're right, and that was it. And I thought so. He was at was Boston it. on that deal. That was it. I thought he got another one before he went to Boston. Yeah, he said back up the brink. No, you're, no, came. he. At, I think it was. Didn't he get one from Phoenix? Well, the one he got from that, Phoenix that was the twenty. That was the deal to to Boston. That was the contract he got. Yeah, that. So that he never got a. If I'm not mistaken, got, he uh, never got a deal yeah, with he Boston. Never, he never got a Boston. He had Phoenix the deal. I thought he had one. He beat you and then told you why you're losing. That's you're gonna, four and nine. Look, you're three and nine against Jesse. I need, I need, I need the comp. I need the competition. I don't. I don't care about my seating. You're, I don't care about my seating. Bro, you're I not even in the. In. You're flirting with Wizards territory. Stop it. Stop you're making it. me out to be the Celtics from back then, and I don't like that because you know how they talk <laughs> about them. Matt George joins us next here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. <laughs> the best part of that was I could see Jesse's reaction <laughs> as I started eyeballing the screen. That was so great. <laughs> Joe in there plotting. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Matt should be with us in a second. I'm gonna run to the restroom. Oh, that action. These games have been pretty underwhelming. A little bit. I was watching uh, Illinois and Illinois. I'm not supposed to say the S. But Illinois and um, Moorhead State, that was good for like a half and a couple more minutes of the second half. Then they pulled away. Another upset city on deck, though. Nevada's leading actually two upset cities oregon's an 11 seed leading south carolina by 11 with under two minutes to go and nevada's up 14 over date number 10 date no excuse me number 10 nevada up 14 on number seven dayton so we got some upset cities going on upset cities no great games though. oregon the coolest college as far as uniforms go Good question. I mean, yeah, they they do a great job with. I like UCLA's colorway. Scheming it up. I, I love North Carolina's. North Carolina's classic. North, North Carolina's. I like the orange of Syracuse. I like that. I like Michigan can get a little funky with the maze. You know what I'm saying? They can do some things, but Oregon does a great job of the combinations, matching it up with the shoes, all that other stuff. Like it's, they're they're it's a brand. It's a brand. Nobody, nobody, what you do, you do. Yeah, uh, Ramsey, Coleman Hawkins, Cantaloupe, stand up. 
Antelope, this is for you. I wonder if either one of our people are going to be on TV here as they do the news. Jake or Sarah. With the YouTube um, TV multi-view, they got to do something about the blank space around the, like, when you have two games up yeah. at once. Yeah, they got to like, Give me that. a scoreboard or something. Yeah. Oh, man. Man, we got a lot to do on the other side. <laughs> no that's good i love matt for this no that's good <laughs> guys what i miss you miss freedom buddy what you miss my raft? <laughs> it took my raft <laughs> I came up with that idea. <laughs> That's one of my the raft. Best. I um, built that. And, and then the, the not funny part of that, the guy got so mad he went on a killing spree. <laughs> I mean oh, this in the best way possible. Matt is the Mick Foley of this show. That's right. <laughs> well, Mick Foley was a multi-time champion. That's what I'm saying. Like, just there's always good stuff. And Matt's got the different gimmicks and all that. Like he's always yeah. hitting it. Mick Foley made the rock break, so that's all I need. He did. That's all we, that's 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 a great clip. That's a great clip. His glasses flying off. I like you'll hear people say when listening to radio that when there are funny moments like, oh, I had to pull over the car, but you know, they're 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 like messing up. Like I genuinely had to pull over <laughs> the car <laughs> last night driving into work or yesterday driving into work because I was crying listening to that segment oh my god that was so funny we appreciate you dog or alan west oh. <laughs> Matt Duplo. <laughs> his name is Dula, baby give me a tie-dye shirt <laughs> Oh, man. South Carolina's losing. Yeah. Oh, Kenny's distraught. Well, I mean, and, uh, well, first of all, I mean, I'm not Kenny's happy. Kenny's distraught. I'm not happy. I told you, those are my people in Columbia. I always want to see South Carolina do well. Always. We've got that. a little bit more connection to the women's remember. program than the men's. Remember. But still. Yeah, for sure. But just still, it's, it's still love. Cut those this. They run this back when the 2028 Olympics come around. <laughs> That's how I'm going to get Kenny's ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse live from the Olympics in Los Angeles. <laughs> Bryant West said, I had no idea IMK Diddy was a Broadway level actor. <laughs> That's tremendous. Oh, this dude get 40? Someone said this has got to be up there with uh, top moments of all time when you chug that that 100 proof bourbon we had Kyle, oh yeah, like, yeah yeah Kyle we and I will we'll oh, sit Kyle dude Charlie did, did. Yeah, no oh, Charlie, Charlie did all right we're back Matt there are some pretty great show moments out here I forgot about Kenny chugging the bourbon was an all-timer that was good too. no that was Made good it. that was good oh uh, we determined Maddie McQueen is a, a, a the, the birth of Maddie McQueen was a top five uh or top, certainly a top 10 d and Casey moment as we welcome in our good friend Matt George of uh, ABC 10 and, of course, the Locked on Kings podcast. Uh, Matt, last night's game was everything we hope tonight's game will be. Mm, please. Uh, what do you – what's what's working for this team right now? It, because last night's game aside, it feels like overall, even against the Raptors slash Bucks slash Lakers slash Timberwolves, the Kings are playing really, really good ball in the month of March. Yeah, the I mean, Mike Brown likes to break his season down into five game mini seasons, and this five game mini season for the Sacramento Kings has been absolutely tremendous. To where they've held their opponents under a hundred points three out of the five games. 
They've scored 120 or more points four out of the five games. They're a plus 17 in terms of point differential. They're averaging 116 points per game uh, and are giving up only 99 points per game. That's absolutely absurd over this five-game stretch. But it, like you said, it, it extends out to the month of March as a whole. And I think a lot of people, rightfully so, are recognizing that Keon Ellis is a massive part of the change, especially on the defensive end of the floor. And they're right. But I think it goes a step further. Mike Brown figured out how to maximize his roster better, and he did so with these three guard lineups that we're seeing. The three guard lineups to me have unlocked the potential for Sacramento to play to a higher level because you're you're staggering and balancing any combination of Fox, Monk, Keegan, oh, sorry, Keon, Kevin Herter when he was healthy, and even Davion Mitchell to some extent, to where you're getting a lot out of guys that you were only getting a little bit from, and they're able to stay on the court consistently enough to give you the best of what they have to offer. Davion Mitchell, we were not able to see the off-night defense that Davion Mitchell brings to the table because offensively, he didn't necessarily fit. He'd have a couple good moments, but offensively, they're just it wouldn't click there, so the balance wasn't worth it. Well, by staggering him with a Malik or with a Fox or keeping Sabonis out there and even putting Keon and, and Davion at the floor at the same time and not putting so much offensive expectation on Davion or Keon, but allowing them to score within the flow of the offense, which is the good looks that they're going to get, and then make their impact on the defensive end. To me, Mike's uh, figuring out how to put these three guard lineups out there and for it to improve them defensively, not knock them back and also not drag the offense down too much while keeping a Sabonis and a Barnes or a, a Sabonis and a Keegan or Keegan and Barnes, whoever it may be out there with them to kind of provide that size and that length that this Kings team needs. I think that has unlocked so much of what we're seeing right now and has led to Keon being, being recognized more and Davion becoming a solidified part of the rotation now, which was a major question mark as early as a month ago. Those three guard lineups to me have been the key. So Matt, I know you're one of the guys who have been on the Davion needs to start or Davion needs just be consistently in the rotation. Uh, train. I mean, David, Another well, day, another know, mess. Like, yeah. Davion, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's all right. The week's almost over. I've not, I've not been on that train, buddy. It's okay. No, not that train. I love Davion. Yeah. Not that train. That no. <laughs> Kenny, it's fine. It's okay. Choo -choo. Friday, the doctor is on the phone. He really needs you to come back to the doctor's office. <laughs> Thanks, JB. Thanks, JB. Yeah. <laughs> Keon is who I was talking about. That's what I said. You've been big on Keon being uh, a major player in the rotation and even starting. And – I was a little slow to get there. And, and to be honest with you, to be fair, if Kevin wouldn't have gotten hurt, I still wouldn't have made that change. Mm -hmm. But the other day, watching the uh, game against the Grizzlies and what he did to Desmond Bain, I was just floored. You know, and it's not – that wasn't the first time he's done it. He's been doing it. But I was a little slower to the party than everybody else. And I don't know if you heard, Matt, but I had an epiphany. Mm -hmm. I had an epiphany. I said Keon Ellis – can be an all NBA defender in this league. He is that level of defender. Some of the things, the blocks that he was having, I mean, it just, it was an epiphany. It literally was, I was sitting there, I was like, oh, I see what the Matt Georges and everybody else were talking about. Did I go a little overboard with saying he can be that type of defender, or do you feel the same way about Keon? I mean, if he keeps putting up two to four steals a game and anywhere between one to that five block game that he had the other night. I mean, those absolutely that's getting you in the all defensive numbers. And I'll be completely honest with you, Kenny, like as much as I was a, a pro Keon Ellis being uh, in, in the starting lineup, I'm not, I wasn't expecting him to be this good as he's even been in the week since we last had our conversation. Now, uh, one thing you said there that I absolutely agree with, if, if Kevin Herter were healthy, he'd still be starting right now. Like Mike, Mike has made that perfectly clear, whether I agreed with it or disagreed with it. And I do want to say, like, this is not the way that any of us should have wanted Keon to get the spot. I've seen the jokes. I've seen the comments like and this is in the greater good of the Sacramento Kings. No, it's not. You're a worse basketball team with Kevin Herter likely being out for a significant period of time. You're a worse basketball team. What I liked was the idea of Keon Ellis starting and then Kevin Herter getting that green light, freedom, shooting, scoring punch off of the bench and being able to stagger him the same way Mike has been staggering other guards throughout the last 
couple of weeks or throughout the last month. So I'm not celebrating Keon starting because of the circumstance. I'm happy he's getting that opportunity, and I'm happy that we're going to see it in an extended stretch, but the circumstances of how he got there are, are not anything to, to be proud of or thankful for. But Keon is, I mean, Mike Brown said it phenomenally last night. Like he plays like a, a veteran. He plays like an old soul in the defensive end. He's so smart. He's, I mean, even a play last night, like um, the, the, the Raptors switched Kelly Olynyk onto Keon and tried to post him up. And Keon denied him any room, didn't let him back him down into the paint, slipped around him and intercepted the inbounds pass uh, that was intended to go over the top of Keon uh, to enter into the post. Keon just steps in front, picks it out of the air like it was absolutely nothing, like it was a routine play and goes back the other way. Those are moves that, like, in the grand scheme of things, you're like, oh, that was a neat moment. But in reality, it's like that is a savvy play by a second-year player who really is getting his first consistent NBA shot, period. Like, it's one thing to talk about. Look at Keegan Murray's growth defensively. Awesome. Keegan Murray's, what, he's, he's probably close to 100 career basketball games played at this point now. Keon is nowhere near that. So Keon has an instinct, an elite defensive instinct that makes me believe that he he's finally given the Kings what they've been looking for for not just the last two seasons, for basically 20 years on the perimeter defensively. Plus you have De'Aaron Fox and Davion Mitchell could provide more for you. Plus you have Keegan Murray. In addition to that, there's no reason to go back to your question, Kenny, that if, if this trajectory continues and Keon continues to, to get the playing time and be that impactful defender, especially if he can do that on the playoff stage. Yeah. People are going to start talking to him, talking about him as someone who, whose ceiling is an all defensive type player. Uh, Matt, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Kevin Herter. I feel uh, one, like a jerk, two, like a bad radio show host. We should have started with Kevin Herter, as that's pretty immediate news uh, for many and some on the radio who may just be tuning in. Kevin Herter, uh, dislocated short, shoulder, torn labrum, no treatment plan yet set in place by Kevin Herter or by the Sacramento Kings. That's something they're going to evaluate in the coming days. He is not on this road trip. Obviously, he's not going to play tonight. He's not going to play Saturday. Probably safe to guess he's not going to play anytime soon. It really just boils down to whether he has surgery, is his season over, and what this means moving forward. But when you got the news, uh, the official news uh, regarding Kevin Herter from the Sacramento Kings, your initial thoughts were what? Just feeling bad for him because regardless of how how well it's worked or not, and I've been critical of, of Kevin, I think I said it on your show literally last week, <laughs> Kevin has been putting in the work, but he just is, has not been able to do the job defensively. He just hasn't been able to do the job. And I and it's not that he is taking plays off. Absolutely, He's fighting. He is battling. He just does not have the skill set, the ability, the athleticism, whatever it may be. He has not been able to consistently do the job that Mike Brown has been asking and specifically what the Sacramento Kings have been needing to play the defense to the level that they're capable of, the level that we've been seeing at least over these past five games. So... I, my initial reaction was, man, this, this sucks for, for a guy who still, I think had so much to offer the Kings and their incoming playoff run, of course, assuming they, they make the playoffs, which most likely they will. But like that, that was my first thought is, is this confirms that we're in many ways getting what we wanted with Keon starting. But ultimately, it makes the Sacramento Kings worse. And I'm not going to speculate on how much time. It seems like, in some ways, the ball is in Kevin's court and his camp's court about what route they want to take. Kevin is under contract for, I think, another two years after this year. So he does not have to rush and he does not have to push anything to come back. It's not like, knock on wood, this was an injury to Malik Monk on a contract year where something could be significantly costing him money or anything like that. So... Patience can be on Kevin's side. I've questioned what Kevin Herter's future is like here in Sacramento. I've said before, I don't expect him to be a king next year. I have no idea if this injury changes that in any any facet. But for the immediate future, the Sacramento Kings got worse. And a great teammate and a hard worker is not able, able to provide his services for the Kings. So it's a loss. I feel terrible for Kevin. We've talked about it. We all you know, feel the same way. I don't want to speak for you, Matt, but I know how you feel. I feel terrible for him, man. And um, it was just a rough season, just a rough professional season. And for to um, at least uh, we don't want to speculate, may, maybe he's able to come back. But at the very least, 
something that you have to deal with this season, an injury like that. Uh, I just feel feel bad for the guy, man. And I, I'm with you, Matt. Um, even if he should have been a starter or should have, whatever the case may be, you want a guy like that on your team, in your rotation. He's still a rotational player for a playoff team. And not having him there, um, it, it, it hurts. It hurts. So, um, yeah, I, I feel terrible for Kevin, man. And like you said, it seems like it's in his court. Um, hopefully, hopefully can something can be worked out where he plays this year. That's that's what I'm still hoping for until they say otherwise. Remember his best for him. Yeah, and I mean, you think to the postseason, too. You think back to the postseason last year. Kevin struggled to, to give the Kings an impact, but – you now are down, assuming, or I have no idea if he's going to miss the playoffs or not, but let's say he does. You're down another scoring and shooting threat to where we know how much the Kings have felt like at times live and die by the three-point shot. Anytime you can have another shooter out there to where if Keegan's having a bad night, maybe Fox isn't hitting threes, and and, and the Kings are going through one of those slumps and game whatever of a playoff series, Kevin Herter can be one of those guys that, in an instance, it doesn't have to be for a full game. He doesn't have to go for a 40-point explosion like Keegan did earlier this season. But for one quarter, when you're in the midst of a slump and you can't score and Kevin Herter comes in and knocks down two or three straight threes to give you some energy, get you back into the game and, and kind of tread water until the rest of the stars kind of wake up a little bit, that's what you're losing. That's what you're missing. It's it's you, you can it's an, a cliche like it's a good problem to have for a coach to have too many weapons and only so many time to put them in. But especially during a playoff series, when you're it's essentially a seven game chess match or a best best of seven chess match, you just had a piece taken off the board, a piece that can be much more valuable than a pawn. Yeah, and it's it puts a lot of pressure. It, he was brilliant last night, and this is great news for the Sacramento Kings. We talk about Keon Ellis. This was kind of Keon Ellis and, and and Kevin Herter and how you manage those two. Now you have a, a player completely out of the equation which is where Chris Duarte comes in. Yeah. Now you've got like added pressure on Chris Duarte to contribute offensively and defensively when he comes into the game. It's a tough spot for a lot of people. Chris was brilliant last night. Duarte was absolutely brilliant last night. He was. Um, he's playing, and he's he, been and, playing and that, really well. And that's the other thing. He has been playing well. The Kings have been playing well. And, Matt, I'll ask you this. Are the Sacramento Kings better defensively? Do you feel like the Sacramento Kings are now a better or at least are playing like a better defensive team than they have through the first couple of months of the season? This is the best version of this Sacramento Kings team that we have seen, period. This is it. Like over this two year, like this is the best basketball that they've been playing, because even if offensive like the offense, what's exciting is the offense can still be better. Like during this five game mini series or mini season that I was talking about, the Kings are shooting like 36% from three point range. That can get better. 80% from the free throw line. That can get better. Like their rebounding has been a little bit down compared to what it was earlier on in the season. This Kings team can still get better. But while the defense has significantly improved, the offense is still around that 116 point per game mark, which was their average last season when they were number one offense in the league. So what this five-game stretch is telling me, granted with different opponents, not against the same opponent like you'd face in a playoff series, but this five-game stretch has shown me that the Kings are capable of playing physical, impactful defense without sacrificing too much on the offensive end like Mike Brown has believed and Mike Brown has talked about. The exception is that one loss where the Kings played really good defense and held the Knicks to, what, 98 points, and offensively they only scored 93 that game in itself gave me flashbacks and deja vu to the playoffs. And that was exactly what the Kings struggled with. They played great defense against the Warriors, couldn't hit water if they fell out of the boat offensively throughout that series. So we can look at and hyper-focus on that one game, but in reality, these five games as a whole have shown us that Sacramento can consistently play well on the defensive end, consistently play physical, still score, still get their offensive rhythm, and anyone who wants to roll their eyes and go, it's only a five-game sample size, it's been a long time, a long time since the Kings have been able to string together two or three straight good defensive performances, let alone five, right? This is If we're talking about a best-of-seven series, five-sevenths of the series you've shown that you can be this team, you're going to win a lot of series if this is who you who you truly are and who you're capable of, uh, of being. You're going to make it a difficult out for anybody in the Western Conference, even the teams like the Pelicans or the Clippers that match up wise, you should be a little bit afraid of. I think this is the best version that we've seen of this Kings team so far. 
The question is, though, not so much can they sustain it, but how do teams adapt to it? Because like I talked about, Mike has figured something out with these three guard lineups. But when he gets into a chess match with whoever it may be in the playoffs or even before that, back-to-back games against the Dallas Mavericks coming up, if I recognize it, they damn sure recognize it. When other teams start throwing a wrench in those plans or trying to adjust and adapt and take something away, can the Kings still be the same or does Mike have to kind of backtrack and refigure that out? But it's it's good to have more options. Here's the thing about that, Matt, and you're 100% right, but I'm trying to think about, all right, how do we, if you're, you're going up against them, how do you um, combat what the Kings are doing? And the X factor, once again, is Keon, in my opinion, because once again, not trying to disrespect or throw shade to anybody, but it is what it is. Keon's not Anthony Roberson. He's not Tony Allen. He's not a guy that you can stick the center on and they can roam around and not have to guard him. If you leave him open from three, he'll knock down the shot. So if you're, okay, well, they don't have Herter on there, so we can leave Keon and go help on Domas or go help on Fox or anything else like that. Leave him open if you want to. He'll he'll knock down a catch-and-shoot jumper. Fox talked about how he's a dead-eye shooter out there in practice. So I, 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 there's obviously some answer that some team will have or whatever, but the first the first thought would be that, like, hey, leave the, the young fellow open and, and help on other – no, I don't know if you can do that. I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, I, I think – I mean, the, the easy answer is – force Keon Ellis to beat you, force Davion Mitchell to beat you. If they do, tip your cap, right? And uh, But, like, I, I don't know how teams can can fully stop or fully slow down the Sacramento Kings. I mean, the one thing that's worked during this five-game miniseries is have a, a superstar that can go for 40 and then have a, a good defense that can just try and limit the Sacramento Kings as much as possible. I mean, I think it's it, it's pretty Also have a crew of an officials that are really wow. willing to just not – well, you know, and you might see that in the postseason. Yes, yeah. yeah, facts. Mike, I, I think Mike has also kind of made the blueprint known of this is how we don't play our best basketball, and it has everything to do offensively with paint touches and spray threes, right? Mm-hmm. Do not, do not let like let the Sacramento Kings shoot themselves out of a ball game by taking the wrong shots compared to the shots that they want to take. Like mm-hmm. it's you can't, it's not possible to say, hey, stop De'Aaron Fox from getting downhill. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Like, st- yeah. stop Demonte Sabonis from getting his spot in the high post. Okay, like it's it's easy to say. In reality, you're you're not doing that. Certainly not consistently over a playoff series. But if you can congest the paint, think about what the Rockets did. Think about what the 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 um the Knicks just did. Think about what the Warriors did a lot during the playoffs. If you can congest the paint and make it not just difficult for the Kings to pass out of the paint, but make De'Aaron know and Sabonis know and whoever attacks the basket, Malik know that if they come in there, they're going to, things are going to get physical. Mm-hmm. Maybe that changes and rattles the Kings a little bit when the, the Kings are at their best, when they're getting downhill and then kicking out to those spray threes that Mike Brown likes so much. And then the, the blueprint of beating the Sacramento Kings on the defensive end of the floor is just, hitting your shots, right? Space the floor, knock down your threes. Because the Kings, Mike Brown has pointed this out, if the Kings were league average defensively from the perimeter, they'd be a top 10 defense in the league. And they've been doing a significantly better job recently holding their opponents to to lower three-point shooting percentages. That has a lot to do with the high five closeouts that Mike has talked a lot about. But a blueprint of beating the Sacramento Kings and breaking them down is space the floor and knock down open shots because at some point the Kings are going to give them to you. Mm. Uh, from the Kings, some I'm a little bit surprised by. Sasha Vazenkov is out tonight. Mm. I thought for sure he'd be back, um, but he's not. Uh, Sasha Vazenkov is out uh, tonight versus Washington. Of course, the Kings are in Orlando on Saturday, then they'll be back home to take on the Philadelphia 76ers on Monday. Um, okay, uh, I thought for sure he would be back uh, tonight, given the scene, the fact that. Uh, everything seems to be trending towards his return, uh, but not yet, Matt. Sasha's got an uphill climb ahead of him, and I, I think something that might be working in his favor with the return from this injury is, is Trey Lyles being out, mm-hmm. but Sasha was already behind the eight ball a little bit, even as a veteran player from Europe. Just, I mean, we saw even when he was making impactful plays how short of a leash that he had or how limited his opportunities were. 
as the Kings are ramping up towards the playoffs and starting to play their best basketball, and he has not been a part of that, not just during this stretch. He has not been a part of the Kings for 16 games or something like that now. Like, it's not necessarily being left in the dust. It's just the Kings finally finding out what is the best version of themselves, and he can't be a part of it because he can't play. Like, that's and, – and you best believe when Trey Lyles comes back, even with Trey Lyles missing an extended period of time, Trey's one of those people that I think Mike has enough trust in that, yep, you're right back into the playoff rotation, buddy. Get right back in there. You're too important, right? And at that point, it's, okay, maybe Len takes a step back. Maybe Duarte, to some extent, takes a step back. Sasha is one of those guys where, like, I'm not saying he's, he's becoming an afterthought, but th- his injury might be – more significant to him than it actually is to the Kings because they're, they're finding out what they need to do without him. And offensively, they're not stepping back while defensively improving. And Sasha is a guy that for the most part is going to give you an offensive boost over a defensive boost. So even if he was available tonight, guys, I don't know if he would play unless Sacramento got to a point where they were up big in the fourth quarter again, which they absolutely should. Um, but I, I don't know, even when Sasha comes back, I'm not rooting against him because he can absolutely provide some of that three-point shooting that you're now lacking with Kevin Herter being out. I don't know how Sasha works his way back into any sort of consistent rotational spot this late in the season with the playoffs right around the corner. That he has zero playoff experience in, by the way. Yeah, but I still feel like they they may need some size. And, and need some bodies of Trey Lyles is out there. So, like you mentioned, I think earlier, that's the main thing. Yeah, by virtue of the fact that Trey Lyles is out, you got to give him a look, you know, and give him, you know, maybe an extended look to, to see, you know, what he can do out there. Because there's going to be some times in there. As much as we love the way these guys are playing right now, you, you may need a stretch four. You may need a bigger six eight, six nine type body to to defend or help defend or anything else like that. Um, and just give him a look, give him a chance. And, and Matt, you hit it on the head. If Trey Lowes is there, he might not see the floor, but unfortunately, he's not. So just by virtue of that, you, you may have to at least try to see him out there. But I mean, even even if Trey Lowes is out for an extended period of time, and hey, stealing a line from Damien's book here, I'm just a broadcast journalist, just asking a question here. Like, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a stagger of Barnes and Keegan playing and providing that stretch four for you at pretty much all times with an Alex Len out there filling those DeMontis Sabonis less minutes. And Alex Len is a trusted part of my, what Mike Brown does. Alex doesn't necessarily play every single night, but when Alex Len plays, good things happen. He, he has impactful minutes in short stretches. He's always ready to go. And he did that in the playoffs last year against the Golden State Warriors too. So knowing Mike, that's going to be the card that Mike pulls well before the Sasha Vizenkov uh, card. Maybe you give it a look from time to time, but again, I'm feeling like that's more of a garbage time look or a limited set. There's 10 seconds left. The shot clock is off at the end of the third quarter coming out of a timeout. And you just want to get a quick bucket. Okay. Get Sasha out there. Same way. Like on defense. Okay. It's get Kessler Edwards out there. Like maybe that's the scenario, but I think at this point in time, Mike would be more solidified in his, okay, we're missing Trey Lyle. Sasha's back. That's great. We have that option. But I'm staggering Keegan and Harrison at that four spot, having one of them on the floor at all times. And then it's Len coming in when Sabonis needs the breather. That's a good point. Matt, do the Sacramento Kings have three legitimate defenders right now in Keon, Keegan, and De'Aaron? I think they have two elite defenders and one that can be elite. Not, I wouldn't say when he wants to be because I don't think that's fair. I'd say when the time calls for it, because I think that's De'Aaron. That's De'Aaron. Okay. I think De'Aaron can be elite and has shown his ability to be elite. But a big part of why Keon has helped the Kings so much, and Mike has talked about this too, is that you can stick Keon on. And I, I, I alluded to this in last night's podcast, like. Revisionist history here, but imagine if you had seven games of Keon Ellis, your job is to chase Steph Curry and make his life as difficult as possible. I'm not saying Steph doesn't go for 50 in game seven because it's Steph freaking Curry. And we saw what Jalen Brunson did at times to Keon, right? So those players are just different. That's a tough test to ask. But if you take a a significant amount of that pressure off of De'Aaron Fox and even off of Davion Mitchell to some extent, 
right? How much different does that series look? Thinking like projecting forward, Keon Ellis is the that elite guard defender that can take on the bulk of those defensive responsibilities so that De'Aaron can do his thing on the offense and be as impactful as we know he is on that end of the floor while being a good off-ball defensive option. And then if it comes down to crunch time and Keon's not having a good game, so you decide, hey, put Fox and Malik out there to close this thing down. Okay, now Fox, you're on Steph. Or now Fox, you're on the elite guard. You're on Jamal Murray in in the Nuggets series. Go and figure that out. But at that point, you're getting Fox being elite and giving his all in defense for five minutes instead of 35. So I think the Kings absolutely have three. You might, if if Davion gets the consistent opportunity, Davion is also up there as a as a above average defender. And so three of your best defenders in theory are at the guard position and are on the perimeter. And perimeter defense has been a bane of this Kings organization for a very, very long time. I could be overreacting to a five-game sample size, and I probably am to a little bit. Kenny, going back to your point about, like, we're talking about Keon as an all-defensive player at this point. But I think the Kings have four guys now that Mike is finding a way to consistently get playing time that can make big defensive plays. And I don't know if we could say that for more than two guys going into the playoffs last year. Maybe just one, and that was Fox. I'm the early 2000s Pistons just emerging right here in Sacramento. <laughs> Keon is Tayshawn Prince. Yeah, man. <laughs> Can't wait for those 69, 67 games Nick. in the whole Who's Rashid? Malik. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that works. Yeah. Speaking of Malik, obviously, with the way he's been playing and Anthony Slater's article um, over at The Athletic. It's been the topic of conversation all week long and uh, a lot of talk on whether or not um, he's going to be able to or the Kings are going to be able to keep him here in Sacramento long term. Got to ask you, Matt, what you think, man? How are you feeling today? This is probably a very unhealthy way to, to live life and go through life. Every day we get closer to the end of the season is every day we get closer to the fear of or, or of, of go time for the Kings with Malik. I've said this before on your show. I'll say it again. I don't think there's a player in this league realistically that the Kings can go out and acquire, regardless of the financial situation, that gives you and replaces what Malik Monk does for this team. I don't think it exists. Malik is priority 1A through Z, right? He Finding out how to keep Malik in a Kings uniform, if that is the only thing the Kings do this offseason, I wouldn't necessarily call it a successful offseason because it'd be kind of a copy and paste of last offseason. Mm-hmm. But the, the one thing the Kings, I don't think, can survive and afford to do is let Malik go or lose Malik. Now, I know financially, contractually, collective bargaining agreement, there's only so much that they can do. There's certain circumstances. Uh, there's there's teams out there like the Orlando Magic, for example, that I think will have Malik in their crosshairs and will be paying close attention. And maybe they go crazy and throw the bag at, at Monk. I love what Monk said in that article with Slater that he, he would love to stay here in Sacramento. I also read it for what it is. He's not committing to Sacramento like Trey Lyles did last offseason. Trey Lyles basically said at the end of last season, like, I want to come back here. I don't want to be anywhere else. Malik Monk was saying, yeah, I'd love to remain a Sacramento King. But you best like Malik. His value is never going to be higher than it is right now. He's a runaway. And that's what he should do. That's a hundred percent how he should approach this. Hundred percent. The city loves him. He loves the city. His best friend is here. He has a great relationship with Mike Brown. Even if those two will go at each other more than anybody else on this team, they have a very big, a clear trust in in each other, and they are bonded through their desire to win and be the best version of themselves and and bring this team as far as they can go. Like there's so many reasons why Malik remaining a Sacramento King makes sense. But a big part of this too is Malik's NBA journey, which has not been easy. He took a extremely bargain contract to come here to Sacramento. And now this is his opportunity to really cash in. His value is never going to be higher than it is right now. As much as I would be sad to see Malik go, there is not a single part of me that would blame or be upset at Malik for chasing the bag if he got offered it elsewhere. He is entitled to that, his journey. He has earned that with his play here in Sacramento. I just hope the way the Kings have treated him, the way the Kings have allowed him to express himself and be himself and become the best version of himself, in addition to all those other things that I laid out, 
it makes him want to stay here and, and hopefully finish his career as a member of the Kings. We talked a lot about Malik today. I don't think we've mentioned one time Brody scored 17 points in 19 minutes last night. He's on one right now. He really He's is. On one. And that's all he had nasty. to do. Like, he didn't have yeah. to do anything else. If he needed 25, he probably would have got that. I but guarantee- he didn't. The dunk was nasty. Oh. Come on now. I guarantee, you like that, but. <laughs> I guarantee you, you also haven't mentioned, like, shout out Malik. He was fantastic. Harrison Barnes had 16 points in 19 minutes, and he did so on 66% shooting from the field and 60% from three-point range. Yeah. Uh, Malik didn't have a boatload of assists last night like he normally does because Malik's goal was to score the basketball last night, clearly coming in off the bench. Uh, Harrison didn't have a bunch of rebounds. He had like two rebounds, I think. But that uber-efficient shooting from Harrison, especially on a night where you're getting eight rebounds from Keegan Murray – like, if we're going to shout out Malik for that, too, we got to shout out HB because he was super efficient last night on a very, very limited amount of work. So I obviously thought about it and just never put it in the notes. But HB shooting like 40% from three on the season. Yep. He's played real well in the last 27 games or so. Real quick, before we get out of here, the madness has started. Dayton down 17 with seven minutes to go. Finished the game on a 24-4 to four run to avoid the upset over Nevada. Sorry about that. I'll talk about that and much more. CBS 13 tonight, 9 p.m. Oh, sorry. You did Matt. that now? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> Bro. What are you? Sorry. Sorry to my guy. He's sorry to my in guy. The ABC 10 studio. <laughs> Well, screw me then. Wow. Oh, whatever. Well, well, you'll be seeing. You'll be, you'll be seeing Matt. No. No. Well, no. It's cool. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna watch both. Don't worry about it. No. I'm gonna watch both. No, nope. Matt. Don't worry about it. We got the Bachelor. You come on over and watch the Bachelor over here if if you want. I don't care. I'm gonna watch uh, both, man. I'm, I'm so sorry, man. The dirtiest player in the game, <laughs> Kenny Callaway. Wow. Ric Flair in the '80s, right here. Goodness gracious. <laughs> well, we gotta go. Hey, we gotta go, Matt George. I'm sorry. And thank you. I love you, Matt. Shut up. I love you. 10 a.m. with the insider. Vamos, Kings. Like the beam. I was like, oh, shit. I'm sorry, Matt. For real. (laughs) Right after I said the station. I said, oh. Shout out the better show, not yours. I'm going to go on with Sarah and Jake and the real people at 13. (laughs) What a cold-blooded I apologize. I apologize. Don't worry about it. We'll find somebody else for the NBA Finals. Don't worry about it. (laughs) That's all me, man. They can have the Bush League college no, basketball. We'll have the NBA Finals. Don't worry about it. Throw the flag on me. Throw the flag on me. That's yeah, all my Kenny bad. Kenny ejected for targeting. <laughs> Bro, that was malice in the palace. That was that was that was bad. Kenny walking back to the locker room. You think we're gonna get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> man, I love you, dog. Come on, man. I love my dog, man. Kevin John. I love my people over there. You're the Allen West of Sacramento. Right oh, now. man. Not Allen West. <laughs> Not Allen West. Unbelievable. Well, I said, hey. check me out on CBS 30. Hey, don't worry about it. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I've only been on your show every single week for the last like three years, but don't worry about it. Really no, That's no, all. No. We really have. We love you. Hey, what is that? What kind of drink is that? A lemonade. From where? That's uh, what I meant. You don't. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Can't, I thought it was Chick fil A. Oh, I wish it was Chick Fil A. Oh, you were you guys were talking about was it, was it Kiki's? You were All talking we have about to do is we can see it. Is that oh, that's Arby's. Arby's. <laughs> Find that too. <laughs> that is <laughs> tremendous. Oh, man, what you know about Kiki's, man? What you know about Kiki's? Oh, Kiki's so good, bro. Kiki's yeah. is so good. I had just gotten what I had eaten that I'm not proud of. And then I was listening to you guys talking about Kiki's. I'm like, damn it. I don't want this anymore. <laughs> Kiki's is All right, gone. guys, we got to end the stream because we got to run over to 102.5. We will uh, see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. with the insiders. Hit the thumbs up before you go, by the way. Appreciate you. Please.